two of the greatest schools, Rugby Sevens competition on the planet. Yes, it is the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens 2024, and we are in today too. Nearly 15,000 players across 27 pitches, more female representation than ever before, and getting to the crunch of the under 18s Vars today and introducing the under 14s girls today, also having crowned champions in the under 16 category. Woo! It is tiring work being here, but it is the best work if you're into schools rugby sevens. I'm Joe Burns. I'm alongside Angus Savage, who is the doyen of schools rugby across the UK. There is nothing that this man doesn't know. And one thing he does know is that we have enjoyed ourselves so far, haven't we? Oh, we really have. It was an amazing day yesterday. It, the sun came out first thing in the morning. There's nothing better than the Howden Ross in Park National School Sevens in the sunshine. And that's exactly what we got to start off with. And then the rugby was just sensational. The under 18s Vars kicking us off in style. And then a bit of silverware at the end. The under 16s girls, the plate in the cup. Fantastic. Ivy Bridge Community College on the girls side. What a performance in the final. We waxed lyrical about it last night, but wow, just so good. What a start to the week. Yeah, incredible performance from Ivy Bridge Girls Community College and also, wow, incredible plate final as well. Um, yeah, so the sun was out. You wouldn't think that to the way that either of us are dressed actually with our footwear, but it is quite light and dry and the rugby has been running and there's plenty, been plenty of tries. What's your overall reflection of yesterday? Do you know what? My biggest reflection was how open it is and how there are so many teams that could go all the way. We look at this Vars competition that we've got today, which is, you know, started yesterday, concludes today. And of the 28 teams remaining, I genuinely think all 28 are coming in going, do you know what, with a fair wind, we've got a chance. And how often can you say that about any tournament in any form of rugby at any age group? That's so rare. And yet in this Vars, it feels that way. You know, I can see St. Peter's York out there warming up. They won the bowl a couple of years back. They have every chance of going all the way this year. It's wide open and that's what makes it fantastic. And then of course, you know, having these girls competitions sort of growing and growing and growing. You know, I think we saw yesterday the under 16 girls have gone from 32 teams up to 48. We just keep seeing those numbers increase. It's just creating a real vibrancy around this place. It's just amazing. I love by your answer and also how you strategically positioned yourself nearly on the fence here at our, one of our sponsors tents um, Holroyd Howe who are one of the uh, wonderful people who keep this competition ticking that you don't want to give me who you think is going to win but I'm going to press you later we are going to come back to that under 18s Vars because it does conclude today but let's talk about the under 14 girls competition Hill House School they were the champions last year they're going to be looking to retain that but the competition is going to be stiff it really is I mean I'm looking forward to seeing Hill House in action again there's always something special when the champions return to the field, isn't there? But of course, this is a you know new group of players. That's a, those are now under 15s. This group of under 14s are uh, are, are a fresh group, and I, I'm really excited to see how they get along. Um, I know that I've, we've had so many messages on Instagram from uh, from girls on their mini buses on the way in, sort of so excited to be here. And that's really what it's about. It's about opportunity. It's about enjoyment. It's about joy, and then it's about you know putting a good performance out on the pitch. But that joy is what it's all about we're going to see loads of that i can't wait for that girls competition to get cracking yes it is about opportunity it's about inspiration as well and they'll be taking plenty of that from the under 16s final with ivy bridge defeating millfield yesterday and we're going to mention the mvp we mentioned her last night on the review show alice fleming wow one woman force of nature my word, she was incredible. She was absolutely incredible. I mean, normally we don't like to pick out individuals that much, but how could you not? She was just fantastic. I mean, a superstar in the making. We've, we've spent loads of time looking through the, uh, the match day programs of old to try and see which players might, um, might go on to greater things. And uh, we were sort of looking at the, uh, the women's competition, and a lot of them were Hartbury College players because they, they've domin so dominated this competition over the years. Alison Fleming, that is who we're looking for. She was fantastic. She could be a superstar. All right, Angus, while well, I love you, I love a bit of international stardust a little bit more. So Amy Wilson-Hardy is here along repping UR7 to here, doing uh, coaching clinics and all sorts. And they've been helping with the Road to Roslyn, which was part of an initiative to go out to schools around the country and make sure that they were on tip top sevens form ahead of it. Amy Wilson-Hardy, England, GB Sevens International, Olympian so you're here to help out with the next-gen crew 
on comms as well, but also just check out some of the talent who are coming up to try and steal your jersey. Exactly. Well, I'm nearing the end, so I'm feeling a little bit more confident than a few years ago when I was thinking they're literally on right on my heels. So hopefully I'll leave and they'll a fill of space. But no, it's an awesome event, like so big. It's actually the first time I've been here in person. So just finding it from one car park to the other, hence I'm a bit late. So, but just seeing everyone warm up and there's a real vibe going on. So excited to see the action. First time here. I know. First time here. That has actually blown my mind. And I guess that probably hammers home the whole point of the growth of the women's game particularly here I think it's up 20% yeah. something around something around that figure in terms of female participation but uh, did you not get these opportunities when you were coming up um, I actually did I play well, I say the first time here I played in Roslyn when I was at college I think we um, definitely didn't have a rugby team though it was definitely an amalgamation of loads of different sports teams together so it's so good to see so many schools focusing on rugby as a sport in itself um, but yeah you can see so many girls teams coming in I think about 10 mini bus pass me full of just girls playing which is so exciting shows the growth of the game um, and I have been wanting to come I'm just saying <laughs> but I had a quite a busy schedule but no just back from Scotland on camp so I feel really like fire in the belly in terms of my playing so it's great to then kind of pass on hopefully my excitement about what's coming up to young girls and boys that are going to be playing today. I think oh, we're, I'm excited now after hearing you say that. So Amy's going to be here as well, just dotted around the competition. There's going to be loads of superstars. We had Jason Robinson around. We're going to have Nolly Waterman. The great Nolly Waterman's going to be here at the Howden Tent. Uh, Rocky Clark as well, the most capped England international of all time. Maybe not uh, in sevens, but, you know, there's going to be plenty of stardust around. Um, the game, the match is going to be kicking off very soon. So we're going to come to the under 18s men's VARS chat. Not expecting you to chime in too much because I know you weren't here yesterday seeing them in action. But Angus, you were artfully skirting the big question moments ago. You're bigging everyone up, but I want your neck on the line. I want reputation on the block. Who is going to make that final? Who is going to lift the trophy today? I'm going to, I'm going to put this internationally. I'm going to go with the Scottish side. We've not seen a Scottish winner for a while. There's two that I'm looking at particularly, Merkiston Castle and Strathallan. I'm going to go with Strathallan. It's not been seen for a long time. Maybe this is the year. OK, any uh, any other... OK, no, no, no. Any other runners and riders as well that you like the look of who are going to be in the mix? Because it is fiercely competitive. Yeah, there's a lot of really good teams out there. Um, in fact, I mentioned them last night. Uppingham, who got to the uh, the school's plate final last week, um, had a really good showing, beating a, a Wellington College side, which will have been a real mental hurdle for them. They've got Millfield that they've got in their group today, who again will be a big mental hurdle, but I fancy their chances. Another international side that really impressed me, Waterloo Schools from Belgium flew through their group had an amazing elimination round game I think I think it was something in the region of 40 nil so they're, they're absolutely flying um, they're in the mix in that group as well so that someone from that group could well be flying around have we ever had a winner not from the UK no, we haven't. The, the closest we had, um, I'll show you a bit of deep level knowledge here now. We, Jess, J Jumeirah English Speaking School in the under 14s got to the final back in 2019. Um, and they that's, that's the closest we've got to an international winner. So this could be the year. I told you, he knows everything. Trying to catch him out with the tough questions, but he comes back swinging. And look, last thing from you, Amy, uh, you know, as you said, kind of like, bit of uncharted territory for you obviously the rugby's going on you've had a little bit of a taste of the festival what sort of elements are you looking forward to most across the week um i just think for me it's kind of spotting that kind of unknown talent coming through i think it's a really exciting opportunity it's not as we said there's not many stage well there's no stage quite like this in terms of seeing so many players playing and i think there's always that next player coming through that gets everyone excited and it's it's going to be a fantastic opportunity obviously got a bit of my us 7s hat on as well in terms of just kind of scouting around um and yeah seeing the future of, of the sport that we all love you literally do have your UR7's hat on, Amy. Yeah, literally you do. <laughs> all right, Amy, love to have you. We're going to look forward to hearing you on commentary. Angus, we're going to see you cruising around the concourse, but it is now time to take to the hallowed blades of grass at the Howden's Roslyn Park National School Sevens. And kicking us off on pitch RE2 is Jack Zorab and Wilf Kemsley. Whilst on RE1, it is Dave Rogers and England's most capped international, Rocky Clark. Certainly is. Thanks very much, Joe. Great job, Joe. Great job, Amy. Great job, Angus. Welcome 
to day two of the Howden Roslyn Park National School Sevens. We're on pitch RE1. We've got a great day today. As the guys alluded to, we've got the boys and girls under 14s, but we're also coming to the conclusion of the under 18s Vars. Yesterday, teams had to battle through the pool phases and one knockout game to book their place and the opportunity at glory. And we kick things off with two great rugby schools, Bedford Modern School and St. Peter's York. And joining us for this one is Rocky Clark in her BMS stash. Uh, you've been in charge of the progress of these young men and they did you proud yesterday. They did indeed. They, they've really worked hard over the last few months and myself and, and Hawkins as well, the other coach, we've, we've been here and yeah, back for day two and got under 14s here as well. So they're cheering the, the older lads on too. So let me give you an update of the results then. Bedford Modern beat Priscelli 41-0, then Haleybury 36-5, then Boitsford 22-12. That was their toughest game. And then Jumeirah English speaking school 36 points to seven. St. Peter's York also undefeated. They beat Bryanston 17-12. Then they put 50 on Herodian, 47 on Victoria College and 36 on Torquay Boys. And day two is underway. Bedford Modern in the black and red. The offload there from St. Peter's York and straight away on the front foot. Oh, this is a, a merciless competition now. The standard is absolutely through the roof. Mistakes will be punished and glory will be rewarded. And St. Peter's in these brown and white hoops. I'd imagine if they do get through a couple of rounds today, they'll be brown and brown hoops, because even though it's dry, it's still muddy. But not rolling away. That's a penalty conceded by Bedford Modern. Who are yet to touch the ball. Still inside the first minute here. Nice uh, carry from Aidan Doig. Defensive discipline from Bedford Modern. Searching yes, around that turnover now. Oh, the referee calling them off, and that is good discipline as well. So easy to give away those easy penalties, and a lovely step. Aidan Doy goes again and gets around another. The first score of the day will be absolutely superb. It is Jack Jones who's gone in wearing number 13. One minute 15 gone. And St. Peter's York score. And Bedford Modern yet to get a touch, Rocky Clark. Yeah, they kept the ball really well there, didn't they, St. Peter's? They just waited for their opportunity, took the step through, gas through, step of the fullback as well. Went through, that would be a perfect start for them. Just a little shimmy off his left foot, missed tackle. Off his right, great finish. Well, coaching perspective then, give us, a, give us an idea of how you train these players in defence to keep their discipline because the defensive discipline and not over committing is massive in this game isn't it oh absolutely huge and we we over commit uh, numbers in attack and so we have a reduced defence so we try and work as that that line together and then come in high here's chris heapy break making a break well he played very well and yesterday and got his first line break there of the day as bedford modern looked to immediately respond and there is a gap and a brilliant fend and bedford modern Striking straight back, Will Tinley offloads, what an offload as well. And Marcus Garcher goes in under the post. What a response from Bedford, two and a half minutes gone, two tries already and two absolute screamers. Exactly right, and it all started with Chris Heapy, the big strong winger goes through, manages to get quick ball and they play out wide. Will Tinley there breaks through. He's such a good player. The offloading game is from Northampton Saints Academy. One of the boys puts the Garcher away, goes straight under the post. What a finish from the boys. Well, it could have all come unstuck if that ball wasn't picked up off the bootstraps. That little change of hands there. Great core skills from these young players. And he looked home and hosed. But that is a tasty offload. It is. He, he loves his offload and he's very, very good at it. Strong handoff. Maybe a touch of Harlem Globetrotters there. Harlem Globetrotters, the Bedford Ballers. Either way, it is 7-7. Seven, seven. You go, I go. Oh, and this is teeing up today beautifully. What a day of sevens rugby we've got in store. A bit more direct from St. Peter's. Another offload. One, then two, and keeping this ball alive. And just fumbled forward, and good defensive pressure leads to the knock-on. Yeah, great cover tackle there by Kieran Perkins, another stalwart of the team. Big physical presence, flanker, 
Ross, seconds. and he just gets around. His work rate is so good. Leads by example every time. Well, you were just talking about a couple of the Northampton the Saints boys there, but we've got players of Bedford Modern who are Crunch. involved in Cambridge, Amphill, Bedford Colts as well, all Set. championship teams, of course, and a lot of these St. Peter's drop. players, county players with Yorkshire. Yorkshire captain, in fact, most of them county representatives. The standard is high. Now there's a gap appears and it darts and Max Day goes through and his acceleration off the mark. No chance for St. Peter's. He pulls out the parachute to save some energy. <coughs> that is two unanswered tries. A nice little casual dot down <laughs> from the young man just to buy a few more seconds. Now he knows that they're in charge of the game. And then just gets the heart rate down a bit before slotting the conversion. Lovely try. Another great player. He's such a threat on ball. Fly half. Really good footwork and just sees spots that half gap and he just goes through He's so quick. Really good sevens player. That little hitch kick going through. Finishes. Converts his own try. How's your hitch kick these days, right? <laughs> uh, pretty much fall on the floor, mate. But, you know, <laughs> all good. I did play half a game on Sunday, though, for You're Buckingham Swan, so pretty pleased with that. Did you? How Sem was... 17 nil down at half-time, 19-17 win. What oh, a result. Guess who came on at half-time? Only went and galvanised <laughs> them, didn't you? Wow. How was the body Don't the day like after? Say, mate, it's now. I struggle getting up these steps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we this. made you climb a ladder to get to the commentary position. Out. Sorry, Rock. Right. Great to have your company. 90 seconds to go until half time and a good contest. St. Peter's York took the lead and Bedford have responded with two excellent tries. Neither of these teams can afford to switch off for a second. Or they'll find themselves under the post. High tackle, penalty advantage. Turns into the long arm. Went too high on that tackle. Seen a, a lot of that. I mean, it's very difficult. The tackle technique, especially with the new laws, difficult enough with 15 on the pitch, but you've got to be so technically sound playing sevens. You really do need to have a full court game. Oh, speaking of good footwork and the fed. Great speed, great strength, great offload. And St. Peter's strike back. That was brilliant from Anesu Chindove. And he has put Aidan Doigan for his first try of the day. And this great game gets even better. Conversion's good, 14-14. What footwork there in the fend. We were talking about Tinley's footwork and fend, but Jin Doive, he was outstanding with that. He just stood his man up, fend goes round, and a superb offload to that supporting line. Doy goes through. Got through, through two tacklers there, one with the balance, one with the strength, and then three in that arm. Two men on him as well. That was a super offload. And he's chasing this kick off as well. Back. And he's got it back. And it might be time for St. Peter's York to sneak back into the lead just before half time. Our clock has ticked over seven minutes. Doesn't mean the referees has though. We're very close, but we're not entirely linked in with the referees' watch. Big moment here for both teams. Bedford Modern defending their own 22. St. Peter's York looking the business on the ball. Three on three. Well, oh, that's well held. Because any mistake now will lead to the end of the half. And I think if St. Peter's York score, obviously they'll take the lead. But if Bedford Modern can defend for these last few seconds, they'll feel incredibly confident going into the second half. Now a two on one. Oh, the ball could have gone, but he's such a tough man to stop. Someone's lost a boot. A gap opens up. The handful of shirts slips off. Anyway. And Doe gets his second try. The lead changes hands for the third time in the match. And as we approach half time, St. Peter's York get their third try, their third conversion, half and lead at half time by, 40, uh, by 21 points to 14.
second half incoming. A couple of big changes of momentum in this opening game today. Oh, hello, look, Rocker on the telly. There we go. <laughs> Rocky Clark's here. So for those of you that couldn't make the journey, you have got our company for the remainder of this one, and we are absolutely delighted to have you. Hopefully, you're enjoying this spectacle. It is a spectacle, too. Penalty advantage here for Bedford Modern as they look to break through. That is a slipper. Yeah, he looks a, a talented young man. Where is the space? Does the space exist? Or oh, it could be there. Seeking the contact, making Roll meters. Six. Route one for the number eight, Leahy. Sometimes that is the path of least resistance. Oh, it's just gone forward. And that's a shame. Looking to free the hands. Bedford's a long way from Fiji, but one day that'll <laughs> stick. One day, one day. Yeah, they're just trying to find that space. Um, they're thinking about hitting up a few hard runners, but they just need to get those offload lines in and obviously make sure it's not a forward loose pass, but all to play Crouch. for. Oh, it certainly is. Bye. College against Merkiston Castle. Yes. Merkiston Castle, of course, one of the Scottish teams that... Oh. Not even a hook, gents. I need to see a hook from you, hooker. Well, not only was it fed, it was knocked on too, and that's a big error. From St. Peter's, but yeah, Merkiston Castle, one of the Scottish teams that Angus fancied for victory. Oh, straight away, no sweeper at home, it's gathered! What a moment, what a score! And Bedford Martin get the first try of the second half. We are back in the game, conversion to equalise. And well, we are putting together a compilation of today's great tries, and that will be in there from Will Tinley. Yeah, you'll hear that name a lot. He's going to go far with his rugby. He's a super offloader. Just he's got all the tricks. Little chip over the top. His rugby now is superb, and he just goes over, backs himself. What a finish! He's the the catalyst for the comeback. Well, they're going to need another one because that conversion Time was missed. But away. let's take another look at this. Just bask in it. Time is off. Yes. Support outside with him as well, and just clean through. Great spot. No sweeper. I was talking to Joe Burns yesterday about the benefits of a shallow sweeper. That's how he likes to set his teams up okay. to defend. Time on. But with no one at home, if you're seven up, all seven players in the defensive line of St. Peter's were there, and you're always susceptible to that. Kick off. Oh, good chase. But it is back in brown and white hands. Now the drift defence, now they try and work it to the edge and that is the gamble when you do that. Great pace, great tackle and the offload as well. St Peter's got that big man out there on the edge there, Harry Squire. Not scared to go from edge to edge, are they? Everyone comfortable passing off the right hand and the left hand. And Danger man brought down, but the danger not over. The inside ball is a good option. The tackle still made. And the counter ruck as well. The penalty won. Hands on the floor. Excellent defense. Now he's 10. He was 10. And then the challenge coming in. Lovely little back. scoop out of the back door, and it's gone backwards. But Bedford need to be careful here. Swallowed up, enveloped Stay by back, St. Peter's. Still time on the clock for both teams. You've got to roll. Two penalties at the breakdown conceded by St. Peter's. Bedford want to get on with it. Well, they've gone to the toe again. And they're back in the pace, and this is why Bedford winning the foot race. The first touch is good, the gather is good, the try is good. Chris Heapy again, what a finish. Well, they've scored two tries thanks to the boot in the second half. The traditionalists will say no, but we say yes, yes, yes. First Tinley, then Heapy, and Bedford back into the lead. Try scoring machine is the big man on the wing. Super pace, and that's that's the risk you have if you have a big guy on the edge. 
for St Peter's, you might just lack a little bit of gas. And when you've got a big guy like Chris Heapy coming through, it's only going to be one win. And what control uh, of his feet. Let's take another look at this. There were back-to-back -back penalties conceded by St. Peter's, and eventually they just run out. But it was the kick over the top. Again, St. Peter's, they had no sweep for it. Say he lacks a bit of gas, but he is certainly quicker than Harry Squire there. Two big men on the wing. Still needed composure, too. Needed the good first touch, then needed the gather. The fourth oh, that time, was up. the lead has changed hands. Out. That's a nice offload. And again, lovely hands from St. Peter's. Well, a high tackle. And Chris Gwillem Lopez. Number 11 for St. Peter's York. He is a diminutive young man, but so quick and so powerful. Roll five, hands above out. His way. Now a little dart up the middle off. Very, very important handful Attack, of boots. Is black. This is a massive Get moment in. now. We're approaching the last minute of the game. St. Peter's yet to score the try. There is Guilliam Lopez chasing his own kick. Oh, it's been fumbled, and Guilliam Lopez back on it. And St. Peter's into the 22. Lovely offload, a handful of jersey. And it is Guilliam Lopez who scores the try to put St. Peter's York back into the lead, into the last minute. The fifth time the lead has changed hands. <coughs> Bedford Modern running out of time. St. Peter's York. So quick, so accurate. And they lead 26 24 in a 50 point thriller. Superb score by the St. Peter's. They're just the offloading the speed of the game. They've got all caught, haven't they? They've got the gas on the edge with the footwork. They bring it back for it down the short side. Get the offloading game going through. And it's just too much for Bedford. Well, a decent strike, but didn't bother the posts. Two points in it, 30 seconds to go, and this restart is massive. And this time it's St. Peter's asking the questions with the kick. It was a scruffy bounce, tough to gather, but the offload there. Just look at William Lopez, always making himself available. Now Bedford need to take this. Instead... Oh, it's gone forward. It's gone forward. Oh, the pressure's on, isn't it? There's not long left. Potentially your last play. It's something special. Make sure we have their feet. The patience is a virtue here, isn't it? St. Peter's York needs to be squeaky Crouch. clean. No penalties. They've given away Find. a couple at the breakdown. Set. And Bedford. Well, the destiny is in their hands. Oh, it's been knocked on. And that draws an end to a thrilling game. A stunning start to day two. It's heartbreak for Bedford Modern as St. Peter's York win it at the death. 50 points shared. And it's edged by just two. Full time Bedford Modern 24, St. Peter's York 26.
Magdalene College versus Merkiston Castle School for a place in the next round of the under 18. Boys Vars, both teams getting through yesterday. The difficult pitfalls of the under 18s Vars. Merkiston Castle in the blue, Magdalene in the red and white, and Merkiston already on the front foot, a Scotsman. Not quite a line break, and Magdalene relaxed and passive in defence. A bit more direct now. And up over halfway for Merkiston. Not rolling. And not rolling away. Keep going, keep going. And Merkiston Castle. Dart back the other way. Lovely balance, lovely footwork and attacking this Magdalene line. The bouncing pass, the skimming stone across the mill pond that is pitch RE1. Magdalene yet to have a touch for over a minute in. And Merkiston Castle working their way towards the 22. No gaps appearing in the defence just yet. Another dart up, trying to create that two on one, but these missed tackles could be costly. One, two, three steps and a good tackle. And the offload, numbers now for Merkiston. Instead, it is coughed up, and that is a great first defensive set by Magdalen. 90 seconds. Kendrick's good, that's right. What's now, Blue? No, 10, no. A real war of attrition, a real battle of attrition to begin with. Balls out. And the big whip, trying to put the man on the outside. But not there just yet. Now that's a good fend to get rid of the defender. Now becomes a foot race, smart kick. Who's going to win, the man or the touchline? Oh, that is superb. Now it needs to sit up, needs to be gathered. Magdalene into the 22 for the first time. Play on. And it breaks loose to Merkiston Castle. Now a foot race at the other end, snatched up by Magdalene's number 10. What a start to this game. Two and a half minutes, ball in play. Another loose pass. And it feels as though feels someone's going to score a try due to sheer Tackle, exhaustion shortly. Merkiston rip it. Lack of cutting edge costing both teams, but now as we approach three minutes, it could open up here. The tackle is missed. The bust up the left-hand side. And after an incredible three minutes, no rest, no respite. It ends in a try for the Scotsman. Three minutes and 10 seconds, non-stop play. And it's Magdalen College nil, Merkiston Castle five. What? A start to this under 18 Vars match. <laughs> Conversion's good, 7 0. Make sure you hit this on live TV. Put your water bottle price. Stay on. Right, we restart. Tackle now. Magdalen College. On the ball for the second time after that back and forth three minutes. This is a bit wow. more incisive. Serious gas striding up the left flank, evading. The last ankle tap, but you know what? There might be a useful touch there because he's fallen over the line. Scored a great try, but not gone under the poles. So there is a challenging conversion to come to level the game. Speaking of leveling the game, we've leveled up our game because Joe Burns has mounted the scaffold as this conversion goes. Oh, beautiful strike. Here we go, 7-7. What a game, uh, and what a start to the day, Joe. Lovely little chat that you had uh, with Angus and Amy, but before that, what about this finish? Hell of a finish, hell of a seed to get outside that Murchison Castle press. 
I mean, what an opening three minutes. What an opening game. That oh. St. Peter's York game against Bedford Modern. Absolutely incredible. 50 points, 26-24. If you're just joining us for this Merkiston Castle game, if you get a chance, re-watch the opener, because that is about as good as it gets in school sevens. It's not as good as it gets, days. There's more to come. Yes. All uh, week. Absolutely. Stay tuned in. Oh, that no, no, is no, no, some no. clear out. And then it creates a space. It's another snipe at the left flank. Not sure the kick was necessary, but it does turn Magdalene. And it's been taken over. Taken over, scum five, blue ball. Big decision to be made. And a little shrug of the shoulders there. I think he knows, but he had the murky man breathing down his neck. Perfectly weighted kick. Oh, I thought it was a great option there. Back in field. Probably going to get tackled out there on the edge, and he was isolated because of that snipe, because of his pace. Great opportunity here now. Well, they've stacked it to the left hand side, Merkiston Castle. Man for man defensively. It's a nightmare for Magdalene. Try and defend. Three metres out. Here comes the width. All passes off the left hand. Two and one on the outside. And Merkiston Castle lead again. So difficult to defend that midfield scrum. They did really well initially, Magdalen College, and well, there was a, there was an opportunity for a breakdown steal there because he got himself isolated. There were three red and white hoop jerseys, but they just missed the first swipe at it, and then it was real simple, composed hands from Merchison Castle. High caliber stuff. This is the stuff we look forward to in the Vars. An almost an unbelievable conversion. This will be last play. What's right, yeah? This will be last play. That's the one that goes out there. Go at him. Okay, let's go. Stay on. Last play of the half, Maudlin in seven, Merkiston Castle 12. Another great game. Oh, and the mistake. Well, it's nothing, but it's, it's a knock on, on, so that should take us through to half time. And Maudlin's blushes are spared. Another excellent contest. Just five points in at a half time. It's Maudlin College 7, Merkiston Castle School 12. Magdalen College 7, Merkiston Castle 12, second half incoming. Merkiston Castle not trailed in this game yet. With a 7 0 lead. Oh, that is a lovely turn and burn straight from the kickoff. Could be about to get even better. The fend is good, the tackle, tackle. is good. But what a start, what a position no here for Magdalen. No, it's still in, still in, you! There's no one there. No, it's still in. Oh, Borden needs to get a move on here. 
And now it needs to go. There's space out wide, but the step could do equally as good a job. Not on ball. Counter's good. Well, the counter's good, the turnover's good. Just a word for whoever. Oh, oh wow, what a shot. Nothing coming, lads, just a knock. For the, for the player who was rucking there for Maudelin, who was there for about 45 seconds, getting absolutely battered, but making sure that that ball was secure. He's been doing his planks, hasn't he? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, bit of a missed opportunity there for Maudlin because Six. yeah, their guy escaped. And I think they must have thought he was going to go all the way, and they were okay. really, really sluggish to then get in to be half back at that breakdown. Oh, another tasty shot. On tackle the ball, release. so legal, but Maudlin committing a few Not to that leader. tackle. Very juicy short side there, but no chance for Merkiston Castle to go that way. They've opted for the boot again, backing themselves pace-wise, but Maudlin do well to get back. Love that offload. Get that ball out to the edge. And keeping it on the edge to... Oh! <laughs> Too it's too high, too high. but it is back some line, collision. Both teams need to be credited with the tempo they're playing at. When they get the penalty, they're just keeping it moving. And as Tackle the fatigue sets release. in, nine minutes in, and particularly that first three minutes are going to really empty the tank. We are seeing it start to loosen up a little bit. Discipline required in attack and defence. Now, we haven't got a Merkiston Castle team sheet, but the young lad wearing number six has been superb. He has been direct, he has been accurate, and he has assisted a brilliant try. <laughs> Getting rid of defenders. And then putting the supporting runner straight through a hole. 17-7, it's a two-score game. Conversion is good. Have a look at this, Joe. Just direct running. Go on, tackle me, I dare you. Well, he's low slung. He's heavyweight. And then he's got the awareness to hit him with the offload. Loving this game. Loving the variety of skills, the way that teams are attacking. And I'm also, I'm also loving the shrewd kicking that we're seeing from some of the sides this morning to step up in quality today. Chase is good, but the ball's secure, and Maudelin stepping off the left and breaching the line. Big sweeper in for Merkiston Castle. And he's made a very important tackle. Wait, it looked no, like no, he was no. beaten, and he's batted that ball back to top sweeping. Well, that pass looked questionably flat. Goodness me, that lad wearing 10 for Merkiston has dug them out of some holes. He was the one who made the tackle on the touchline as well when the opposition 10 broke free and he's made another big sweeper tackle they're so exposed back there and then they give it to their bully boy just to hold it up they're buying some time they're looking in control the jcb no sweeper at home kick to space and the pace Vantage oh it's not. just gone forward do you know what? I think the referee could have uh, given a penalty there because he's deliberately killed that because he knew it was coming. That is shrewd operation on the floor. Well, I think uh, I could say he got dropped on there as well. But I think, yeah, that, that sweeper Crunch. for Merkiston. Three. And he's not just making the tackles, he's got the composure to then balls out, balls out. revive the ball and not get himself into any trouble himself. Nice little glint of light there that Rutgers. gets closed off by Merkiston. Oh, they were like <laughs> ratting stags around that breakdown. Oh, steals good, then he's knocked on. In the spirit of Richmond Park, which is not far from here. We're very much in your ends here, aren't we, Jim? Very much my neck of the woods. Crouch! Two minutes to go. Maudlin need a couple of scores. Pinch one here. Pulls out. Set us up for a grandstand finish, but have got work to do. Interesting to see how Merkiston Castle's defence changes depending on where they are on the pitch. So now Maudlin are in their half. That's when the sweeper drops. Picked off though. Pass intercepted. 
Now alarm bells ringing for Maudlin. They're running out of time. And they might be running out of chance. Oh, missed tackle. Another missed tackle, another fend. It's a lot of physical strength in these young Merkiston Castle men. They were one of the teams that Angus Savage picked out as, as a favourite for this competition. And from what we've seen here, it's easy to see why. The tank. <laughs> Over for the try. And that buries it. Well, that closes out the match, but in truth, it has been a lot tighter than that scoreline suggested, were it not for the sweeping heroics of Merkison's number 10. This could have been a very different story, but it's about staying in the fight. Love what's coming up here. Old school dive pass, here we go. Don't see that very often. Rupert Moon, eat your heart out. <laughs> and then their big boy. Again, seconds, bullying his way through. So difficult to bring a man of those kind of dimensions down. I was thinking that, you know, Rupert Moon, I need play it, play it. more modern references. But who was, who can you think after that who was a real lover of the dive pass? It's a dying art. Bring it back. Merkiston bringing it back. Dive passes and spirals, that's what I'm into. The Merkiston Castle just need to see this one out. However, there'll be another penalty. And even if Maudlin go over, it'll be too little too late. The last chance to get something. They're worthy of a score here, Maudlin. They played a big role in a quality match. Yeah. No, not ball, not ball. Agreed, agreed. But this Merkiston Castle defence proving the toughest of nuts to crack. 7.24, well past the 14 minutes. Oh, oh how's he kept hold of that? No, no, no hands, no hands. Play it now, yeah, that's fine. Play it. He's been left behind. He's had one or two darts at it, one or two bites at it. And maybe Merkiston are going to try and finish with a flourish. I mean, popular wisdom would say, just get the ball off the pitch, the game is won. But these boys aren't built like that, are they? They just want to play. I imagine their coach is probably trying to get that message on because there's a lot of rugby to go if they're going to yeah. win this thing. And <laughs> an additional minute and 20 seconds isn't what the doctor thought. Finally, yes, there we sense go. prevails. Also, nudging it towards the pick and mix, just to make sure that he's in one of the key areas of the Rolleston Park National School Sevens. A uh, well-earned victory against uh, Maudlin College for Merkiston Castle, but that was a much better game than the scoreline suggests. Full time, 7.24.
A new competition begins here on day two of the Howden Rostin Park National School Sevens. It's the first game on pitch RE1 in the under 14 girls. It is Hill House against the Perse School. A very formal handshake in the middle of the pitch. Are they going heads or tails or are they going rock, paper, scissors? Oh, heads or tails. Who carries cash in this day and age? <laughs> Right, well, Dave. You, yeah, you've yeah. always got cash on you, haven't you? Preferable. <laughs> Preferable if anyone's asking. Um, look, this isn't just the beginning of the girls' competition. This is the reigning champions as well. Hill House School, champions of the under 14s competition, last year defeating the Kings of Wessex Academy 15 5. They get their title defense underway by receiving from the Perth School. So Hill House on the ball, they're in the navy Get and amber away, hoops. Good. No, no, leave Opponents it. in Thank a you. purple, white and black hoops. I had to check they weren't in black and white then. Maybe it's eye test time. Either way, straight on the front foot. Very, very aggressive carry and very, very direct carry. No, no, that's from the side. Thank you. And the intent to play is immediate. Well, there was some width there, but they might not need it. Weaving through, tackles missed. A desperate reach won't prevent the first try. And Hill House straight on the front foot, straight on the scoreboard. Less than a minute gone. 5-0. Wonderfully balanced running there. Through that mass of bodies. As he said, there was width on offer. But she saw the gap and just, just slipped off her left foot. And then just bobbing and weaving really through the traffic. It was lovely to watch. The conversion as well maximizes the effort. Here she goes. Nice break here. This pass out of the tackle was key. Look how many purse players were drawn in. And then the straightening, then the balance, then the drive. Really nice try to open the Hill House account. Yeah, the Perth School desperate last gasp defence. Certainly commitment there. When you've got powerful runners going so direct, it is very, very difficult to stop a player with a handful of jersey. Behind the kicker. Well, the referee just doing some organising. And we are back underway. The first no, school. Well, they need to gather that. Because, oh, that's great pressure from Hill House. But you've got to stay on your feet. Can't dive on the ball like that. Hey, I know that you were joined by England great Rocky Clark up here on commentary today. We've got Amy Wilson Hardy in the house. We've got yes. Nolly Waterman, the great Nolly Waterman, World Cup winner and all round top broadcaster around here so as well as the girls competition being underway there's a lot of female stardust no, 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 as well no, sprinkled across the 27 pitches here at the howden rosson park national yeah. school sevens well the defensive pressure coming in from hill house the tackler becomes the scorer knock the ball loose and pounce on it second try in three minutes Holly Waterman, speaking of cash, mate, must have taken a pretty penny to get her here. Goodness me. And I'll stand by that. Just give it a go. Just give it a shot. Just go. <laughs> well, hugely inspiring to have those kinds of women around here today and looking to inspire the next generation of England internationals and there's some real brutality out there being exchanged between Hill House and Perth nice ball looking for the whip but what about that for a defensive read and first to the bounce it's all about desire isn't it and Hill House are absolutely full of it it's a tough opening for the Perth school we'll learn a lot from this very deep on that kickoff receipt. That's a good catch, though, on the bounce. Tough one to take. You were there. Unlucky. Just a forward pass. Scrum. Blue. Just 
scrum. Seems timely as well for us to give a shout out to parents, to pupils, to teachers, anyone with a vested interest of teams playing on pitch RE1 today is if your team's playing, if you can make sure that you can get some accurate, legible team sheets to us with the correct numbers corresponding to the players, then we can say their names and give them the shout out when they produce moments of brilliance out on this showcase pitch. Really, really important that you can get those to us and any additional information as well will help us shed a bit more light on the incredible boys and girls that we're, we're witnessing here. Legible is massive as well because I had a couple yesterday that I think were either hieroglyphics or wingdings. Who typed this? We had a couple of typed ones yesterday. Like those, like yeah, the typers. Huge fan. Huge fan of the typers. Five minutes gone, Hill House 12, the first school nil in game one here on pitch RE1. Let's go. Crouch. Bind. Okay, hold. Set. Wait, don't push yet. Okay, now. Okay. Real battle for that ball, and it's come back with the first school. That one's knocked on, though, and Hill House can go again. It's a lovely off throw out of the tackle. Tough defence coming in from the Perth school at the moment. Just the thing that's letting them down in attack is that sort of catch pass accuracy that they can maybe tidy up in the second seven minutes. But at the moment, there's no lack of desire to deliver their hits on the Hill House girls. Coming up to the last minute of the half then, Perth school. Starting to get a feel for it here on the showpiece pitch. And now, opportunity to an attack. There is a long way between their 22 and the Hill House line. And Hill House win the penalty at the breakdown. Perth school not releasing. Referee in a good spot. Very hot on that. Another offload out of the tackle. Another pass out to the edge. And another try. For Hill House, they'll have a commanding lead as we go into half time. It's so confident to score in tries, I think they might give up the opportunity of the conversion. Yeah, oh, no, they're going to have a dig. Tough angle from out there. Are you still drain one from the touchline, Burnsy? I could at the expense of my long-term ability to walk. <laughs> <laughs> half time. Just not in those wellies. Half time, half time here. Time. Hill House off to a great start. They lead 
are 17-0 behind and they are trying to close the score gap by having an extra player. They're one girl up, though. Yes. There'll be plenty of opportunities throughout the day to get on the pitch. No, they actually, they actually had nine. No, now they've got six. <laughs> they've got six. It is chaos for the first school. They've started with eight. They need seven. They've got six, but this is their best chance of the game. Oh, great balance, tiptoeing up the touchline. There's a little bit of that game awareness that will come with these young players of checking in field, but signs of life, Joe. I say back the pace. She'd beaten the first girl. She had her eyes on the prize. And, you know, back in her strength to scamper away. We, I think they are the first are to the full complement of seven yeah. now. Oh, what a tackle! tackle. No, 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 great no, read, no, great no, hit. No, Purse have come into this second half reinvigorated. But it's Hill House, 17 0 up and immediately looking dangerous. That is such a good step. Silky feet. And eventually brought down, but immediately aware, making the pass, making the offload, and Hillhouse creating space, taking the long way around. It is a long way around and a good cover tackle. But they're up to the 22, and the speed of ball they're able to provide. Too much for Perth School. Excellent take. Now, one more pass should do it. A race for the corner. Good cover defence by the Perth School until a missed tackle will cost them another five points. And that excellent start comes undone. It's Hill House 22, Perth School nil. Just having a look at what we've got coming up. We've got this under 14 girls cut next. We move to the under 14 boys cut. Eton versus Marlborough. And then back into the bars. Christ College Bracken against New Hall School. Then Bishop Wordsworth against St. Edward's Oxford. The boys under 18's fast. Wow. Has it delivered so far today on RE1? It's the cream of the VARS crop here on day two. Having been whittled down in the group stages yesterday, they've now been repopulated into other groups. They'll be vying for a bit of knockout action. You have got to win some games to win the overall prize here at the Howden Rosson Park National School Sevens. Game number one here, and Purse looking to strike, looking to register their first points of the match. Oh, snaffled! Like a thief in the night, but everything sticking. The Hill House, their positive play being rewarded. A tackle needs to be made here by Perth School. They're a little bit tentative at the breakdown, and Hill House definitely are not. That one picked off. They find a way to get some of their fast players in space. Holding on, he's doing knees on the floor, okay? Holding on. Get back 10, back 10. Not 10, House putting it through the hands now and giving it to one of their speedsters. They've really struck ruthlessly, haven't they, in this game? But they're enjoying scoring tries, that's for sure. Of course, this under 14's competition. As we compose ourselves, look through the highlights of another Hill House try. The instincts are there, aren't they? Get the ball to the edge, that's where they know the danger is. Clear your ball again. Clear and open space. Ready for another try. And a restart, tempting one to take on the bounce. It's a good one handed catch, actually. And the offload as well, but the winger just slightly overrunning and 
ahead of the play. Good offload there, though. Again, yeah, needs a teammate to work a little bit harder to get behind her, to make yeah, herself an option for the pass. That's how I play on. Yeah, number seven is making herself available, but just a little bit too keen no, getting ahead seven, of the play. Swung to blue. Over here. And it'll be Hill House put in at the scrum. Couple of minutes to go. Black, it's a knock on. So this will be the dream start for Hill House, who are looking to defend their crown in the under 14 girls competition. They won the whole lot last year. And D Rodge on the sideline down here is one of the most extravagant lids I've ever seen. It is at the Rosslyn Park Sevens. I, it's. I, I, I am really, I am really speechless. He's going to take a photo and put it on social media, and we're going to enjoy the action as Hill House look to weave their way through the purse defence again. And the, oh, a hair pull. It'll be called back if she doesn't finish the job, and a race to the touchline. Brilliant cover in the end. Well, that's one of the gambles, isn't it, with uh, yeah, okay. with hair like that? I wonder if it's something that our esteemed colleague Tom Mitchell has ever struggled with. You guys setting up line out or not? Well, George Smith, the uh, Wallaby flanker, famously had a dreadlock pulled out of his head when he was playing against Ireland in the World Cup. Brian O'Driscoll, I think, was the culprit. And Portia Woodman as well had a very, very big barnet at the Commonwealth Games. Yes. And Maddie Levi got yellow carded for pulling it in this semi final. Well, Hill House School, final few seconds of this one. The dream start to their title defence. It's going to be a big win. It's going to be a clean sheet. It's going to be. Oh, not a finish in the corner. Let's take. be your ball line out over here. So this. This barnet, Joe, it is a mullet, but it's a curly mullet. The left-hand side is green, the right-hand side is blue. And there's a little little bit of blonde. The fake white strip down the middle. Yeah. And the rest of you chase, OK? Just stay on the 22. Okay, you can count to the line. Yeah. Nice, this is the last play. Last play, OK? Good kick. The dropout from Purse on the last play. And Hillhouse have it in hand. They're looking to go up over 30. Eyeballs the last defender, stops and goes and will score. And Hillhouse will go under the post. <laughs> Ideal start to their title defence. Everyone will be looking at the scores. It's amazing watching all of the players. Eyes on the screen, eyes on the app, checking who's won what and where. Okay. And everyone will know that right. Hill House have sent a message. Six tries, full time. Full time. Full time. Hands. It hands. is Hill House 34, the Purse School nil in the first game of the girls under 14s competition. They will take some beating, but it's a long day. It's a lot of rugby, but that is the perfect start. Fabulous start for the defending champions, and uh, well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen. There is one of the most extraordinary lids that you will see on planet Earth, not just on planet Howden's Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. I don't know if I want to comb it or use it to dust the cobwebs in my living room. It is absolutely staggering. Uh, you've just got to respect it. You've got to love it. You've got to respect it. Can't wait to see that in full flow on the field later on. Look how glorious it is, static. Imagine that with a bit of try-scoring wind in it. Oh.
Welcome back to Pitch RE1 at the Howden Rosslyn Park National School 7s 2024. We've enjoyed watching the under 14 girls champions Hill House put on a clinic in their opening match, and now it's time for the defending boys champions Eton, who knock on from the kickoff, and Marlborough look to get it out wide, big wind up, it was risky, it was almost picked off, but risk, feeds reward with the pass, is fed to the ankles of the outside man and the opportunity is lost for Marlborough. Okay guys, it's getting a bit messy in the, in the breakdowns, yeah? Number of individuals for this Marlborough side involved with Bath Rugby in one form or another. Okay, started. I need you to bound onto the hooker, please. Not the two other. packs on. On the hooker, please. locking right. down. Right, crouch. With Bind. Marlborough defending. Set. Will Jordan and Ollie Craig in that backline division. Eaton, champions last year. Not starting Mark here. in the finest of Vettel, though, so far. Few inaccuracies. Just watch, don't start pushing before the ball. And another in. scrum, in nigh on the same place. Great competition, this. The under-14 boys, we were tre treated to some stellar Bind. performances. And you can just Set. tell by the way that the touchline is bulging that little bit more, the levels of interest here amongst the wider community. Off go Marlborough on that outside arc, feeding Will Jordan. Will Jordan slips his man. Doesn't make it all the way to the try line. Brilliant cover defence, scrambling the Eton boys. Big weight on their shoulders as they look to go back to back. For school. Marlborough in a hurry. Sells the dummy to the right. Finn Sech brought down. In goes Digby Godson. There's the man who started it all. Will Jordan, no way through the centre this time. A jack back to the right, a little dummy using the man outside him, and Freddie Bowman gets on the board early. And Marlborough lead Eaton. <laughs> well, the extras are added with very little fuss. Always the way when it's under the uprights, though. Fatigue bodies and minds. Sometimes you see that slip of concentration, but no miss here. And Marlborough in command at the moment. Clear kick off. Right. When you're ready. When you're ready. Yep. Now Will Jordan is asked to go and chase this one hard. He's the one who latches down. And the jackal is really good. The try scorer Bowman in with the tackle. Then Jordan locking down. Bowman on the ball. Little intercept risk. Great defensive read. The press coming in. Then the counter ruck. Going off the high tackle. Tough. High tackle. Tough that he went high there. It was really good individual play. The hit, the counter. But Eton need to be smart here. They need to be wise because Marlborough coming down the left edge through Henry Whittington. Counter is fine. Bit of a squabble on the floor. It's messy and boots fly in. And Eton again looking to resource that ruck, looking to spoil. 
They've made it uncomfortable for the half-back, and Digby Godson has done a real good job of getting a bit of advanced momentum. But eventually, Scrum. the error comes, and Eaton get the put in. No, up. No, these are starting to push too early, okay? I need you to wait until the ball goes in. So at that point when I call, when I call bind, we've not even set yet and you're already starting to push. Take it a bit slower, please, okay? Crouch. Bind. Set. Eaton. Fish it out and sling it out. Lovely just drop of the shoulder. And they feed the speed and off he goes. The roars go up. They know what's coming, and even Will Jordan can't reel him in. 22 to try line in the blink of an eye. And Eaton right back into contention. And the danger man identified. The conversion isn't added, so Eaton still trail. Lovely bit of manipulation from the first receiver, and then it is all about those wheels. Just when you're ready. Marlborough retain the kickoff. Whittington in a battle with three pale blue jerseys. Tackle release! Finally, the tackle down, comes. Down, really down, good jackling instincts, but Marlborough come away with it. Then they skip through. Lovely composure, Mark, but the right, tackle right, coming down. in right on cue. Another one coming in. Voracious defence from Eaton, but still they don't have the ball. Dismissed with the handoff. And the ball squeezed out. Marlborough doing very well to get these offloads away and make sure they go back. And then Marlborough, Marlborough with too much room, but there's a lot of gas there chasing back. And Finn Sage has to jack back on himself. Whittington, all energy, all endeavour. Wonderful counter rucking from Eaton. Here's one of the big men, Archie Edmonds, and too big. Edmonds bullies his way round the edge and underneath the uprights, Marlborough have a second and a chance to stretch their score to 14 with the conversion. That'll be the half, boys. Sorry? Well, there you go. Tied affair. And it is the reigning champions trailing at the break. It's Eton College 5, Marlborough 14.
So it's a fair hit. At the Howlers Rossman Park National School Sevens 2024. It's day two. And this is the under 14 boys competition. Eton School on your left. Eton College, I beg your pardon. Uh, on your left. In the pale blue, no numbers. Marlborough College on the right. White shorts, white and blue jerseys. They're the ones leading 14 points to five. Couple of decent tries down the right flank. And here they go with one of their main men. He gets caught high, Henry Whittington. Bin Sage, ball player in the middle, gives it to Bowman. Keeping the ball alive, showing some good composure, Godson. Loses the ball forward. Big, big moment for any player who takes the RE1, but especially under 14, imagine. You're going to be watching this back. You're going to be remembering the moment you're on the showcase pitch and you want to bring your absolute best. And Eaton have done here with a strike from first phase off that scrum. They break into the Marlborough 22, but they've got sticky paws and they come away with the turnover. Ollie Craig involved in the action. And then it's slung loose. Marlborough under pressure. Marlborough presenting a gift. But the knock on called. Goodness me. Marlborough getting themselves into all sorts of bother there. Oh, and lucky, very, very lucky to preserve Sir, the integrity of their Substitute. second half line. Substitute. Substitute. A few replacements rolling on. No, we're not having some. Oh, yeah, the match yeah, finally yeah. poised. Oh, okay. Marlborough put in, but. As you can see, hemmed back on their try line. Well, the ball's not even in, and Eaton are looking to propel their way through the Marlborough scrum. We get called back. Lucky to not be called on an early shove there. Set. No, guys, no, no, you're pushing too early, you're pushing too early. Another scrum reset. This is, well, this isn't helping Eaton, because time isn't their friend at the moment. Five minutes to go, well, four and a half. No, thank you. Much better. We've lost a good 60 seconds or so. Marlborough are looking to lose their defenders. Wonderful feet and balance and drive when the hole opened up. Good hit coming in on Sage. It's a tough to break down. Marlborough spilling the ball forward, looking for the offload. And Eaton will be very content with that defensive set. Mark's here. Watch the Need a score here now. Need to use this opportunity. They've got a well, slightly alluring blind side. It's about 15 metres. They made a replacement. They brought on their try scorer, who went almost the length in the first half. And again, we've got more shenanigans at the scrum. Down to three and a half minutes remaining. Eaton, hands, hands to the edge, hands to the pace, hands to the power. And he's looking for an offload, but there's no buddies on his shoulder. Sets it up, and that is a quite brilliant bit of breakdown work. Marlborough, a team in a rush, but rushing. Too hasty. Handling error. Okay. Proffering another opportunity for Eaton. Now, this is a more interesting scrub. Pretty much centre field, as difficult as it gets Ready? to defend. Marlborough 
mirror Eaton in stacking their players to the right hand side. There's no one on that left edge. Eaton still go to that right side. Now it opens up on the left. A bit of a straightening and some smart hands might do it. Delay on the pass is perfectly weighted. But it's left behind as the winger begins to shift through the gears prematurely. Stodgy second half for both these sides. No points scored. And that'll suit Marlborough just fine. Two minutes of the contest remaining. Marlborough, they want to get playing in a better area than this. They've been in or around their 22 for much of the second half, and a pressure-relieving kick sets the chasers in pursuit. The touchline beats them all. And a bit of cavalry in light blue brought on. They need a spark here, Eaton. Mark on me, guys. Mark. Mark. They need one immediately. They win the line out. Quite narrow. Again, they find their try scorer. Wrap around play. He'll need some support. Goes to the boot. Sliced off. And that could be the game gone. We'll have some time to organise the line out. And with Marlborough leading by two clear scores. 30 seconds. And 30 seconds confirmed by our referee. It's a big, big win for Marlborough against the reigning champions. Come on, Cody! Sage. Definitely not straight, passes it directly to Conrad Weber. Go the line out, it's up to you. No, 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 line out or scrum. Line out or scrum, scrum. Yeah. Uh, Eaton call for the scrum, this will be the last play. Huge power coming from Marlborough. One more reset, why not? We've had a few in this match. And again, that power from Marlborough. Eaton, scampering free. Well, diving through and slamming the ball down, illegal stuff from Marlborough, but they won't care, they've got this game won. This is for prosperity. As far as eating are concerned, one more handling error forced by the tackling pressure of Marlborough and a big opening day victory for Marlborough. Here on RE1, they've defeated the reigning champions all time. Eton College 5, Marlborough College 14.
very good side indeed. West College Bracken in a good spot. New Hall, they had victories over Orleans Park. They nilled Impington College and then beat Lords Wandworth 35-24. And lucky for them, they've got one less game in the legs because they were given a walkover against Kings at Grantham in the round of 64. So away we go, it's New Hall in the black and red, Christ College in the green and gold. Nice little offload out of the back door, but not on the same wavelength. We have a knock on. We have our first scrum of the game. Great attack in position here for the boys from Brecon. Those of you that follow the school sevens will know that they host a pretty decent competition there in South Powys. You're a Brecon lad, aren't you, Dave? It's a lovely part of the world. Didn't go to Christ College, though. There is a very inviting short side here. Undefended, but unused. So, on the overlap, the referee's forgotten to put his microphone on, so we won't be getting his insight, but we will be getting plenty of action from these players. First real attacking opportunity of the game for the Brecon boys. Tom Lowry, we're in number eight. They miss him out, though. Oh, and he can't quite gather the offload on the bootstraps. Now, New Hall are away. Pace up the left-hand side, the cover, tackle, misses. It's a last-ditch attempt and a brilliant cover by Ollie Jones. New Hall have done well to stay in field and try and step away from trouble. Christian Rankin wearing number two. Oh, that ball's been coughed up and now there could be trouble. What a start to this game. It is fast, furious and frantic. In the midfield, Ollie Jones is everywhere, and the cover tackle on him, that was ranking again. Short ball, good ball, good tackle and no offloading option. But now they're queuing up on the right-hand side, little dummy. I'm not sure it was the best option, but it's another phase for Christ College. They've got three on two. Cover defence comes across. Epic defence here from Newhall. Well, they're hanging on just, and it's still nil-nil. Has that been lost forward? Referee spots the tiniest knock-on, and in a game like this, at a stage of the competition like this, defensive efforts like Newhall have just produced can win you games. Both these teams, they've got to win. They've got to win to keep themselves in the hunt. Bishop Wordsworth School and Teddy's Oxford kicking things off with a win today on Tuesday, day two. So, they know they need to get a W here, then they're going to be preying on, hopefully, a result going their way elsewhere in the group, which is not beyond the realms of possibility. Big scrum effort, but New Hall can come away with it now. They've got numbers over on the right-hand side. Oh, ball doesn't quite get out to the edge quick enough, but now it's Christ College's turn to defend. Oh, direct from Christian Rankin. He's the name we tend to say quite a lot in number two. He's at the heart of everything. A high tackle, more akin to the wrestling ring. Some beefy contacts out there, aren't there? Theo Robinson on the ball. Oh, <laughs> shade of that slipping forward. Well, you've got to trust your inside man, but then your inside man's got to make the tackle. Proper foot race here, proper gas from Kean Woolston. Oh, the offload, brilliant! The try scores! A new Hall school take the lead. How about that? Three and a half lung busting minutes. And he said, trust your inside man, but trust in Kean Woolston. What a burst, what an offload. And what a score from New Hall. Man, this under-18s Vars has come alive today on day two. And the extra is good to go too. Well, I can't wait to see this again. Keaton Wollstone looked like he was caught two or three times. Mason Murray did well to keep up with him. And the chase was coming back from Molly Jones, but this is the moment. What a tackle. What desire. The no-look slingshot round the shoulder. You love it. And the hanging restart to compete and the gather. That's a big moment. Kean Walson, a one-man sevens force of nature right here for Newhall. That's two high tackles for Christ College, costing them the ball, costing them field position, and Newhall. 
Wollstone wants it. Give it to Wollstone. Here's Will Savile. And then Will Savile to Theo Robinson. Theo Robinson finds Mason Murray, the try scorer. Oh, they're enjoying that slingshot offload. Unfortunately, someone painted a big white line. And there's some gnarly hits going in here as well. Just absolute commitment from both sets of boys in hoops. Some big lumps for Christ College as well, packing that midfield. Five minutes gone, Newhall seven, Christ College nil. Awesome try that separates the teams. Now, Christ College looking for something and looking for something at pace. Good tackle, good offload, oh, it's stuck! Christ College coming back, Lewis Howells closing in on the target. Oh, and even the tackle coming in from Will Savile to try and prevent the inevitable. That was ridiculous. How good was the break from Pearson? The offload, the hamstring stretcher. How on earth? Did he hold on to that at such high velocity? 7-7, seven, seven, and a yellow card has been shown to Will Savile for the tackle that came in at the end here. Let's take another look at this in all of its glory and the incident that led to Newhall being reduced to six. How good! So keep your eye on the left of your screen because a red and black missile is about to come in. That's tough. That's tough. He's entitled to make that tackle. And it's one that's come low as well. If he dislodges that, then that's N-O-T-R-Y. But they're down another man. Vasil Burton Jurevicic is sent to the bin. But they've got six on the pitch here. They've already had one yellow. Yeah, the referee showed the cheese after the try. As, as you said, he looked like he was able to go for that try uh, sorry that tackle should I say double cheese but they do have six on the pitch if only he put his microphone on Joe <laughs> yeah we're calling it blind from up here unfortunately but Newhall do have six on the field He's done well to stick hold there Price College will be desperate to score before half time our clock has ticked beyond seven minutes Another full-blooded defensive effort. And the ball spat out the side, and new haul over it. And winning a great penalty at the breakdown. Ben Carr over the ball, and he wants to go. I think there is some puffing chests here for new haul. They'll be keen for half-time. They'll be even more keen if they can sneak into the lead. 7-7. Seven, seven. Numbers here for new haul. Christ College come drifting across. Love the way that Newhall are keeping this ball alive. Little soft, delicate hot pops to each other out of the tackle, keeping Christ College chasing shadows. But what a half we've had. What a half we've had. Two great tries. Still not done. Newhall can be patient. They can take as long as they want, as long as the ball's live. I think they've forgotten they're a man down here. Yeah because I'd be getting this off the pitch and the style of play, they need that extra man because they're happy in reverse, but they're missing that extra piece of personnel. Oh, and that's been knocked on. Not backwards. Oh, no, backwards. Wow. Referee letting the children play. And then it has been knocked on. It's gone forward and that'll take us through to the end of the half. Newhall still down to six. The score, seven, seven. What a game in the under 18s bars. Yeah, the whole of this academic year so far, so since September, I've yeah, got eight, eight units. I love the fact that the stats give you a, a sort of a basis for sort of analysing what the players are doing, how hard they're working. I think in, in training, but in matches as well, it's interesting to see who kind of the, the unsung heroes, if you like, the people that, that work, but you don't necessarily see them doing the work. So the students have, uh, yeah, they have real kind of responsibility to do all the uh, uploading of data themselves, and all I have to do 
look on the cloud uh, sort of platform and then I can do my analysis from there. Yeah, it's been really interesting. I've enjoyed seeing how far it's running as well as my max speed. Well, it's been great. I mean, it's been really fun having competition within the squad. See so who's run the most, who's the fastest. This is one really good thing about the app. So each player will have an app. We've created the rugby school community uh, so they can compare themselves against each other and get leaderboards for each metric. And yeah, it certainly breeds that, uh, that area of uh, competitiveness. Everyone's like putting their best teams out, working hard and never giving up until the final whistle. So when you come out here and seeing you know, everyone, all the big schools and the big names and putting ourselves up against it, so it's really good. It's been brilliant. We love, we love coming down. Uh, we're lucky enough this year, so it's our 200th year of rugby. Uh, so we're, we're celebrating massively this year. I think the standard's been really high. We were here last year. 12 months on, the girls' game has exploded and uh, we've had three really tough games today. It's been a yeah, great tournament, great standards, um, and nice to see how we mix some of the bigger schools and the bigger names of rugby. Yeah. Second half incoming and a game in the balance. Newhall 7, Christ College Brecon 7 and a snaffle. Picking the apple from the tree at the start of the second half and it's been knocked on. Oh, can you believe it? So much right, then so much wrong in the space of seconds. Do you know what? I think you're being harsh there on the so much wrong. For me, that just embodies what this game has been about. Every player, 100 miles an hour, 110% all the way through both sides of the ball. The big man Crouch. was loose and cantering in the green Boys. pastures, but a desperate hand coming Six. in from one of the oh. new Hall boys to dislodge it when he was on his way to the paint. <laughs> Nick House, what a take from that big man. Reset and let's go. I know he's straight down. I guess the house doesn't always win, Dave. <laughs> I'm just waiting Crouch. to see what you come up with if Reese Conker manages to produce Boys. something. <laughs> Tough not to crack that one. <laughs> More pressure at scrum time now. from Christ College, but Newhall do well to produce that ball. Minute of this second half gone off. Oh, I thought he'd stuck hold there, Theo Robinson, but referee with his referee's mic, I hasten to add. Here comes the bomb squad for Christ Cole. Ollie Rose four wearing number changed. four. Ollie Rose wearing number four is a big, strong boy. He's going straight into front row. Crouch! Ollie Morgan. Ball in hand, wearing 15. Everyone stacked to the left hand side for Christ College. Oh, a little boot on that as well, handled in the end. Some rogue laces. Little dart up the middle, the offload, brilliant. The support line, good too. Christ College into the 22. Oh, Newhall applying the pressure defensively, turning that ball over. Absolute desire in everything that both sets of boys are doing at the moment. This one's going to be one on Will. Newhall through Ben Carr, and now it's Christ Please College's wedge. turn to defend. Those players have just been subbed still with hands on head, Back. sucking the air in. And it's been turned over. Into the 22 we go. Another excellent offload, sweeping forward. Oh, what a tackle! Christian Rankin. But still, with the boys from Wales, out to the left-hand side we come. Timing of the pass, everything here. Step inside, buying more valuable metres. Five points scored, seven points on offer. And Christ College Brecon take the lead. Fabulous finish from Lewis Howes. He's brought real gusto from the bench. He had that burst through the middle. That's the kind of energy that you want coming from the pine in big games and just having the confidence to step back inside, make the conversion easy, make it gettable, and they do. AJ Morris slots the two. Love this, love the composure, it's easy for Ollie Morgan to just get that ball out to the speed quickly, but he delays it as long as he can, and then Lewis Howells darts in. Let's go, please. Oh, and that is off Newhall, it's back with Christ College, and that is 
Somewhat of a hammer blow for Newhall School. Oh, what a ball! What a ball! And now it's a race to the line. There will be one winner. It is Lewis Howell. Oh, no, he's dropped it! He's dropped it! What a tackle! Theo Robinson saves the game for Newhall School. One of the passes of the day is foiled by a piece of defensive brilliance. T-Rob for Newhall School saves the day. The miracle ball conjuring up the had to finish score for the T-Rob rocking Christ. And now Newhall, having coughed up the restart, having saved the day, have two minutes to find a score, then maybe another one. I mean, a draw would be a fair result. However, it's no good to anyone. Here we go. He shows. He goes. Penn Carr is clear. He says he's the fastest man in Essex. And on that evidence, who would doubt him? <laughs> Ben Carr drives the nail home and it's 14-14. Here we go, just that hesitation, looking around the shimmy of the hips. One more little drop of the shoulder. Ben Carr, Ferrari engine into sixth gear and in for a key try in this absolute ding-dong. And in midfield, Reese conquered. <laughs> Release now, Green and Hope. Here we go then. Coming up to 13 minutes on the clock. Christ College have knocked it on. Referees missed it. They've kicked it away. Could that be key? T Rob chases back. One try already. Are oh, the strength, the desire, the offload. A new haul. 14-7 down moments ago. Now on the ball. Christ College look absolutely exhausted and New Hall finding new energy. This defensive line, well, if it's a line, it's asymmetric. They are at ones and twos. And what an opportunity now for New Hall put in at the scrum. Christ College making the interchanges again. And I think they need these fresh legs because those boys out there are absolutely goosed. A few more Christ College breeze blocks brought in for the final fray. 30 seconds, going to be last play. Real Crouch. juicy blind side here for Newhall. New if they want to use it, I'll tell you what, they've got a three on two hold. out on the big side because Christ College have dragged a man across. Hold, push now, hold, oh, hold. The bomb squad okay. exploding into Newhall. Reset, please. Well, the referee told them to hold but you cannot yeah, stop it was, it was those boys going forward. 14 minutes, time is up on our clock. Just a reminder, we're not linked in with the referees, Crouch. but we are close. But any try here, any score here will Set. surely be enough to win an epic on RE1. At the short side they go, that's why you leave the man there. And that's a good tackle in the end, searching. Oh, he's coming in the side, Will Savile. And it'll be Christ College on RE1, with a shot at it. Another excellent tackle. In over the ball go Newhall, winning the penalty. Mason Murray, the clamp. Ben Carr has a penalty advantage. And discipline cost Christ College a try in the first half. Couple of high tackles win a late tackle. Cost them a draw at the end here. 15 minutes on the clock. What a game. Exhaustion writ large across the faces of all these players. These are the do or die moments. He's in behind. Oh, there's a handful of jersey that saves Christ College for now. Ben Carr, fastest man in Essex. Off left Tackle to now. Christian Rankin. No hands, no green, no hands, let it come. Three on two. 
and they feed the speed. New Hall for the corner. The touchline's going to defeat them. And this epic finishes with honours even. Christ College 14, New Hall 14. In terms of drama, in terms of quality, in terms of desire, that'll take some topping. How gives the Rosson Park School 7s, D Rog? So good. <laughs> Here we go, welcome back. Welcome back to Group K. And the boys under 18 Vars, it's Bishop Wordsworth up against Teddy Zoxon and Teddy Zoxon on the burst. Teddy Zoxon from the kickoff streaking across and drawing first blood. Wow. Blink and you miss it action on RE1 at the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. We don't have any team sheets for these lads, so unfortunately, no names are going to get called out. But I can say that we've got a bit of stardust on the mic because we have got England GB Sevens Olympian Amy Wilson Hardy in the house with us for commentary. Amy, you're loving what you're seeing so far. I am loving it indeed and just shows kickoff such a crucial part of the game. You can just see how quickly teams can score from it if they get it right. The third yeah. set piece, they call it, don't they, in sevens? Yes. It is, it is, the, third, <laughs> is it the third one it, or is it, it another is one I've missed piece. out? No, it is a set piece. But big emphasis goes on it. Possession, nine tenths of the sevens law. Bishop Wordsworth. Oh, they've had their pockets picked on the halfway line and they've given it to one of the gas men. Who is he going to look back? He's only going to look to the uprights and he's going to score a second in the blink of an eye for Teddy's Oxford. Real bravery going for that, obviously putting that hand out. If that goes the wrong way, that's off the pitch, yellow card. If it goes the right way, you get two hands on it. It results in something as magical as that. Well, these two schools in the group with Christ College and Newhall, who we just enjoyed that thriller of a 14-all draw together with. And Bishop Wordsworth, they're victorious over Newhall, whilst Teddy's put away Christ College. So these two sides coming in here undefeated and with their eyes on a knockout place. They know that this is the stiffest competition in the group on paper, though we know anything can happen. Numbers. Amy, psychologically, you're, Numbers. you're in group play. It's Two. just game after game. How Two. do you keep Here's yourself your at the right intensity, Blue. peaking at each game? Black. As, as cliched as it sounds, you do just have to take a game at a time. You can't get carried away with it. Sevens can go either way. We know that. We see that all the time. There's upsets everywhere. So black from black. just that focus on that one game, just focusing on that result. And here we see, again, huge pressure here. Is it a third? Yes, he's finished it. He's finished it in the corner. 
Fantastic transition play again, getting straight on the ball. Wow, Teddy's Oxford running red hot here on Black. RE1. Black. Set that line up. In this please. big showdown with Bishop Wordsworth. And wow. So much to do. Great conversion attempt. Goes drifting towards the uprights, but across the face. So they'll have to settle for 19, but this feels like a long way back for Bishop Wordsworth already as we, we take a look at just how it was snatched in the line out. You said transition. You just got to be first to the bounce of the ball sometimes. And that's all about desire getting to the fly hack first. Yeah, excellent reactions there. Yeah, Timing, Blue. Seems like a big mountain to climb, but it's not impossible. No hands now. We've roll. seen bigger comebacks than sevens. So it's all about keeping the ball, settling, like you said. And that. Oh. Oh, he's done so well to keep it in, but has he put his team under more pressure? Teddy's again, first to the bounce, bending, pirouetting. Oh, that's delicious. Then the show, then the go, then the offload round the back. Teddy's Oxford unplayable right now. Yeah, just fantastic. And like you said, the first to the bounce, they're hungry for it. You can see every 50-50, they're winning. So it makes such a difference. There are just sometimes those matches where kind of everything goes right, isn't it, in a half. In Fisher words that they've had one possession, one loose pass, but they've been punished four times. I love the ambition they tried to play with them. They did get their possession, but just shows just slightly, slight inaccuracy. It's just such an unforgiving game. You've just got to be bang on with your skills, bang on with everything. You're not, unfortunately, you get the other end of the scoreboard. Well, the kickoff, an error from Teddy. So Bishop Wordsworth need to use this one. They're in a hurry as well, understandably, trailing 26 0. Another long looping ball. Stutter stop. And then out into touch. Teddy's not hanging around. Under two minutes left of the first half remaining. And they are just brimming with confidence. They're slipping tackles. They're speeding through gaps, and they're in for a fifth in this first half. The game almost done and dusted in six minutes. It just shows how unforgiving the game can be. One missed tackle in sevens, and it's a line break, it's a try. You just don't have that protection that you have in the 15 side game. No protection out there. Uh, Amy, I mean, you're, you're playing Premiership Rugby as well in 15 aside for Ealing Trail Finders, but we're going to focus on your sevens career because you've been all over the world. You've played in Olympics as well. I mean, is there a better job than being an international sevens player? I mean, I challenge you to find one. Like, it's pretty damn good. Um, yeah, get to travel the world doing what you love. Um, it is hard work, don't get me wrong. We've seen a few, few not, of these You're games. not kidding anyone, eh? I'm not, I'm not standing for that. You try and explain seven minutes, seven minutes a half, 14 minute game. You try and explain that to someone who hasn't played sevens. It sounds quite easy, right? But. And you have me commentated on you quite a few times. I, I, can, I can testify that it isn't the easiest to sports, especially some of the players that you're up against, uh, you know, the the women's sevens tour has gone from strength to strength and some of the like the athletes the players the teams are just insane these days it is incredible oh i'm gonna not talk about me because we th I, thought, I thought we had a i thought we had a possession that we could keep but again transition play and you see teddy's just going under the post again that's so brutal it's so hard just to get but they just gotta stay fighting in the second half well, it's been a seven minutes to forget for Bishop Wordsworth, who have just come up and it's against an inspired Teddy's Oxford side. And it's half time, and it's Teddy's leading 40 points to nil. It's a tough one, but it's all about what you can do in the second half. Don't lose heart, just keep playing. I've been there, I've been there. I've been there. And it is tough, you know, as he said, sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't go your way, but credit to Teddy's first to every bounce. And just touching 
upon that sort of wonderful life that you lead a little bit more, Amy. Should we, should we take off some destinations? <laughs> LA, Cape Town, Dubai, Hong Kong and Singapore are next. Yeah. Cape Town. Cape Town, one of my favourite places in the world. Yeah, Cape Town. Yeah, Is that your favourite one? Um, I love Dubai for different reasons, um, but Cape Town... Is that because I'm the stadium announcer there? 100%. You got it. You got it. I think straight away, Lindsay's going to be there. <laughs> I am there. If I don't get selected, I'm going to be heartbroken. Um, I should do the jersey presentation next time. That'd be a lovely. Yeah. That'd be a lovely touch, wouldn't it? I, I'm on it. I'm on it. Okay. You should have been there last year. It's my my tenth anniversary. That would have put the ice the on one the just cake. Gone. Yeah. I was there. I know, actually, you, you were there because <laughs> I spoke to you, but as in at the shirt press. <laughs> Right, what words of wisdom with that decade under your belt would you be saying to Bishop Wordsworth in that huddle just there? It's such a hard place to be in, but I just think you've got to show that fight to the end of the game. The score most likely isn't going away. I mean, I'd love to be proved Moving wrong, but glue. just that fight and that heart to finish the game off, showing what they can do. Obviously a good side, they just haven't had opportunity. So let's hope that they keep playing for this final seven minutes. A bit of skin on show from Teddy's Roll in the ten. tackle moments ago. And they're back on the ball. Ten, you're offside. And they're getting a call from the referee. Offside from Bishop Wordsworth. That's good. And Teddy's, well, their task will be to maintain intensity here with the game pretty much wrapped up. Definitely. How many times do you see teams just kind of go off their game plan? We could see them trying, experimenting maybe a little bit, trying plays that they, now they know they've kind of got that lead on the scoreboard, they can experiment, try stuff out for the next few games. A couple of big lads colliding there, and well, the backdoor pass is almost popping up nicely for Bishop Wordsworth, but again, not going their way. And actually, just, just looking at Teddy's sort of try and build there, they actually haven't really unlocked the Bishop Wordsworth defence. They've been beneficiaries of pressure and then swooping in and collecting balls. So, we haven't seen their attacking shape, as it were. So will that be probably Whoa! a big emphasis for them? Is like let's make Bye! sure that we use this as an opportunity to, to get our shape here. Definitely, you can have these games, and I mean, as I said, I've been on the wrong side and the right side of these results, and then you can play the next game, and it goes completely peaked on. It's it's about finding their groove as well. They've been so good on transition. You've seen every ball on the floor. They've been the first to it. Every 50-50 decision, it's been there. So to see them build a few phases, which they're doing now, which is great, with a fantastic run through the middle. No prisoners there. Oh my goodness. I mean, I you... say good phases, but they didn't really need to then either. That was such a physical run, taking on two defenders, what do we want swatting to do them off the and going under the post. Well, that's not exactly page one of the Sevens handbook, but crash ball using the opposition as speed bumps, then matadoring them away. What a carry. It was um, Gonzalez-esque from Argentina, actually. So maybe it's, it's the new hybrid Sevens. It's what it's all about. That is not a bad comparison. Luciano Gonzalez, who wasn't set World Black Sevens Black. earlier, but he was definitely in Black the conversation. And he is Advantage over. accustomed to cannonballing through opposition, but that's a little bit more flighty. That's about the footwork. And that'll be the game. What I love about Sevens, you see, well, rugby in general, but Sevens isn't just, they say, oh, it's a backs game. It's not just a backs game. It's about that physicality. It's about that brutality. Like, even if there's not a line break Scott there from through. that previous try, sucked in three defenders, and that means there's space somewhere else. And then you can use the speedsters, the, the flight of foot, to use their skill set in other areas. It's such a good, there's so many different skill sets. Well, with the 50-point mark breach, that draws to a conclusion our match. And it is one that Teddy's Oxford have dominated from start to finish. They win this one, 54 points to nil against Bishop Wordsworth.
Right, welcome back to Pitch RE1. And I think you'll agree that the boys under 18 Vars is delivering in spades on day two of the greatest school sevens competition on the planet. It's the Howden, Rossin Park National School sevens. And right here, we've got Harrogate Grammar against Uppingham. Harrogate Grammar in the red and white. Uppingham working hard in defence. Uppingham coming through a group, including Farnborough Sixth Form College, Wellington College, who they nil 34 nil. And they also took down Ivy Bridge Community College before defeating Millfield 19 10 earlier today. Waterloo School are the other side in this group who Harrogate beats 24 7. And we do have a team sheet for Uppingham because Amy Wilson Hardy brought it with her when she arrived in the commentary booth. So she's now frantically rooting around trying to find that lost piece of paper. So you have to bear with us for the moment. Have thrown you under the bus there a little bit, Amy. I apologise. Uppingham. Uppingham, who was picked by Angus Savage in the review show in the Dying Embers of day one last night. You can catch our review show at the end of the finals play each day here. It's a new addition to the media offering of the School Sevens. Angus Savage, the main man of Next Gen 15 Rugby, picking Uppingham as potentially his pick for this hotly contested Vars. Bit of footwork on show and then out to the wide channel. Smart hands, good hands out to Charlie Ray. Charlie Ray raising the standard and careering through Harrogate tackles. Lovely offload to Ned Ketton. What long ball over the top. Nearly every pair of hands has touched this one. Desperate tackle, quickly resourced. Good defensive read, just knocks them off their perch and gets them to stutter. Charlie Ray back on the ball. Robert Ryan, Robert Ryan doesn't have the stretch in the fingertips to reel that one in. But Harrogate. Harrogate spot a bit of room and they put it on the toe. Lovely handoff. Uppingham come pouring forward again. Arrogant living by their wits a bit. Uppingham beginning to open them up. Lovely angle, then the pass. And Uppingham, first blood. Great well work, Chai. Patience. But can I just say, Harrogate's defensive set there, like, what a shift. And even to track back and then be ready to get off the line to put the pressure on and nearly get the turnover. So great from both sides here. On RE3, Dean Close School versus Cheltenham College. On RE4, Stanford versus Whitchurch High School. And in the under 14 girls tournament, RE5, Hillhouse School versus Callon Cumru. On RE6, the Perth versus Cardinal Newman. On RE7, Rygate Grammar versus. Well, another look Lankau. here. Of that move that broke Harrogate down, the conversion's been added. How about this for a bit of interplay in the 15-metre channel, Amy? Love it. Who needs the whole pitch, eh? Well, Harrogate get a bit of time on the ball and they begin to... Pass it around like the peroxide, which has clearly been doing the rounds <laughs> in the common room. Yeah, following in the footsteps of Los Puma Sevens, who all dyed their hair peroxide blonde after winning Hamilton on the series last year. Harrogate, the pass just delayed too long. And the moment gone. Just held, yeah, hold on. Held on to it a fraction there. I think he could have given it a second earlier and then they're under the post. Just those are small margins again, but great break to start it off. Set, please, over here. 
he'd made the break and he'd also decelerated as well to give his support a bit of time to arrive on the shoulder. Crouch! But the pass, not quite on the money. Bind. And when you're on day two Set. of the under-18s Vars, that's what you've got to be, because you're coming up against the best in the comp. No sweeper at home, plenty of pace. William Crossfield, William Crossfield, straight up the gunners and pouncing. Uh, kicks and grounded there, so 22. D-Rodge, who's on my shoulder, just in, enjoying a soothing beverage, has made a great point. Wonderful gas from the referee to get there. Wow. <laughs> we had TMO. That would be being agonised over for the next few minutes. I think the ref made the right call there. I think it was. What was the right call? He was right on it as well. You do forget these refs have to put in a hard graft, and I know on the World Series, and it's actually an ex-player for England Sevens is the strength and conditioning coach for the referee. She puts them through their paces. Well, our referees have been put through their paces by these under-18 boys, by the likes of Harrogate, who are undefeated coming into this, and offload smuggled out the back door, and just by a lace. The winger dragged down, Uppingham in transition, stop, full of stop. verve in the hands of Ray, who offloads out of the tackle. Weaving back in, just looking left, but no one was there. Back they go to the right. Tremendous work rate from Harrogate, who managed to get themselves aligned. They were looking fractured for a moment. And there, first of the bounce. Oh, my legs and my lungs are hurting, just watching this phase of play. Wow, well, that first half has raced through. Seven minutes done and seven points to the good for Uppingham School in this tight affair here on RE1. Just the converted score separates Harrogate from Uppingham in this group VF clash. Both undefeated coming into this Harrogate, kicking off in red and black into the arms of Uppingham ideally, but too much mustard on the drop goal. It's a shame, it's just a shift of momentum straight away, like we mentioned to set piece, and now they're on the back foot, free kick. Uffingham got possession again. They look very comfortable on the ball, they look like they like to attack, and the switch being offered up, and Robert Ryan on that element of it. Guy Salisbury coming into the picture before. Out and on. I like how Harrogate defending though, they're staying high, they're being really brave and that's forcing them to have to play around them. They're not letting them get those easy reads on those switches, they're staying nice and connected. It's really hard to attack against that. 
We've been having this conversation a lot uh, in the first two days of sweeper or no sweeper. Where do you stand on that, Amy? Million dollar question. I um, like no sweeper. I like a seven up and dropped winger. I think you can be more aggressive. I think defence is all about getting the ball back. And that is, um, seven up favours that. There you go. I'm a shallow sweeper man. Here go Carragher, lovely ball, having got in behind the defence, bit of pace out there and straightening and sucking in two white jerseys who come thundering in to make the hit. Harrogate banging on the door of the 22. They break the threshold with a pass. There's another man out to the right, but he may not need him. Oh, what a finish! And what a way to open up this second half. A try under the sticks, a conversion to come. And we might just be at sevens. Fantastic footwork, and I love the teammates behind celebrating with him. Fantastic to see. Well, barely a tackle has been missed all match by either side. The hop, the skip, and then just a little bit of an over chase in the gap opening up. And you could see him roaring with delight before he even touched the ground. We've had some nerve shredders on RE1 today. Seven all. Nine and a half minutes play. Oh, right into the arms of the danger man, Charlie Ray, who gallops. Oh, oh. <laughs> and he's caught high. He is caught high. So Charlie Ray won't get credited with the score, but with it being a penalty try, it'll be a yellow card and the conversion thrown in for free. Oh, I gutted for the defender though. I gutted, he worked so hard and he had to go fairly high to hold the ball up. Just got slightly on the wrong side of the shoulder, the sternum there. Oh, that is brutal. He could have been a hero. And we're taking a look now. Just a bit of a dip wasn't there from Ray as he looked to swing his arm around. It's so difficult because you're trying to slap down the fender as well at the same time, aren't you? Crucial miss kick here, though, when you're down to six. You want to keep the ball, as in when you're playing against six, you want to keep the ball and they've given possession back to Harrogate, but now they've got it back to see what they do. Interesting call here. They've gone quickly. Ray, who's been difficult to manage, is there in the middle, receives it back, slings it left. Big re gets monstered, but gets the ball away. Another high shot, just slipping up. No force in it. But penalties beginning to punish Harrogate, upping him. Sensing blood, but what a driving shot that was. Again, back for more. Great composure from Uppingham, who go to the edge, who go to Salisbury. Salisbury! Salisbury! In and under the uprights. That could be the try that takes it away from Harrogate. Just discipline again, you said a couple of car, uh, well, card, a couple of penalties. It's so hard, it's still hard to defend in sevens anyway, and when you're down a player, it's savage out there. Some really, really good reads from Harrogate making the hit, but unfortunately, just not getting the rewards of their big hits and Uffingham being really patient, keeping the ball and getting the reward. What's the attacking strategy? How do you maximise playing against six? That's why I say, said it was interesting to see what they did off um, the penalty when they got the ball back and they quick tapped, so for us, we quite often look at a scrum there because you can tie three players in and then you can give your speedsters huge amount of space to play. I think they obviously back themselves and it paid off. So that's Good definitely, I'm not saying it's the wrong option, but it's kind of thinking how you can manipulate the, the defenders even more when they're, they're struggling. Harrogate restored to the full complement of seven. There is still time. Clever kick here though, going deep, making them play out, I like that. Nice feet, really nice feet, but not enough room to work with the touchline. Is defender number eight. 
played now on pitch RE4. You can feel the energy now from Uffingham, can't you? Bringing the changes as well, bringing in fresh lungs, fresh legs. Maybe looking to conserve some of their starters. Giving some minutes to the rest of the lads. And, well, Ray is one of their totems out there. He wins the ball from the line out. The real swagger to the way that Uppingham attack. And they go boot to ball. They add in a bit of kicking variety, but it's well read by Harrogate. Oh, wow. They don't have a break. They accelerate into the contact. And again, the feet and the fight are good. Lovely pick up. Low round the laces. Got a long way to go here, Harrogate. But the hands are just about unlocking Uppingham and having to work so hard to contain them. Big ball over the top. Feeding the speed. Off he goes. Brilliant tackle. The suit round the ankles, but the support's there. One more pass. White jersey struggling to get back into position. Brilliant bit of vision. Sits up for the winger. Last one of the tries of the week. That was majestic. That was incredible. The vision to see that. And then the support. They've got, here they go quick. Oh, I think they just missed the opportunity. Get another kickoff. I wonder if they were conscious of the time. Well, Harrogate don't end with the W, but the, they end with the hearts of the Rugby Sevens Romantics. Coast to coast, every set of hands, and the vision, the bounce, the finish. Oh, yeah. Well, final score here, Harrogate Grammar School 12, Uppingham School 21. If that's a taste of things to come for the rest of the week, sign me up. Amy Wilson Hardy, have you got to go do some things? Or are you having fun up here? Probably. Probably. <laughs> I do what I'm told. If we can keep you, we'll keep you. But if not, it has been an absolute pleasure. D. Rod, you're coming in. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. My steak?
to the under-14s girls competition and a truly international affair. We have Penner Hale <laughs> Comprehensive School from Wales and Jamira English Speaking School from Dubai. Two rugby hotspots, but for very different reasons on this planet. Jamira English Speaking School, they're going to kick us off. They're in the slightly darker blue with the thin white hoops. Penner Hale from the other side of the Seven Bridge. They're in the royal blue. And away we go. Do you want the good news or the bad news? There is no bad news, there's just good news because Amy Wilson Hardy is still with us for this one. There's a, a hint of the Captain Americas about this Penn and Hale jersey, isn't there? With the blue and the, and the red and white sticking out from underneath it. But Jamira, Jess, they've turned that ball over, darting straight for the line early on. Both teams pretty narrow. And one more pass out to the left could be enough for Jess. But instead, going through the phases in the 22. First opportunity of the game, another check back inside. Can't weave through the bodies, can find the offload. Oh, and it's knocked on. And the first opportunity of the game goes begging, but real signs of intent there from Jess, Amy. Definitely great energy, great enthusiasm. Just question, could they get that one, one extra pass? See a couple of overlaps there. Just do the simple things well, and I think they're over, over. Just getting a bit too excited to get to that try line. I think everyone wants to score. Certainly too. Well, Pennard Hale. They've had one game already, and that was uh, over on pitch RE6. They defeated Hayes School by 17 points to 12. So a real nail biter there. But Jamira English speaking school. It was a very big opening win. 48 nil against Blundells. Oh. And the, just losing the balance. Anyone who's ever tasted turf like that knows that there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes you just run out of ground, but it's another knock on. But an excellent tackle. And the referee will bring us back for that knock on. So first scrum of the game. So talk to me about these, these scrums inside year 22 then. Tactically, firstly from, a, from an attacking perspective, do you change the way you attack the ball here to try and disrupt the exit? Yeah, a little bit. It depends how they set up. Um, I think we would always probably look to initially have a default of like an exit and potentially a kick here. But then equally, if the winger drops off and gives you that space, then get the speedster running. So it's just about scanning, keeping your options open. But the main thing is just securing that set piece. You're going to get a lot of pressure from the, the team in the attacking side, as it were. So. Well, it's excellent cover defence. Brilliant tackling, forcing. The fumble ball and that will lead to the first score of the game. And the rumble on the ball, over on the far side. The Jess supporters, they're out in numbers, they've all come over and they're all delighted with that score. I love that, how good does that feel when you score and you hear that on the boards? So good. But just, just what I was saying there, that, that extra pressure that you can give when you know you've got space behind you just means that you can just force that error sometimes and, and capitalise. So. It's a tough one, it's tough getting out, but great tackle. Up on a feet, on again, forcing that error, and then great transition to get under, well, not under the sticks, but over the line. Is she under six? Yeah. Close enough. Close it's enough. five points on the board, and the conversion was good too. But you've got to admire Pennard Hale's desire to play. I mean, that was a backdoor offload, and another offload out of the tackle. It's receiving those offloads. That's the problem for the Welsh girls at the moment. They've copped up possession again, and Jess closing in on the 22. Fluid hands, left to right, and it's two tries in two attacks. Ruthless. That was lovely, just a basic so well. Just like I was saying, that they probably didn't quite do that first few phases. That phase, there was no hesitation. Really good clinical hands just showed. We like to complicate the game of rugby, but sometimes simple is the best option. Well, that's the best option there. Four minutes gone, two converted tries, both under the poles. Pennard Hale with some soul searching to do here, certainly some quality in this team, but what they've learned very, very quickly against this team from Dubai is that their mistakes will be punished. 
definitely, like you said, I love the ambition they're playing with. Oh, just as we see, a great kickoff there. Jess yeah. taking their own kickoff. Well, Penn and Hale just a little bit too deep, weren't they? No one marshalling that 10 metre line. But now a knock on. You've got to be really brave in those kickoffs. It's, it's quite daunting when you've got a player running full pelt at you. Often get collisions in the air of people going for it. Well, the collisions are one of the aspects of this under-14s girls competition that really interesting because they're not contact shy, are they? A lot of the time they stand narrow because they have to because they haven't quite developed those long passing skills yet, but they are certainly not shy of the contact zone and often seek it out. Definitely, but what I love is they seek it out, but they're always trying to keep the ball alive. This is my second under-14s game that I've, I've been on comms with um, today and all teams have just shown that willingness to keep the ball alive, get the offloads on. And like we said, the Welsh team here, if they if they could just get those support players in the right place, they're going to be looking really threatening. Good pressure at scrum time and Jess can come away with it. Now feeding the speed around the outside. Another good tackle, shoulder to hip, but another offload out of that tackle. And good defensive line speed, forcing the knock on. You are going to see a fluoro yellow scrum cap like that in your peripheral vision, aren't you? You're going to know that a Penn and Hoyle torpedo is coming your way. I love it. I feel like scrum caps are like the new boots. Like people are starting to realise it's their, their identity as their scrum cap as well. When you're on the same kit, how can I stand out? And that's definitely one way of standing out right there. More pressure at scrum time from Jess. And they've won the penalty. Physical dominance. And they're away. Another step inside. Oh, and that one's gone backwards, says the referee. She's happy to continue to attack around the bootstraps. And Jess can go in search of try number three. Coming towards the end of this first half. The referee then gives the ball back to Penhead Hoyle. It's a great turnover, straight on the ball there. Really super reactions. Jess didn't have a chance to clear. Well, that is one of the things that constantly impresses me because in this girls under 14 competition there are some experienced players but there are some players who are very new in their rugby journey and their rugby IQ is something you've already spoken about looking to move the ball out of the tackle immediately adopting that jackal technique that's a tough thing to learn that they're learning incredibly quickly and it's very impressive 100%. I think what you see in under-14s is a lot of instinctive play, which is great because you're seeing that, that natural instinct for players to kind of see space and move and work to that. But when, then when they start to get that experience and they can add those little bits of nous and that savvy play, that's when you get the, the makings of a really good team, a really good player. And it is. The, the standards, I know we keep saying it, but the standards of all levels, the under-14 girls especially, is coming up so much and it's just really reassuring for the future of rugby and the, the sport we love. Last chance to attack in this first half then for Penn and Hale. And the attempt at the offload there, a little bit too ambitious, so the ball's gone forward and maybe Jess have got one more opportunity before the half-time whistle goes off. Skipping away from contact, accelerating away from the last defender. Another score for Jemira English-speaking school. Another tiny error punished by Penn and Hoyle. 19-0 as we approach the whistle. Jess have just been so super clinical on the transition play, which has led to a lot of their tries. Putting in those tackles in defence and then quickly getting on that ball and showing there that there's not any substitute for speed. Well, get it out to the edge. That's exactly what they did. The half-time whistle's gone. That conversion was missed as we take another look at this try. Backing yourself around the outside there. You've got to know you're quick. Not only quick, super quick. Didn't lay a glove. And unless something drastic changes, it is going to be two wins out of two for Jess. They lead at half time, 19 0.
Enough of Dave Rogers' Welsh geography. It's I Jum love that. Yeah. I love that insight. Oh, here we go. Jess taking route one and getting the offload away. That is brilliant rugby by the girls from Dubai. And they're already in a great spot, leading 19 0 after the first half. And just directing traffic. I love that. Where are you? I want you there. Here's the ball. Let's go again. Penn and Hale a little bit short on the right hand side. And that is exactly where Jess attack. Oh, the cover tackle. Brilliant. Is it enough to save the try? It is for the first phase, but not for the second. Well, you've got to ground it. Down it goes eventually. They want to get close to the poles. There was a little moment there where we don't have team sheets annoyingly, but the ball went down and she dropped it and picked it up, knowing she could go again. We talked about rugby IQ, and there's plenty of that in this Jess team. So much so, those, those skills are so hard to pick up. They're so hard to execute. You see on the World Series, we watch it here. I think it's going to come in a second. It just that now, so you, you've got to release the ball there. If she doesn't release the ball, that's that's a um, turnover for the other team. But that now to release the ball, get on her feet, pick it up again, and ultimately create the try for her teammates. It's what, absolutely fantastic. What do you think of the grounding? <laughs> Grounding, hard work. <laughs> get it on the, get it on the floor. Get the five points. But I love. She was fighting to get to close to the post. That's what I loved. Another knock on. Oh, another execution of speed at the right hand side. Another error punished. They are ruthless. They love scoring tries. And Jess now putting Penn and Hale to the sword. But look at the defence from Benna Hale. Like, they kept working, they kept that to potentially only a five-point score instead of a seven, and that is another thing that you can't teach that. And I always say to the girls and boys that I coach, if you give me just one thing, give me work rate, give me effort, because that's what it's all about. It absolutely is. And Penn and Hale have had that in spades, unfortunately. They've come up against a top operation in the Jumeirah English-speaking school. I do love how they all support each other. We already talked about them over there banging the boards, the boys' teams, the girls' teams through the ages. Some of the parents have come over too. Sounds like at the start and the end of some of the European cycling races, doesn't it, where they bang <laughs> those boards to really rev up not just the crowd but the cyclists as well. Only this time it's the rugby players who are being urged on that is what's great about a tournament like this, when you have multiple age groups of the same schools, everyone getting behind each other, like we said, girls and boys. So good to see. And great to experience as well. And great to have you on board with us wherever you're watching around the world. I'm sure there'll be some parents and fans and family members and friends watching back in Wales and in Dubai. Another rangy run through the midfield, another offload out of contact, and another tackle skipped out of. That is a beautiful turn of pace. Absolutely no chance for the edge defender as Jess go in again. It is try number six under the poles this time. See, ball in two hands, even right when she scored, where she probably didn't even need it then, but from especially when beating those first two defenders, puts that ambiguity in the defender's mind. What is she going to do? Is she going to kick? Is she going to pass? Is she going to run that time? Gassing around the outside, showing her speed. Are you a dotter down or a slider? Um, a dotter. A dotter, <laughs> yeah. I no, I have, I have. I guess it depends. If it's wet, then I'm happy to slide. Um, in I, I know, I know a professional men's player who I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna grass at, but he is a dotter downer because he's scared he might hurt himself if he dives, and he scores a lot of tries in top level rugby as well. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. You get 130 kilo people bashing into you all the time and you're worried you might hurt yourself sliding in. You do look at the Aussie. So a lot of the Aussie girls come from touch rugby where obviously diving for the ball is a yes. big skill. And you do, they look great doing it. But I just, I do, not about hurting myself, but more tripping myself up or yeah. face planting, I think. I'm with you. I mean, touch rugby, that is a... A different thing altogether. Their skill levels are outrageous, aren't they? Playing touch rugby at the top level. Absolutely crazy. I mean, as I said I've got my UR7s hat on here as well, and we got Dom Trip, one of our 
head of operations who is a England touch player. Yeah. And um, he's he's um, drafted in a few coaches from the touch world, and it has been absolutely great to have them on board because their footwork, their skill set. Obviously, it's a different game, but so many transferable skills. And I think if you're listening as well, it's a great way if all contact rugby is not the on the top of your agenda at first, then why not try touch? It's still such a good game to play. I've uh, I've seen Dom play a few times. I've covered the touch rugby in commentary, and he, oh, just as Jess are going again here, they've still got 90 seconds. There might be more tries in them. There's a shirt tackle, swinging round, and, and Jess are in one more time. For another excellent score in the corner. So while we wait for the conversion, so so Dom, they they play rugby league style there, don't they? So touch and you play the ball through the legs like in rugby league. When he comes in and acts in half and fizzes a pass, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. It ah, it, oh, he's uh, he's a very very talented touch rugby player. They were testing us with the the US Sevens Academy with our their passing. If we could catch it on the run, it's, okay. it's quite hard. <laughs> yeah, but it's so when he does that proper spiral spin pass, it makes that like. <laughs> Yeah. noise doesn't it anyway away from touch back to full contact and that is a full contact hit as just chasing the turnover but they've just lost the footing but have managed to come up with it more excellent footwork not scared of that contact zone three tacklers it takes in the end and an offload off the floor the gas merchants out wide usually when she gets it there's only one outcome step inside through three defenders. Such a lovely balanced runner. Like she just looks effortless going from one foot to the other. So hard to defend. As Penn and Hale have found out. Well, our clock has ticked over 14. That ball clears the uprights. And that is full time. Jemaira English speaking score. Make it two wins out of two. They've defeated Penner Hale. Comprehensive 43 0. Back to the boys then, and the under-14s competition here at the Howden Roslyn Park National School 7. It's Duke of York's against King Alfred's. This is Group C, Duke of York, Alfred's fall into Ipswich School. So both of these teams looking for their first victory of the competition. It's so tough if you lose your first game. You know you've got to be perfect from here on in, and you're still relying on other results, so you've got to dig in with your mates and Duke of York's are doing exactly that oh my goodness me scorched earth is left behind 
A trail of destruction and beaten defenders. <laughs> what a start to the game. Incredible start. You could see the game plan right from that kickoff. King Alfred kicking it slightly deeper, enabling them to play wide. You could see where they wanted that ball to go early on. Well, that's gone under the crossbar. No points for that, unfortunately. But five points to Duke of York. And this is, well, I call it a finish. It's a start, middle and a finish. Brilliant work. And that is the beauty of this game. If you have a weapon like that, you just need to find ways of allowing them to operate. I'm constantly doing looking around my shoulder. Where are my speedsters? Give me some gas. Deep with the kickoff as well. What are your thoughts on, on deep kickoffs versus contestables? Because I know that it's such an important part of the game that you play. It's a lot on your, your skill set of your team. What a oh, shot! <laughs> <laughs> and I think that explains why they might go deep um, with the fence like that. They're trying to pin them in. Let's look at this back. Here's mark. Yeah, he's done well to keep the arm down there, isn't he? Because if that arm has gone up above, it could have been seat belty, it could have been high, it could have been a penalty. Instead, it's an excellent shoulder first tackle that forces the turnover, and it'll be put in Duke of York. Oh, that's such good footwork in the yeah, close quarters and the acceleration away. Two attacking touches, two tries for that man. <laughs> Pick your favourite. Oh, I mean, was, you, could tell, you could tell he wasn't going to pass, but it was fantastic. I mean, they know maybe his teammates are going to get a bit jealous later on if he keeps doing it, but I love it. I think that ambition and that confidence to just go for it just shows what it's all about. It's incredible confidence, isn't it? Knowing that you're in close quarters like that, knowing that there are defenders around you, but having the belief in yourself that you can beat them and beat them all ends up. And so much of rugby is that having the confidence and belief to know that you're going to and to know that you're going to take somebody on. And I think as soon as you hesitate, that's when you get those kind of those unforced errors, those mistakes happening. But then having the confidence to just go forwards, taking it on, using your super strength, bit pace, strength, anything. Fantastic to see. Well, that is the voice of Great Britain's Amy Wilson Hardy. Great to have her company. Great to have your company as well. Great day here on day two of the Howden Rosson Park National School Sevens. Here on Pitch RE1, every game live and uninterrupted. We've got boys and girls under 14s and the conclusion of the boys under 18 VARS competition. Do you say VARS or VASE, Amy? Which which are you? Uh, definitely VARS. Oh, you're a VARS. Okay. Well, you are well raised in high society, aren't you? So. I didn't, did people say VASE? I don't know, maybe. Oh, hello, we've got some team sheets here. We've got King Alfred's, we've got Dubai English Speaking College, and we've got Rygate Grammar. So a big shout out to those coaches, teachers, parents, or whoever have scribbled them down. King Alfred's on the ball. It is all very narrow. They're two scores down. They need to make something happen here. Four go minutes low, in. Go low. Oh my goodness me! The middle, Duke of York go. emptying. Poor King Alfred's players. That's the second time, and that is one of the biggest tackles we've had of the go day. Low, please. Technically excellent as Ready? well. And there are some physical specimens in this Duke of York oh. team, but that offload Play so on. close to sticking. King Alfred need to be careful here because when they knock the ball on, they temporarily switched off, and Duke of York will punish you if you do that. I was about to say, you just need to keep the ball against a team like this, but when they're putting shots in like that, it's easier said than done. Well, they need to lay a glove on this young man, and they have. That's a good tackle, but... He's got his wits about him and makes the offload. And away go Duke of York's again. Strength out of the tackle. Wherewithal to make the offload. And that is the third try. Dedication to cause there's a lost boot somewhere on the field. Oh, held up. Oh. What brilliant defence. 
Well, that is huge credit to King Alfreds because they are stuck in there. It would have been so easy to give up on that, to die on that. And it's instead a of a three score, uh, yeah, it's a two score game. Let's take another look at this heroic defending. He's the man who's lost the boot, I think. There it goes. Yeah, straight off. You need to do your lasers up, sunshine. But let's have a look at this great bit of defense to hold this ball up. Off his foot, play on! Oh. The eagle eyed referee. Oh, she's going to need to put her skates on as well because every time Duke of York are on the ball, they're beating the gain line. And they're threatening the try line. Going again. Good defence. Release, tackle player! The danger man passes off the left hand this time. Oh, that is a stop and go. But turned over. Back 10, back 10, holding on the floor. Over that ball. And King Alfred Leave needs it. to inject some pace. Instead, they've gotten down the middle. Oh, and a little hand on that. And that high is tackle. a high tackle. Back Not ten, malicious, Leave but a penalty Not nonetheless. Another penalty coming here no, for King Alfred as they're edging their way back into this first half. You were fine, you went back. The second lad wasn't back 10. So just Ildis have been there, mark, keeping Ten. Ten. Alfred's in the game. You're showing a bit of continuity, showing that they can keep the ball alive. Well, this time it's Duke of York slipping off a couple of tackles. Oh, Lara, please. Some strong boys, haven't they? Back and they've the turned tackle. that over. Here we go, in one hand, like a loaf of bread, and then away. And all of that work by King Alfred to get back into the game is undone. Excellent turnover. The green, green grass of the try line beckons. And that is a third score just before half time. Half -time. <laughs> I love, I don't know if you caught that little look from him as he looked back to his teammates. I don't think he's not the normal kicker, but I think they, um, <laughs> they didn't fancy the run to catch him up and take the conversion. So he, he gave it a go. He, he gave it a go. Yeah, he did. He did give it a go and he got a lovely tight spiral on it. So this is the try. Switched it into his favourite hand so he, he could accelerate away. Oh, nearly lost his footing. But nice it is try, a try. Yeah. It is the third try of the half. A half that the men in Maroon are well in control of and they lead 17-0. Welcome back for the second half. King Alfred against Duke of York. The warmest of welcomes to all the spectators enjoying the live stream. The warmest of welcomes to Francis Hardy as well. Hopefully you're enjoying the sevens. Where's Francis joining us from, Amy? Hi, Mum. Um, <laughs> um, the South Coast, oh, near, yeah. near Brighton. Lovely part of the world. Of course, Brighton College in powerhouses in this tournament. Got to the final last year in the boys under 18s. Knocked on one way, then the other. And that really is a nightmare, isn't it? When you cough up the ball in your own 22, just makes it incredibly difficult. 
line, please. Follow but, the metre line. Especially when you're on the, the wrong end of the school line, you just want to keep possession, try and just ride I'm it out for a little bit, little get kind of the momentum back in the game. So a really Crouch. good opportunity for Duke of York Five. to just kind of capitalise on this Six. game here early on. Well, they capitalised early in the first half, didn't they? First touch led to a brilliant try. And they're looking like they're going to score early in the second as well. Racing away, forced wide. <laughs> but a decent dive, you know. I think we could cultivate a finisher out of that young man. Maybe a little bit clunky. Six <laughs> out of ten for the finish, but five points on the board. I think you saw in this game and the last game with the under-14 girls as well, just there's no oh. substitute for pace. When you've got so much pace over the board, it is really challenging. So it's how can you use your angles? How can you use line speed to stop people running? But it's... It's a big ask. Well, he's been forced wide for the try there. He's backed his pace and he is quick. How much do you talk about that defensively? Because some, you're going to concede tries in sevens. It just happens. But how important is it to try, if you're going to concede, to, to force the opponent as wide as you can to make that conversion tough? So important. You see so often games um, that are like so tight nail-biting. And we saw draws earlier. But in the World Series now, there's no, there are no draws. So no, no, the difference between that two and seven can mean you the difference of playing extra time, going the wrong side of the score sheet. So vital. An extra time is brutal, isn't it? Oh, we had extra time against Fiji in the LA just gone. And um, it, against Fiji, it's especially hard. <laughs> Of course, everybody knows Guys, I need you back 10 from the penalty so you can't take it quick. about how difficult it is to play against Fiji. It, it, it seems mentally draining as well against Fiji because obviously they, they play incredible rugby, but just you don't know what they're going to do with the ball. It's in one hand, it's being moved around. It's, it's, it just seems every single phase is, is mentally as well as physically draining against a team like them. Definitely, you hit the nail on the head when it, you said you don't quite know what they're doing. They're, they're so unstructured. They are, they're structured in a, and you know what they're going to do, they're going to offload. Here we go. Duke of York need a try. Two men giving chase. The tap tackle's missed. It's a brilliant defensive effort, but an excellent score from King Alfred's Academy. They needed that. It's arrived just on cue. Still time left. 22-5. Great to see them get in under the post. And they can't they can't lose hope here. They've got a lot of time left to play. Like they can get back into this game if they keep the ball and show speed and pace and ambition like that. It's all to play for still. Well they're jogging back here. They need to try and get this kickoff back. So if they get another score quickly, then the belief starts to permeate. Things can happen very quickly in this game of sevens they kicked it to space but there's nobody really giving chase and it's a good low pickup another good offload duke of york on the ball now oh that's offside these ones are so hard you want to pick it up so much and you know you shouldn't Oh, 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 oh. It's gone backwards. It was nearly intercepted, and if it was, they would have been under the post no, instead. Leave it, leave it, leave it. They've got some space up the wing here. Need to stay in field, but a little toe on the paint, and it'll be Duke of York ball. Pretty unforgiving out there, isn't it? Absolutely brutal, I'd say. <laughs> Keep going, keep going. But it seems going, obvious the longer you're in the game, but sometimes when you're early in your journey, like these under-14s, you don't realise how important it is to stay in field. I mean, you go out into touch, you might want to back yourself around the outside, but possession is so key. And if you cough it up, you're in deep trouble. Good tackle. Tackle away! Definitely, it's a really fine line between wanting to give your wingers the confidence to have a go and take people on the outside, but knowing that they are going to get shouted out by the rest of the team if they go oh, in touch. Oh, shouted out <laughs> so much. Look at this. He was holding that ball in one hand. Almost Sarevi like Oh, my goodness. I feel as though he is so serene at full pace. That could have been a tray of drinks and he wouldn't have spilt a drop. Such confidence, such poise, a brilliant try. 27-7. Feel the new half-time game coming on now. 
I love that from the ref. You can kick from that side, but you have to go and get the ball. Yeah, fetch your own <laughs> mess. Let's have another look at this. He's got it in this one hand. Uh, that ball wasn't going anywhere. Look how balanced he is. Time's off a sec while he's fighting the ball. <laughs> it's not moving. Swats away the tackler as well. Such confidence. And this is going to be a first win of the day. The Duke of York. Yes, correct referee. You should have. It's coming up next. We move into the boys under 18 bars. Taunton School and his grammar school at Leeds. That has got potential. One of the great things about this tournament as well is teams playing teams for the first time. Of course, Taunton and Yorkshire, long, long way apart. Here we go. King Alfreds, good tackle. And a good offload. The referee was about to blow the whistle there. And takes it away from her lips so King Alfred can go again. Oh, swallowed up by the tackle, but somehow he's missed it. Oh, the chase back, absolutely back brilliant. Up! Try saving tackle for now, but it's picked <laughs> off the deck and dotted straight back down, and it's another score for the King Alfreds boys. The initial break from number three. He's been alive while he's put some great shots in in defence. He scored that initial try under the post, I believe. Yep, and um, then just showing that break, really giving his team some energy, and you can see the boys are rallying around him. And that takes us through to full time. Seven tries, great entertainment, but an important win for Duke of York's. Their first of the day. They've taken it against King Alfred's 29 14. Into the under 18s bars. Taunton School versus the Grammar School at Leeds. It is very much north versus very much south. And two proud rugby playing schools, two proud rugby playing areas here on pitch RE1. Grammar School at Leeds. One win, one loss today. 24 17, they went down against Dauncey's. And 19 7, they won against Kings Taunton. Taunton themselves, they beat St. Joe's and they beat Duke of York yesterday. Today, no, no, they please. beat Kings Taunton, the Taunton Derby, 17-14, an absolute thriller. 
the big tackle comes in. And then they beat Dauncey's 22-12. So victory here for Taunton would be massive. Victory for Grammar School at Leeds. And we've got to get the abacus out and do some counting. Games we've had in this under 18s for us competition have been exceptional. That footwork is exceptional. That pace is exceptional. What a score! Grammar School at Leeds with a minute on the clock. A firecracker of a try. That was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, still, I'm sorry, I'm a bit speechless. Yeah, great, this is fantastic. Just seeing, again, that confidence to take the line on, see a slight overchase, use the footwork, and then the pace to finish it off. Well, well, so much work to do here. 70 metres to go. And that poor sweeper had no chance. I don't think the slow-mo does it justice, actually. No. Well, for those of you that have been watching on Pitch RE2, you'll have been hearing the brilliant insight from Jack Zorab, who's just joined us on the scaffold, the Hollywood scaffold here, in one of the most fetching and fashionable fleeces I've seen since about 1993. That's definitely come from a trendy Instagram advert. But you look great, Jack. Two minutes gone. Taunton on the ball for the first time, stung by an exceptional score. And touching that one into touch but grammar school at Leeds they just want to play and this is why lovely ball over the top creating space where it didn't look like there was any the ball's been turned over then coughed up forward knock on advantage for grammar school at Leeds and we go back for the penalty just shows there if you have the if you have the stretch what it does to the defense if they did keep the ball and then get the ball out there the Taunton's defence were, they had about five defenders in one place, and you see there just again, probably didn't quite recover and go straight through the middle. Strong, powerful runner, boom. Boom indeed, there are some big slabs in this grammar school at Leeds team, it's a must-win game for them. And they have made an exceptional start, not even halfway through the first period yet, they're 12-0 to the good. Taunton in trouble. Now, watching the referee here, he has got his yellow card on the back of his scoring pad. So every time he pulls his whistle out to blow it after writing it down, I feel like he's he's showing the cheese to somebody. Oh, and he's broken the ref mic. Somebody sort him out. Uh, how, ref, you co you're coming up here. You're looking at me. I'm live doing the commentary. What am I <laughs> supposed to do? I can't come and fix that for you. Maybe he's taking the card out for you. Maybe he's yellow carding me. Oh, that's it. He's taking it to pieces. He's ruined it. He's given it to tournament director Andy Higgins. That's it. The game's gone. Can uh, cancel the day. I think he's a bit scared of being out of breath on the on the mic. Yes, that'll be it. So he's yellow carded everyone. And now <laughs> we don't even know why, because we can't hear it. Grammar school at Leeds. Kicking off. Taunton getting away from tackles. Here we go. This is the damage they've done all tournament. Superb offload. The inside ball thwarted. And then knocked on. And I'll tell you what, they're a little bit lucky to get away without conceding the offside penalty there as well, just to knock on. Yeah, I was a, I was a bit discombobulated then, I'm not going to lie. The, kit, <laughs> what? the, the kits are quite similar, aren't they? <laughs> oh, I can just see Ian Kench, Richmond's forwards coach, general manager at Oxford University. And his Trinity team, they never won here at Roslyn Park, but they did win the cup final, the 15s, the schoolboy final uh, at Twickenham a couple of seasons ago. A couple of those players have gone on to play for England under 20s in this year's Six Nations, including Josh Bellamy. And as I just continue talking, it makes me realise that, God, I watch a lot of rugby. <laughs> Five minutes gone here, Taunton needing a score, but knocking the ball on and butterfingers from grammar school at Leeds as well. I think that was a, a classic case there, of probably a, a um, playbook play that was slightly forced as opposed to playing the pitcher in front. At what point do you abort mission? <laughs> well, I normally go ahead in a scrum, so <laughs> yeah. I don't do anything exciting. I just hit breakdowns. Um, but I think, yeah, the, the, I think we always say, like, 
there's a there's a play, you ever have a playbook of these set piece moves. Set piece moves can be really vital. I mean, USA in the women's game they score I think something crazy like 90% of their tries through set piece. So it's obviously a huge area for them. You can see here. I bet them as they scoot down the blind. That's that's predecided because of the space they've manipulated from their setup, which is great to see. But Taunton have picked their pockets. And there's a little dog leg on the line here, that rush defence just doing enough to slow that phase down. But a real bun fight for the ball, and Grammar School at Leeds have turned it over, turned it over well into the final minute of the half. Another try here for the Yorkshire team would be a hammer blow to Taunton. Check one way, check the other, go up the shorter side. Send it to the big man to barrel up over halfway. That's a lovely inside ball. Oh, the ankle tap, the try saver, the two on one was on. And it's back with Taunton. Well, it's a two score game, but this turning into a great contest. Taunton need a try. Taunton are going to get a try. The short pop pass exploding onto it. And we're going to go in at half time with both teams on the board. And this conversion absolutely huge. The score in itself is vital, just shifting that momentum and at such an important time going in at the half. Just having scored means that you just got that kind of positive vibes going in for the second half. It's from in front of the post, but there are no easy conversions with tired bodies. That one sent into the car park. Someone's going to have to go and fetch that. Well, that's the thing. If you don't go from under the post to the other side, there's a little game delay. Take a look at this finish here. Big man galloping forward. One of my favourite things to do is look at the mums who come and watch. And I think Shania Twain has just walked past us, hasn't she? From the That Don't Impress Me Much video. I love it. There's some serious style going on around here. Yeah, she has leopard print boots, long coat. And I, for years, I could never remember the word fedora, so I just used to call them Tory cowboy hats. <laughs> Which, to be fair, is exactly what they are. <laughs> Forward pass, <laughs> half time, great game. Taunton 7, Grammar School at Leeds 14. level of men's and women's games coming to a conclusion the leagues have done and dusted it's into the playoffs just heard from Martin Webdale head coach at Loughborough students he joined us on commentary yesterday he's joining us from whatever palace he's managed to buy with his mega coaching bucks today but great to have you on board Martin great to have everyone on board as well here we go Taunton on the front foot inside outside sweeper called into action Makes a good tackle, an important tackle, and forces the penalty. That is massive. Grammar School at Leeds. First time on the ball in the second half for them, offering the outside, but there's no space there. A oh, good offload and a good bend, and a good step. Here we go, Grammar School at Leeds. 
closing in on try number three, and that was special. Amazing try. Setting it up initially, making the cut, staying in the game. We talk about two touches on the ball all the time. Once you've passed, once you've offloaded, can you get back into the game? Did just that. Sold him with the eyes as well, didn't he? Knew the option was there to pass inside. Conversion's good, 21-7. I love this, a massive step off the right foot. Just getting backwards there, knowing that he had 12 inside him. Nope, don't need you, see ya. Although, I do worry when the players are looking so far over the shoulder, they're like, like an owl, aren't they? Sometimes you just gotta run forward and don't look back. Oh, it's physical out there. There are some big bodies crashing into each other, I love it. You can see him scraping the floor there, like a bull into a matador. Oh, that is a, a shoulder, perhaps a late shoulder. But a penalty advantage coming at the next contact for a high tackle. Oh, that's nice, out of the back door, beautiful hands. Still playing penalty advantage. Helped on, palmed on, and that's a way to create space. The cat flap is lifted, the corner is open, the man dispatched, oh. and the dive is good. Oh, something for everyone, and Taunton in for their second score. We talk about those finishes, weren't we? That's fantastic. Straight off the touch field, Dom Trip would be proud. That is a very good try. Well, the pass off the left hand, the volleyball pass, the backdoor offload, the big dispatch and the diving finish. That's like a top five of tick box <laughs> rugby sevens. But they still need two scores because that one has missed and missed quite handsomely. Right, let's enjoy this. To be fair, he got rid of the defender. He could have probably taken that a little bit uh, closer to the line. Oh, we wouldn't have had that finish then. That's true. <laughs> it's all about the highlights reel. Late tackle. <laughs> Threw the man to the ground, so grammar school at Leeds. About to throw a major spanner in the works of this group. Oh, he's cruising through the gap. He is a very talented player, that young 15. Three minutes to go. And of course, for Karma School at Leeds, if we're going to points difference, they'll want to accumulate some more. That's a good pass and a good take and a good acceleration. He's got to do it on his own. Turned over well and offloaded well, but Grammar School at Leeds have come up to defend. Looking for the turnover themselves. It's not there. And there'll be some tired bodies out there now. Excellent strength from the Taunton boys. They've been really good in the contact zone. Oh, and that tackle missed in the end, but just a bit of speed bumping can be important sometimes. See how tired they are. Can they just grit their teeth and keep going? Two minutes, come on. Well, bite down on the gum shield, as they yeah. say in boxing. <laughs> Oh, here we go. That is such an important tackle. Still just under two minutes to go. Must win game for Grammar School at Leeds. Oh, Taunton, the ball was out, so well turned over. Great game IQ to know that ball was available. Oh, the big man down the middle just needed to look left. There were two men there and it was an overlap. And eventually, the jackal rewarded. Referee was telling him to lift it, wasn't he? 
Yeah, it's not good enough just to have your hands on the ball. You've got to show that conscious effort to lift it, which he eventually did with a bit of help from the ref. Another advantage coming. They could really do with another try here, Grammar School at Leeds. 21 points to 12. It's going to be enough for the victory. Oh, yellow card shown. I mean, actually was one. Yes. <laughs> Last, last minute of the game, it's been another good one. These under-18 boys' bars, is, bars games have been such a good watch. Into the 22. Oh, ripped! But still with Grammar School at Leeds, playing with a knock-on advantage after it was ripped forward. It almost feels a little bit harsh. Oh, here we go. That is probably it for this game and this contest. As Grammar School at Leeds look for a crowning try, get a crowning try. It's try number four. Good victory in the end. Taunton made it an excellent contest, but must win games bring out great performances. And that is what we've had here from Grammar School at Leeds. They've done their points difference, the world of good. I don't know if you know, Taunton and some They have won two, they have lost one, and we have got time for the restart here. I'm not going to ask you to get the calculator out, maybe, because we've got a couple of teams who have won two and lost one. So we will leave that to the maths geniuses in the office. Lovely kickoff. Grammar School at Leeds, 12 28. They're saying kick it out. And that is a good idea, because if they're going through, they will want to save as much energy as they can. It was a great start and a great finish by the Yorkshiremen, and they have defeated Taunton Next up then, Taunton School versus Grammar School at Leeds, which has just been, of course, now Cheltenham College versus Stamford. Non-stop action, relentless rugby. And we have had some spectacular games. Cheltenham College, two victories today, 15-5 over Whitchurch High, 17-0 over Dean Close. Stamford also Victorious over Whitchurch, 22-21 that was, but they lost to Dean Close, 12-14. So again, a must-win game for them. Cheltenham College looking to make it three from three for the day. Seven from seven for the tournament. It is a wild ride. Trying to get yourself through to the latter stages of this boys' Vars competition. Excellent news as well. What a team sheet for Stamford. Not for Cheltenham College, though. Stamford in the white. Cheltenham in the red and black. 
straight on the front foot. This is some acceleration up the flank. Oh, an offload could have done it. But Stanford finding a way to turn it over. Oh, Burnsy will be back in a minute. I'd ask him if it's gone two for two for the burritos, but it's 20 past one. And I know that usually he's a post two o'clock luncher. Nil nil. First scrum of the game. There have been some super tight games. Defences have been stingy. And Stamford with their first attack. Well, they've opted for the kick there, even with the deep sweeper for Cheltenham, but they're plugging the corner. And they're making Cheltenham College play out. Brilliant chase, trapped in the dead ball zone. And that is a tactic. A lot to like about that. And it will be Stamford ball. Pragmatic rugby sevens. Who'd have thunk it? Two minutes gone. The width of the field to attack here. And Stanford School, after a lovely nudge, will have the ball put in by John T. Nichols, Leicester Tigers boy. He finds Joubert. Joubert on the wraparound. Joubert oh, hasn't dotted it down. That's been held up. We have seen a brilliant piece of attacking, kicking, then a brilliant piece of defending. One all in exceptional moments, and the score remains nil nil. Oh, he's reached out to score there. He can't quite believe it, but Joubert, the opportunity has gone begging, but now Cheltenham College still got some defending to do. Nichols, that scrum half. Big pass off the left hand, big crash back inside. And another phase, eventually, Cheltenham College just run out of numbers. This space over on the right-hand side and Stanford School get the game's first try. So tough to defend. Just need to hang in there for as long as you can and hope for a mistake or an opportunity from the attack inside, but it didn't come. Cheltenham College now 5-0 down. That conversion isn't going to bother the scorers. Halfway through the first period, Stamford 5, Cheltenham College 0. So this is where the try come from. Joubert fueled by the desire to score after being held up before. And he managed to create the space. Lovely ball off the left hand and then dotted down unopposed and James Edgerton the captain gets us back underway oh, it's fumbled into touch that's suboptimal to say the least from the Cheltenham boys so what can they conjure from the line out Three fanned out, ready to attack as it comes off the top. And Joubert again. To get on that wrap around, but they're not going to need him because there's a hot step off the left once and twice, then the right for good measure. And Stanford knocking on the door with a penalty advantage. Certainly, or should I say, almost immediately becomes the long arm. A Cheltenham player sent to the naughty step. Edgerton barks instructions to the left and then gets it on the wrapper. That's a fabulous ball. 
dribble, but it had snuck forward. The idea was there. They were walking it in, Stamford. Playing with the penalty advantage, discipline costing the Cheltenham boys. Right. Two to the left, four to the right for Stamford. Short ball. Spent a lot of time tap working on those tap penalty moves by the looks of things. Dunny dotted down. Second score, James Bennett gets it. Stamford good for their 10 0 lead. Stamford. With that close defeat to Dean Close. That was over on RE5. 20 past 10. After that tight win over Whitchurch. Dean Close. One win and one defeat as well. So it's all about winning this game and winning it well. College barely had a touch. They're still down to six. And more importantly, they're down by 12. Another high hanging restart. Oh. It's gone out on the full. Serious chase, but look at the desire, the speed to get back into position for Stanford School. They are revved up for this one. And Cheltenham College well, into the Stanford half for the first time. Clock ticking up to seven minutes. If they can get a score here. Before the whistle goes, that'll instill a little bit of belief. Tackle! They've not had a lot to celebrate. <laughs> and that's even less to celebrate because Stanford have won the penalty. They are on the move, on the march. John T. Nichols into the 22, feeds the man outside him. Freddie Beals is bundled in for touch. Takes us to half time. It's a two score game. Stanford 12, Cheltenham 0. Cheltenham College need a score. If they can win this game, they are through. Potentially the only undefeated team in this group, the only undefeated team remaining in this group. But they are up against it here in Stamford School. Looking good, looking sharp, but oh, looking strong as well. Jack Haynes crunching into the tackle and winning the penalty as a result. Going to up for touch here, James Edgerton. Shaping for the touchline. That's what he's going to go for. He's going to go for territory. And he kicks them into the Cheltenham half. 
Good attacking platform here from the line out. Quick men on quick men. However, even in this under 18s competition, we've seen a few teams fall foul at the straight throw in. So the first job get this ball in the hands of the big men. Oh, it is loose and it is back with Cheltenham. They needed that. It's a little momentum shift. Could help them out. Oh, thank goodness me. Stanford. Ravenous, rampant over the ball. And they've been marched back 10 of Cheltenham for a little bit too much chirps to our referee. Opting for the scrum. A lot to like about this Stanford team. They look really composed, really clear with their decision making. We've certainly seen teams in this under 18s Vars competition light it up a bit more. In terms of a clear picture of what they want to do, Stanford certainly have one of those. Oh, another lovely step. Great footwork on the ball. Out to Freddie Beals. Oh, Freddie Beals. I should towards touch. Two and a half minutes of the second half gone in Cheltenham. Win the penalty. Oh, celeb spotting. we got Nolly Waterman and Opsi Ojo just making their way past us. And Burnsy next to me, calling him out for being too big time for the live stream. He's absolutely right. Oh, suggestion of a forward pass. Did you say they're going to RE2? Didn't realise they were paupers. Right then. Stamford, lovely footwork. Freddie Fields, he's been threatening outside. They've dealt with him well. Oh, thought about the crossfield kick, but checking back the other way. Numbers open up. John T. Nichols sends everyone to the shops, and that surely now, 10 minutes gone. The Stanford School tiptoeing closer to the top of the table. But you can tell he's playing well, John T. Nichols, because he's been at the heart of everything and his white jersey is still immaculate. They have hardly been able to lay a glove on him. Edgerton. Good strike. Optimal result. Another two points. Well, Cheltenham College players starting to point at each other to say, no, he was your man. He was no one's man. <laughs> Starting to get a picture of what the latter stages of this boys under 18 Vars is going to look like. All of the results and the standings available on national7s.co.uk, remember? Next up, we're back into the under-14 girls cup. It's Dubai English-speaking college against Rygate Grammar. And then the under-14s boys, Orleans Park against Waterloo. Let's go, please, fellas. This one ticking to a satisfactory conclusion for Stanford School. 19 nil up. Crouch! Bind! Set! Oh, it's a good tackle. And Stanford showing that they can do it in defence as well as attack Cheltenham College. Moving backwards, Stamford sniffing around the turnover, but it's still with Cheltenham College. They opt for the boot. Everyone puts the pedal to the metal, but the touchline's going to beat them all. First bit of territory for Cheltenham College, but territory doesn't mean a huge amount, particularly with Stamford and how confident they are on the ball, going through the phases, leaving these Cheltenham boys chasing shadows. Yeah, 
Although it's competed for and it's won by Cheltenham College and Stanford. Slip off a tackle. They've not missed many of those, but they've managed to turn it over. And that one sliced off the boot. Well, and the referee giving them a very generous advantage for the knock on. We don't often see those, do we? As soon as the boot usually goes to the ball, there's a big shout of advantage over. Last 30 seconds. The game's certainly gone from a Cheltenham perspective. They've not really fired a shot, so in terms of the points difference that needs to be calculated. Seven points on the board here would be very useful. But with that in mind, it is Stamford. Looking to finish with a flourish and finish with a flourish they may. Oh, the ball's gone forward. And that could well see us to the end of the game. It does. Referee's whistle goes. Best performance of the tournament so far for Stanford. They've given themselves a great chance to continue their journey in the under-18 Vars. And they've defeated Cheltenham College 19 points to nil. All right, folks, the action coming thick and fast on RE1 at the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. And a little bit of international flavour arriving here on the showcase field at the biggest, the best schools sevens tournament on the planet. It is Dubai English speaking college who've traveled all the way over from the UAE to take on Rygate Grammar School, who will be taking to the field in blue. If you caught our preview show earlier in the day, that's right, we're doing a preview show and a review show. Every day of the tournament, we're not analyzing the players' rock, paper, scissors form. But we are looking at the runners and the riders of each and every competition. We had a discussion as to whether there's ever been an international winner of the sevens here from beyond UK shores. And the answer was no. The closest anyone got was Jess. And the Dubai English Speaking College will be looking to go one better than their arch rivals as they collect the kickoff and they look to attack from their 22. Up against this Rygate Grammar School. Desk, they've beaten. Clan Clan <laughs> Community School and Taunton School on their way. But Rygate make for tough opposition. They're undefeated as well. The winner of this one wins the group. And they go deeper into the competition, into the knockout, and it's Desk 
who was stumbling through tackles, looking to free up the arms, love the ambition on the offload. It's so difficult when the ball's in your right hand, slung forward unintentionally. And we will come back with no advantage play. One more step, girls. We're up. So the under 14 girls competition, it's a one day here at the school sevens. And Rygate get their first possession. They're really hassled though at half back. And they do really well just to scoop that ball away, looking for the edges. It's all been through the center of the field, but off go Rygate, off go their flyer. And it's a high tackle to bring her down just as she was beginning to shift through the gears. Big bullocking carry from Rygate. When you can't go round, round them, run through them. The no-look offload doesn't fall into blue hands, but it does get a feather off a red one. And Desk concede a scrum to Rygate as just a little spit of rain begins to descend on RE1. Ominous signs for the week ahead, hopefully only a passing shower. I think you'll agree, and it's plain to see that the groundsmen deserve a medal. The pitches are in incredible condition, given the rain that we experienced last week, given the number of matches that take place on these blades of grass, standing up well halfway through day two. Rygate Grammar is standing up pretty well through these tackles. Desk, look to poach. But the signal from the referee is a side entry. So, bit of ill discipline from Desk. Give Rygate an opportunity to break into the 22 for the first time. A tap, a go, and a weaving run. And that's outstanding breakdown work from Desk. The girls from the United Arab Emirates find their pockets picked. And then another steal. Neither side cherishing possession. But finally out to the edge and looking to skirt round. The offload forced, just squeezing forward. Tense stuff here in this match. The battle of the undefeated in Group B in the final group match of... Well, I was going to say the morning of the day we've raced our way to two o'clock it's been nearly four hours of fast and furious sevens and it's right gate who are applying the pressure at the moment ghosting through the tackle shot into the midriff out of the blind spot and then a pop and then an explosion of pace she took off from the balls of her feet and barely a fingertip on her Rygate's grammar school open the scoring. They lead Dubai English Speaking College by five. Care and time taken on the conversion. And the results plain to see. First blood drawn by Rygate Grammar School. Their girls lead. Seven points to nil, courtesy of that bust right there from their number 12. Desk looking to respond. Huge viewership will be coming in from the UAE and they'll be loving what they see as they break across the 10 metre line. Continuity as the pot comes off the floor right into the arms of the support runner. But there's no roll from the tackle. That's what created the jackal opportunity. There are so many black and red jerseys out wide. Off the shins, collected in the fingertips. One more pass, it jacked back inside, but still, Desk not into the 22. This time maybe 
this time for the left-hand corner. Arcing through and round to underneath the upright. The advertising hoardings hammered by the travelling support. And Dubai English speaking college equalised with the conversion. We're at sevens with 60 on the clock in the first half. One thing we're absolutely sure of is that there is devastating gas out there when given the room, and it's a really mischievous kickoff that bounces kindly for Desk, who goes slaloming into the 22, but the ball not protected on entry into the contact, tucked under one arm but spilling forward. So the advantage for Rygate, who still look to play out of their 22, but an error from their hand means it will come back that initial error. <laughs> Final play of this first half. Seven apiece. Rygate in their own 22 in possession, but being swarmed by death defenders. Again, precise breakdown work, hungry breakdown work, and off go the school from Dubai. Offload out of the tackle, brilliant hit. Low on the boot shots, but a ghosting run. Pierces the Rygate blue wall. And Dubai English speaking college get the go ahead score right on the cusp of the half time huddles. No conversion to add, but a lead to take into the break. The breakdown penalty taken quickly. This was good, needed to be made, but the pop off the floor, something that has been a hallmark of the way that Desk have been going about their attacking business. Providing the opportunity for their number six that goes through to the line. Half time, S12, Rygate Grammar School, seven. Tight one this, the final group match. Both these sides undefeated. And both these sides with ambitions of heading to the knockouts and putting themselves in with a chance of a title tilt. By English speaking school, leading by Whisker, a late try in the first half. Unconverted, sees them lead by five. Oh, it's a wonderful intercept. She saw it coming and the 
it's a brilliant cover tackle. The release, the get up, the try. Predatory instincts from the spy English speaking. College number five. And the awareness of mind, the coolness of demeanor to release the ball, get up, go once more, and then convert. Here she comes, racing up, sensing an opportunity. She backed herself, she took the risk, and the reward, a try stretching lead for the international threats in this girls under 14 cup competition. Desk, 19, RGS, 7. Well, question marks over the angle of that throw, but Desk aren't going to hesitate. They're going to try and strike down the left, and again, that pop off the floor keeps the ball alive. Thunderous challenges coming in from RGS. They're not going to end this group with the music in them. But Desk, they managed to steal it. Desk, with all that room out wide, they straighten up and there's no running through. RGS. But a gap opens up. The number six pins her rear back. And that might just be the try to take the game beyond reach from RGS. This time, the conversion, not on the money. Two defenders sucked in, the pop off the floor. It has been the hallmark of the way this team from Dubai have played. And one of their star players finishing comfortably, finishing emphatically. The knockout rounds await for the Dubai English speaking college who are being roared on voraciously, vociferously by their traveling support. Those kind of hits breathe more oxygen into the lungs of the supporters. What about that for a menacing carry? One more handoff, driving through the tackle, gives it to the speed, feeds it, watches it. And here we go, RGS with a try to maybe get them back into the equation. Electrifying pace. And underneath the uprights, crucially as well. But well, there we are. That was, the, that was the score. That was the pace. The break had been made. And RGS just have a glimmer of hope here in this closing pool match. Desk. They lead. But they find themselves on the outskirts of their 22. Another crunching tackle coming in from RGS. They're full of fight and they've got time on the clock. 100 seconds for 10 points or more.
So a scrum reset. The time just creeping away, but if RGS can make this one quick, oh goodness me, they're obliterated in the scrum, but illegally so. Tap, go. Back in the pace, back in the power, back in the fend, dismissing the defender. And still she goes. A pop off the floor, giving to buy a taste of their own medicine. Who are on the ropes for the first time. Here's the power, here's the danger woman. She races across, she gets as close. In fact, under, well, not quite under the upright, but as close as can be. There's 30 seconds they need to convert quickly. But they're in with a chance to complete the most extraordinary of comebacks. RGS. They stand out in this second half. Oh, doesn't send it across the crossbar. But they're within five. There'll be one last play. And they need to get it to that number 12 with Jay on the back of her shorts because they're bringing them a lot of joy and attack right now. Well, back we come, back we come for the kickoff. And it's played by Dubai, knocked forward, leapt upon by RGS, who remarkably are still in the equation. They still have hope. The nerves will be jingling and jangling in the UAE as their girls have been pegged back. RGS meets the might of the Dubai English-speaking college in the scrum. And it's six of the best to close out the match and seal it for desk. Wow, what a match. A high-caliber clash in the girls' under-14s cup. And Dubai English-speaking college battling their way through to the knockouts, top of the group. units for uh, yeah the whole of this academic year so far so since September I've had, yeah got eight eight units I love the fact that the stats give you a, a sort of a basis for sort of analyzing what the players are doing how hard they're working I think in, in training but in matches as well it's interesting to see who kind of the, the unsung heroes if you like the people that, that work but you don't necessarily see them doing the work so the students have, uh, yeah, they have real kind of responsibility to do all the uh, uploading of data themselves. So all I have to do, look on the cloud, uh, sort of platform, and then I can do my analysis from there. Well, yeah, it's been really interesting. I've enjoyed seeing how far is running as well as my max speed. Well, it's been great. I mean, it's been really fun having competition within the squad. See who's run the most, who's the fastest. 
this is one really good thing about the app. So each player will have an app which breaks the rugby school community, uh, so they can compare themselves against each other, and get leaderboards for each metric, and yeah, certainly breeds that uh, that area of uh, competitiveness. Everyone's like putting their best teams out, working hard, and never giving up until the final whistle. So when you come out here and seeing you know everyone, all the big schools and the big names, and putting ourselves up against it, so it's really good. It's been brilliant. We Speaking college, wow, they were right on top, but what fight from RGS. A game that hung in the balance right to the very last play until the by English speaking college closed it out down that left edge. Good afternoon from RE Control. Uh, the result from the eighth round rule. And so. Sticking with the under 14s, but to the boys. And to Waterloo Schools, who are kicking off in light blue and dark blue into the arms of the local lads. Orleans Park of Twickenham. Go thundering into the challenges of the Waterloo boys. The winners of Group F. Waterloo on the ball. Were Stanford. And looking to ship it wide. Wow, they tuck it under the arm. Sorry. Uh, and they back their physicality. It gets picked off, though. Orleans pouncing. Stanford. And they will play. Orleans, who went down to Ship Lake and St. Paul's, Paul's earlier today, is a real tight one against Ship Lake. Into the bowl semi final. Pass Waterloo. Just edged it against the same opposition, so it should be well matched, but it is Waterloo who are pirouetting. They're pinning their ears back and finding the left-hand corner. Great pace and power. And Waterloo into the lead. A runner-up six were Bishop Wordsworth and runner-up seven were Middlefield, who will both play their next match at 3.20. It was brilliant breakdown work, wasn't it? And then Manoa Niambi. Pouncing upon the loose ball. And great pace all the way to the line. Orleans Park. Nice little show, and the wraparound was coming, but the offload off the floor needed a slither more sympathy. Not forward. Pictures in the boys under 14 tournaments on RE1, Waterloo School versus Orleans Park School. On RE2, St Paul School versus Ship Lake College. Rattling through the games here on day two. Amazing. One moment, it's the calm before the storm. And then you're right in the eye of it. The under 18 boys Vars quarterfinals are coming up next after this. Teddy's Oxford, who you saw in devastating fashion in blue, up against St Paul's School of Barnes, just down the road, local to Orleans Park, who hail from Twickenham. Here's the try scorer, drops to his knees, gets back up, looks to fling away the would-be defenders, and it's Really relentless stuff from Orleans to then try and disrupt the ruck, but out it comes. Off the boots, but offside of the back feet from Orleans. Tough. Just their exuberance and their desire to get on the front foot proving problematic. Ruan Mina, Ruan Mina! Slings it back inside and it's still there for Waterloo. Brilliant breakdown work from Orleans. Who've done? Oh wow! I thought they'd stolen it. Run Mina puts a bit of air on it. There's numbers out wide. 
And Rafe Hugenbatz finishes the job for the boys in blue. And Waterloo, they've got their second score. Into the 22, couple of bounces, but Orleans are on the ball. Nice pace injected, offering a bit of depth. And speaking of pace, gone in a flash. Electrified pace from Orleans Park to strip Waterloo out wide. Wow, what a finish, what a score. Orleans re-announced themselves into the match and to the people, the supporters of RE1. Waterloo with a bee in their bonnet, having conceded just there. Any Hutonge with the meaningful carry. Nice option from Nina, who spots a bit of room and he asks Hugenbat to chase. He does arrive first on the scene, but he feathers it forward. Orleans, final play of the half. Ooh, they could strike from deep now. and to make things really interesting. Come to the huddles, they give it to the danger man. Their frequent flyer. It is offload, forces a knock on, and that'll be the half. And it's one that Waterloo head into the half-time huddles that little bit happier. Half-time here on RE1. Orleans Park, five, Waterloo, 12. Big smiles on dials 
at the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens. We got ourselves a hell of a day two that is unfolding. And that's no different when it comes to the boys under 14 competition. And an error from the team that's leading. Waterloo, the two blues, giving a wonderful attacking platform for Orleans Park. And a lot of these boys will be playing club rugby locally for the likes of Richmond, for Rosslyn Park, for Barnes. They're exercising their skills in school colours and... Oh, just seeing that pass squeeze forward. giving the scrum to Waterloo. Truly terrific to have such international representation. ASUB Rugby Waterloo over from Belgium and a rugby nation on the rise. If any of you watch the Rugby Europe Championship, Belgium victorious at the weekend. And with a, uh, a marquee victory as well in the competition, defeating Portugal in the opening round. It was the biggest world rankings international upset in history. So these young lads inspired by that journey the men's senior team are going on. And they're carving their way through a few tackles. Marco. Verardi in there, but love that. The sunny bill coming out from all Ian's Park and then the big don't argue. Keeping the ball alive. Long ball. Spun over the top. More pace from all Ian's. A wonderful tap tackle. Had to be made. Think it was Arthur Despeak. And unfortunately, as all Ian's Park Resource the breakdown, they came away, but unfortunately they found a knock-on. Yeah, for those of you who don't know too much about Belgium rugby, they had that big marquee international win, but in terms of club, they have the Brussels Devils who play in the Rugby Europe Super Cup alongside the likes of Portugal's Lusitanos and Georgia's Black Lion who were in the European Challenge Cup this year. So a lot of good players emerging from Belgium. Their women's seven side vying for qualification to the very highest height of the HSBC Sevens World Series. But they're up against stern local opposition. Orleans Park fending again, the pace flying through the middle. The two blues at sixes and sevens. Orleans, the maroons and yellow streaking across the line. And in for their second try of the match and a chance to level things up with the conversion. But the attempt to take it from the other side, denied by the referee. So from behind, no dramas for Orleans Park School, who have rallied since going 12-0 down. They're hunting their first victory of the day. All wins are precious at the Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. But a first feels oh so much more precious. Brilliant breakdown work, they're spoiling, they're energised. And Waterloo now find themselves on the back foot. I tell you that the replacements 
Paul Waterloo champing at the bit to get a bit more action on the pitch. Here come Orleans, the man who opened the scoring for them. Offloads out of the tackle. Their talisman gets dragged down just shy of the 22. Fender benders amongst the collision of rugby players. And they're through to the five metre line, held up. More bodies pile in. But Orleans get it to the floor. It just needs hands. It down needs pace. A stutter step and denied five metres short. A high tackle is what did it. Orleans from point blank range find themselves held up. The 220 round of fixtures, two matches in the under 18 bowl semi final four on RE1, Daunts versus St Peter's, and on RE2, Cheltenham versus Mercury. A bit of collateral damage. And then into the boys under 14 tournament. From that passage. For the Belgians. On Coaching team on immediately to make sure that Gaspar de Kramer is well tended to. Sixty seconds left of a contest that felt like it was heading. The Belgians wave at all. Ian's Park have rallied. This man's led them from the front. An offload out of the tackle. The neon head guard comes in, but the ball spills forward and Waterloo have it. 12 apiece. Waterloo will have to go from deep to win this one. They carry through Mina. Mina still going across the 22. A pop off the floor. A battle. But every blade of grass in the dying embers of this match. Waterloo with room. Oh, with a bullet of a pass needed to be more sympathetic. A pop off the floor from Orleans Park. Maybe they steal it at the death. Still winless. Searching for that hello victory. The big sit down. Still not there. There's so much room, there's so many numbers out to the right. If they can find the right man, and they find the most deadly in their ranks. Victory for Orleans Park at the last gasp. Breathless. End to end. An utterly enthralling. The conversion's missed. And I think that's the final whistle. Yep, <laughs> a low-key low double blast and Orleans Park have done it quite magnificently. Incredible desire and determination from the local lads who come from 12-0 down to win it 17-12 and inflict Waterloo's first defeat of the day. Final score, Orleans Park 17, Waterloo 12. Dauncey's against St. Peter's York. 
This is Group Bowl A. And St. Peter's straight on the front foot. Looking at some of the results from today in St. Peter's. We've seen them play some good rugby. They beat Bryanston first up yesterday. Then they beat Herodian. Then they beat Victoria College. Then they beat Torquay Boys. And the first game of the day, they had an absolute thriller against Bedford Modern. But since then, they've come unstuck against St. Paul's and beaten Dollar Academy. But here they go. Turned over, though, by Dauncey's. Themselves doing well to get to day two. And they beat Grammar School at Leeds, but they turn the ball over here. And, oh, St. Peter's boys getting in the way of each other. And Dauncey's, having beaten Grammar School at Leeds, lost to Taunton and beaten King's College Taunton. That's a scrappy start. First minute of the game gone, and team's a little bit fatigued and sliding off tackles. Now, has he got the will to make it 100 metres? Absolutely not. He's managed to make a good 60, though. Oh, but there's the dummy, there's the go. And Dauncey's get the first try of the game. One touch, two touch, two men, one try. And that makes it 5-0. St. Peter's now chasing the game. Oh, brilliant take. And don't see. Oh, Jen coughing that ball up. A little bit of afters. Just out of vision between a couple of the players. Oh, that's been overrun. Now trouble. Trouble for the York boys. A valuable ankle tap. And an even better turnover. And now it's St. Peter's York. On the front foot, bodies looking so tired, so they turn to the speed, and Jack Jones tackled brilliantly. Then the footballing skills of Aiden Doig. Well, neither team can keep hold of the ball. But at the moment, it's Dauncey's who get turned over, but illegally, says our referee. And then Dawn sees. They're able to clear. Although well, they don't want to clear, they want the ball in hand. Going back the other way, feeding that speed out on the left hand side, and there is the speed. Great turn of it. Slipping off the last tackle, accelerating away. Brilliant desire, brilliant ability. And St. Peter's York. Up against it, Dauncey's get their second try. Another look at the excellent finish. Great strength. Keep the legs pumping. Try and win whatever contact you can. Now that's been knocked on into the hands of Aidan Doig. He is quick. He loves the fresh green pastures in front of him. What a response. Less than five minutes gone. Three tries already. It's 14 points to five.
make that 14 points to seven. Game on, and St. Peter's really needed that. Straight into the hands of the man from the Yorkshire Rugby Academy. He makes no mistake. Good restart, contestable restart. Straight back into the hands of Doig again. He is a man on a mission. And now St. Peter's York oh, getting it out to Archie Pye, who spins away. It's a missed tackle. And Pye is in. Tough conversion to come. But what a response this now from St. Peter's York from 14 0 down, 14 12. Conversion to come into the last minute of the first half and game on. Left footed conversion. Jack Jones, Welsh prospect. Trying to draw that one in, but it doesn't bother. Fourteen twelve. then. Final few seconds on our clock before half-time. And an advantage coming. Oh, stepping away again, and the cover tackle coming across and missing. And Dauncey's just before half-time. Could really do with this conversion. That'll make it a two-score game. Shows how important it is to... Nail your drop kick conversions, which is exactly what Dauncey have done there. Dauncey's 21, St. Peter's York 12 at half time. St. Peter's York receiving the kickoff in the second half. They need two scores. And this is an excellent start to get in the first one. Dauncey's unable to cope with the speed the ball's coming, but then it's knocked on. And St. Peter's masters of their own downfall. Okay, on the foot, you, hands, okay. Knock on means scrum time. Boy, please, boy. You, you foot right in the sink. Thank you. Okay. Crouch! 
St. Peter's on the move again. Needing the next try. This is such good ball carry. And then offloading. Dauncey's equal to it. Defensively, oh, snipe up the short side. Isolated, needs to finish it, needs to finish the attack. Strong enough, bold enough. And St. Peter's York back within a score. Now, points are obviously important. Conversions, obviously important. However, this one less so. Whether they score it or miss it, the mission is still the same. They need another score to take the lead. Off the left peg. Tough conversion from out there and just got underneath, sliced off the side of the boot. And it's Dauncey's 21. St. Peter's York, 17. Back. Play on. Well, there's lots of space for this restart. And that is going to be a proper contest, but that is a proper take. And the offload. Oh, that is so good. And the collision. Boom, boom. Bang, bang. And Dauncey's back on the front foot. St. Peter's off their feet. Big Arde Surveyor star dummy. And Dauncey's swatting away tackles once, then twice, then through. Awesome. Absolutely awesome. And no sooner have St. Peter's York lit the candle of hope than Dauncey snuff it out once more. Oh, 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 that was such a good try. St. Peter's a little bit passive in defence and well and truly made to pay. Well and truly made to pay. Another good offload. In Peter's York, they can certainly play a bit. What's coming the other way that's causing them the problem? Oh, there we go. The shimmy, the shake. So strong in the contact zone for such a diminutive figure. But once again, they're in the corner. And now that does put a little bit of pressure on this kick, because if they don't get it, they could well score another try, but still not take the lead. Good strike. Oh, unlucky. This is on the short side, certainly at the legs. Oh, look at this. Let's see. Get that ball out wide. Twenty-two, twenty-eight, okay. four tries each. It is merely the boots that separate the sides. Don't see successful with four of their conversions. And St. Peter's York winning a scrum in a key position. Two more, okay. Free kick at scrum time. Away go the boys from York. Little chip in behind the chase is good. Where does it bounce? Now go. Ball okay. off a black hand. Play out. And now the chance for St. Peter's to attack. They need a try. They need it close to the posts. 
because they need the conversion to go over. What heartbreak to outscore Come your opponent is. five tries to four, but not to get the victory. First job, though, is to score the try. The ball's out wide. But the call was to go for the post. He doesn't. He goes for the sanctuary, the safety of the corner. 28 points to 27, a minute to go. And now an incredibly important conversion coming up here for St. Peter's York. We're yet to have a game on RE1 where the team who scored the most tries has lost. Left foot conversion. Oh, it's not the cleanest strike. It's not going to get there. But there is time to restart. What a game. One Second. point in it. Dauncey's 28. St. Peter's York, 27. And they are a tidy team, aren't they? Watch left. Finishing left. This left. Hold it, hold it. Change of direction. Big challenge incoming. Oh, it's dropped. It's dropped, but it's dropped backwards. Take a release! No, no, wait! Back! <laughs> and now Dawn sees another Take score release, no, no. would bury the game. Finish. And the referee says that's time up. That is a hard-earned victory by Dauncey's. They conceded Three, five no. tries, but slotted their droppies. And, oh, that is brutal, brutal for St. Peter's York. But brilliant by Dauncey. Score your points, win your games. It finishes 28-27. No wonder we get a bad reputation. And so it continues. St. Edward's Oxford against St. Paul's. Joining us for this one, completely underdressed for the conditions. Doesn't believe in layers, skin's waterproof, and he's a tough old man. It is only OURFC's general manager, former top of the shop at Trinity School. Ian Kench, not here in a coaching capacity this year. What are you doing? Poaching, not coaching? No, Dave, just um, we're obviously Oxford University Rugby Club. A new job for me, uh, having left Trinity, I haven't been 10 years uh, over in Croydon. 
Um, so Dave, yeah, it's great to be here. Um, new job at Oxford University is uh, running the club as general manager there, having left Trinity after 10 years and doing some pretty cool stuff there. Just here today having a, a watch of all the, the talent on show from the boys and the girls and uh, chant heads of rugby about anyone who might be interested in applying to Oxford or who has been successful in their application. Do you know, I thought of you earlier because we had the under 14 girls playing and one of the teams a lot of them appeared to be playing rugby for the first time and the referee was doing a fantastic job of sort of explaining on the fly as we've got oh nearly nearly a clean break there but i remember having a conversation with you a couple of years ago and it was after your boys under 18s had just won the national cup that incredible day for you all at twickenham but your girls were playing here for the first time and you were talking about how pleased and how proud you were of them and, and how that pride was comparative to what you'd just seen the under-18 boys do, playing the best that they could. But we've had an interception here, a race to the corner for the first try of the game. It is taken advantage of and that is a score. The St Edwards Oxford, your new part of the world, hopefully he's going to get good A-levels and you can get him in. Yeah, Joe, Joe Winpenny over at uh, Teddy's Oxford is doing some fantastic work with their programme. Uh, actually used to be involved uh, at the university and, and running the programme at Brooks as well. So he's doing some fantastic stuff. We hosted um, St Edwards versus MCS in a local rivalry and the talent on show that night is uh, clearly evident again in that try there. Well, it's day two for these boys today and the Teddy's boys are wrapping up the points. 40 points to five against Christ College Brecon. So that one drifts across the face. 50-0 against Bishop Wandsworth. No, Bishop Wordsworth, shall I say. And then 40-14 against New Hall. So they are running red hot. So anyway, going back to going back to the newcomers, of course, we're watching these under 18s boys. They're, they're absolutely phenomenal. But this this tournament, this week of rugby, it's uh, about a lot more than that. Yeah, I mean, I was over watching some of the under 14 stuff, both the boys and, and the girls in uh, in their endeavours. And what, what what's on display is maybe not always the talent, but the the love for the game. And I think as as coaches, as facilitators of the game, as stewards of the game. We need to make sure that we're, we're giving opportunity to people to be able to play this wonderful game. It gets a lot of bad publicity, but you can see from this week oh. how, just how um, how popular it is and the joy it gives to young people. And uh, that's certainly something we're still trying to do at Oxford University through our college programme, uh, making sure that both boys and girls can play. And we're going to what we call our cuppers in the uh, summer term, where both women and men get to play for their colleges, and some of those are new to rugby. But that is a fantastic offload from St Paul's. Oh, St Paul's are in under the posts! What a try! Speed of ball, execution of skill. And we might just have a game on our hands. Just you talking there about love of the game. I think a lot of people who watch and get frustrated with rugby that they see on the TV could do a lot worse than come here and watch young people enjoy themselves, express themselves and work as a team to score tries like that. Yeah, look, Rosin Park's a huge, a huge uh, event in the school calendar. They do a fantastic job of putting on so many different games for so many different age groups, and the introduction of the, of the girls' program coming through, and it grows year on year on year. And um, what is fantastic is the international representative. It doesn't matter whether it's independent or, or state schools. We're seeing some fantastic rugby on display and opportunity, and I think that's the main thing that, that, that rugby should be endeavouring to do is make sure it's accessible to all. Excellent finish, great try. Well, interesting that you mentioned the, the fee-paying schools and the state schools there. We did have a state school winner, Brinkelanog from Wales. They won the under-16 girls' plate yesterday. Oh, Teddies are off again. Tiptoeing up the touchline. Great awareness of where the space was and the big left-handed Fen coming across. And St Paul's getting back in numbers. And forcing the knock-on. It's lung-busting stuff out there. When was the last time you laced them up for a game of sevens? Uh, that would be a pub sevens for, 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 <laughs> for, for my standard, Dave. So, no, uh, long gone are those days. Long gone, thankfully. Uh, more of a coaching capacity and, and enjoying watching this spectacle today. It's certainly enjoyable. Five minutes Set. gone. St Paul's School talked about how good Teddy's have been. They beat Dollar Academy. Absolute thriller. 14-12. Then they beat... St. Peter's York 28-19, then they beat Bedford Modern 26-24. And Bedford Modern, they had two 26-24s today, and they 
fell the wrong side of both. So a tough day for them, but this is two undefeated teams trying to make it four from four for the day. Eight from eight for the competition. This is a massive, massive game. And so far, it is delivering quality-wise. They did well to take the Jets off there, because otherwise it could have been crossing instead. It's creating more space, patience, perseverance, and a pie. 10-7. Yeah, looking at this Teddy's team play, I've seen uh, this is their second game. I've, I've seen them play today, and their offload game is just incredible. The, if you watch how many breakdowns they have in phase play, it's very few, and their their ability from from the first player to the seventh to offload the ball to, to support, they expect it, and um, it's the way sevens should be played. So, like I say, Joe Wimpenny over at uh, Teddy's is doing a fantastic work with this group of players. 10-7, 12-7 with the conversion. Yeah, another look at this. Just love watching how composed some of these young players are. So where they are of the decisions that have got to be made. And always nice to see a little goosey. Good try, 12-7. On the high contestable restart, batted back, but only into the hands of St. Paul's who stuck in there well. This will be the last attack of the half. Where's the gap? Is there a gap? There is no gap. There is a turnover and there is a chance for Teddy's. Now St. Paul's, this is so important. They defend this phase and get through to half time. Just one score behind. Play on. Oh, that one. Back. Off the chest. Referee back. says backwards. And maybe St. Paul's have got another go. That's a great step. That's a great step. And the fend as well. Now it's a foot race. Needs support. Cut the tackle. Superb. Still pumping the legs. It picked up a try saving tackle. Play on. Absolutely oh, no. brilliant, and Teddy survived. Not only did they survive, they could thrive. Who has got the energy? Oh, this is draining. Well, Teddy's are going to play here. They could kick it to touch and have a breather at half time with a lead. But that is not in the nature of these players. That was aggressively flat. It's been coughed up again. There's a crunching shot. And finally. A knock-on will draw this enthralling first half to a close. 12-7, Teddy's lead. Easy, lads. Second lads. half still to come. But let's have a let's have a catch-up then, because I've got you here. We don't get to chat very often. Um, let's talk about Oxford then, because you know not all of these these kids are old enough. Some of them come to you as undergrads. Some of them come to you as postgrads. You've had some great players strap on the navy blue over the years yourself included but but let's talk access then because it, it's not necessarily just your rugby ability that can get you in but for, for parents watching who who might fancy their their kids becoming a, a varsity blue or, or if there are some youngsters who, who are watching this game back or on camera as well um how accessible is the rugby what is the likelihood that if you're an intelligent young player playing men's or women's rugby that you could end up representing oxford in the varsity match yeah so oxford in its in its essence is a you know it's one of the top academic universities in, in the world and we make no bones about that you have to be academically of the level to, to be able to apply and, and rugby actually isn't a, a passport into oxford in any way whatsoever the, the beauty of the oxford program is that you basically have three eight-week terms and with the varsity match now situated in march we have two eight-week terms where we we try and tailor our program so we'll go against playing with this year we played the men played quinn's um, sort of Academy A team, they played Leicester A team, they played England under 20s, they played Oxford Brooks in a big rivalry. And, the, and, the, and, the, and the, that programme, we play some really historic fixtures, you know, Penguins and Navy and Army, and these fixtures for us make it a, um, a really important part of what we call within the, the, the calendar. Yes, it's not books, and I understand the strength of the book programme, but it's within its own right a fantastic programme. That's the men's side of things. 
Um, and we're really, really neatly situated where we have a really nice mix of postgrad and undergrad. So we have some fantastic undergrads. And this year within the men's section, they were playing with a 31 cap Wallaby and Tom Robertson. Within the women's section, our captain's a lady called Sophie Shams. Incredible player, plays for Ealing Trail Finders, balances her studies alongside that. She was at Durham for a long time as well, wasn't she? And I've seen her play for Saracens. I've seen her play fullback, flanker. She can she can do just about everything. Yeah, she, she's incredible. She actually taught, we toured um, with Trinity to Dubai in uh, 2000 and whenever and she was playing for um, for one of the Dubai teams against our boys and, uh, and they still remember it when I mentioned it with them so and that's the unique thing about um, Oxford is, is a touring so we, we make a big point of touring whether it's the men's section or the women's section the men this year were lucky enough to go to uh, LA and we had a, a really cool time out there and so it's a, it's a fantastic programme and anyone wanting to get involved, I would urge to, to get in touch and just go on our website and click on the Join Us tab. Ian.Kench at OURFC.org. <laughs> well, great to hear from you. And you're always welcome up on the gantry to, to call the games with us and to extol the virtues of Oxford University Rugby Football Club. But we're back underway with the second half here and some lovely ball handling and the offloading as well. This has turned into a really good game. Who's okay, Five's got to move. And the penalty conceded. Looks like it's getting a bit tasty out there as well. Two teams desperate to win. Teddy's in a good spot with some space. Has that ball got a bit early? Well, it doesn't matter how early it's gone, it's gone forward. Um, you were talking about the colleges programme then, so so give us a little bit more meat on that bone. Yeah, so obviously lot, the, the University of Oxford is um, is built upon its colleges and uh, each college has its, its rugby team. Um, and in the what we call our Trinity term, our summer term, they play what they call cuppers, which is you play for your college. Um, <laughs> In a, in a in a finals are at Iffy Road. It's a really big, it's really competitive. And again, that pathway through. Oh, turned over at scrum time, and Teddy's deep in the 22. The next score could give them dead like, but instead they overcommit at the breakdown. And it's still 12 7. I think just 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 um, making a point of watching this game and, and, and it links into the college program is when, many of these boys when did, would they have started playing rugby and some of them might have started two three years ago some might have been playing for ten years we spoke about it at the start any institution that offers rugby must have a pathway through to come in coming into this level of rugby watching this is just super, superb the standard on show the offloads and I would love to speak to you know both of the coaches when did their players start playing what is that pathway through and as a university yes it's a later pathway but we still need to make sure that there is a, a an opportunity for those that are new to the game to be able to play. And so touch rugby for us is a, is a big growth. Um, the women's programme is growing year on year on year and making sure that we are accessible as a coaching programme, which is what Paul, St Paul's and Teddy's do really well, making sure there's a pathway through to play in this standard of rugby, which is so good to watch. Certainly is. And hopefully wherever you're watching around the world, oh, you're enjoying what Ian Kench has to say and you're enjoying this Feast for your rugby enjoying eyes. I'll tell you what, another try here for St. Paul's really there. would put the cat amongst the pigeons. Remember, this is a must win game for both of these teams, undefeated so ball's far. Gone, ball's gone. And even though they're playing with what look like fresh legs, they are eight games into a two day tournament. It is punishing on everyone who gets to this stage. You can see the, um, the, the standard of the boys on show here. <laughs> Oh, baby! It's a big shot. You're talking about some, some tired legs. Some of these boys, you can tell, are forwards, and the, the, the skill on show is just incredible. That, that tackle, we, we can argue the merits of it, but the intent is just incredible. There. You say and argue the merits as if you didn't play 200 games of National League rugby at lock. Yeah, the, the laws, thankfully, have changed somewhat <laughs> since then, Dave. It was a big shot. The intent was there, lined him up and chopped him down. But of course, one thing we don't like to see is injured players and players who are unable to continue. It is a tough game and that, that is one of the things that sets in when you've played a number of games, that fatigue and knowing the difference between being hurt and being injured. 
people that obviously don't get much of a shout at Dave all the time are the, are the medical professionals and, and, and yeah. again they get that really right here at Roslyn Park I know that Return to Play we had them um, at Trinity they were a fantastic programme and the, 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 the medical support they offer is second to none and, and definitely we see that here at Roslyn Park any injuries are, are really well catered for and looked after to, to just like we're seeing here on this pitch right now What about rugby opportunities outside of the white lines then because I know that it played a massive part of, of your sort of rugby development, going from uh, an undergrad player at Loughborough to a postgrad player at Oxford, then into semi-professional rugby, into the career that you've got now. So, so talk to us about that kind of pathway beyond the rugby, or does that just speak for itself with Oxford? No, again, like anyone, we have to work at it. We, we've got a really good refereeing program. A lot of our referees for the Oxford University Society are here today refereeing, which is great to see. Um, and that's run by Simon Brown. He does some fantastic work with our colleges program referees. Where we need to probably be a bit better is, is making sure we're facilitating the next coaches and making sure we get that enough. We've got some really good young coaches. It's playing is not for everyone, but making sure that if you're offering rugby as a program, that you're offering refereeing, volunteers, coaches. It's, it's the whole game that we need to make sure we're looking after. What That's a nicely timed pass, and the finish is on. Teddy's overcommitting, looking for those big Hollywood shots in the middle of the park. And it is overflowing, it is bubbling away. And what we do have is a 12-12 and a kick to take the lead. I think they were revved up by that one big collision in midfield, going for the other one. And then all of a sudden, you find yourself under your sticks and St. Paul's could sneak ahead, could deliver the first setback of this Teddy's campaign. Massive kick, oh, it's sliced off the side of the boot. It's into the bar. It's two tries apiece, it's 12 points apiece. And there's still time on the clock. It's, um, it's, it's interesting watching these two teams, Dave. We've got Teddies who are, you know, physically probably a little bit bigger and they're trying to impose that physicality. But St Paul's really cleverly just holding their feet, letting the press come and moving the ball to width. It's um, two contrasting styles. We've got Teddies playing a physical press game. We've got St Paul's trying to make sure they're uh, holding their feet and moving the ball to width. It's great to see. You're wasted as a line-out coach, you know. Lead coach, Dave, thank you. <laughs> right then. We go again. Oh, that is very physical, but the offload a little bit lackadaisical. The idea was there. Unfortunately, this time, the execution wasn't. So coming back here now, as you said, you, you've taken a step back from coaching at school, still coaching at Richmond in, in Nat 1. Do you, do you miss it, or are you happy with this bobble hat on <laughs> it's quite nice to um to step back for a little bit um any any masters in charge of rugby any coaches know how just intense it can be and make sure you can see the amount of work that goes into getting these teams set to the standard they are uh I, i'm still looking to be involved coaching at richmond in national one like saying that's a pretty uh, full-on full-on gig so no it's still enjoying coaching Never say never to going back in schools, but never it's, say uh, never. it's a, it's a, uh, any all schoolboy players, all schoolgirls need to make sure they really thank their coaches. The work that these guys put in to make sure they're safe and competitive, like these two teams, is is, is incredible. Here we go, line break. St Paul's in behind. Teddy's chasing back, and now Teddy's chasing the game. It's a comeback from 12-7 down to 17-12 up. There is still time on the clock. They have not let that injury set them back at all. What a game we have on our hands. What a tournament this under-18 boys' bars has been. These St Paul's boys, none of them are, you know, absolutely huge when it comes to their, 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 their physical stature, but they are so fit. And in the second half, you can see that actually their, their fitness is paying dividends and they're, they're managing to hold their feet, they're managing to keep moving the ball. And they're, they're, I think they're probably superior fitness levels are, are pulling them through in this one. Well, you want to talk about gutsy performances. They have had two two-point wins today. They beat Dollar Academy 14-12. They beat Bedford Modern 26-24. And now they are less than a converted score up. Well, in fact, exactly a converted score up. Against St. Edward's School, Oxford, who aren't used to being in this position. They have brushed teams aside. At times in the first half, it looked like they could well have put St. Paul's to the sword, but now they need a score. Not only do they need a score, they need it to be converted. 
you can see them here just you know back in their back in their fitness they're holding their feet in defense they're they're making Teddy play and making a decision and they're just holding off make 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 them move the ball make them move the ball keep working hard find their three in defense stay connected and they're back in their fitness which is great to see whereas Teddy's are going to get their physicality they're going to try and break a tackle and get the offload St Paul's contrasting just holding their feet hoping that their fitness will come good St Paul's playing with a deep sweeper as well and if Teddy's do break the line then he has got a big tackle to make here we go the gas around the outside important ankle tap and into touch that is massive and that takes us through to full time one of the games of the day one of the results of the day and it's St Paul's who remain undefeated it is eight from eight and it finishes St Paul's 19 St Edward's 12. Back into the girls under 14s competition. The cup quarter final. Dubai English speaking college against Hill House. Hill House started so well, didn't they? They're three from three. They've beaten Cardinal Newman. They've beaten us called Kaolon Cymru. And they've beaten the Perse School Dubai. English speaking college. They've beaten Clangatog. They've beaten Taunton. And they've beaten Rygate. Dubai in the red and black, Hill House in the blue and gold. Coach. Dubai English Speaking College managing to keep one clean sheet in that 17-0 win. Hill House have managed to keep two against the Perth School and Eskol Kalon Kamri. Now Dubai jetting at the left-hand side. It's all a little bit lateral at the moment. And Hill House giving chase. Good tackle. Yeah, it's a good tackle. Over there on the far side. Now, going to work the ball from right to left, from edge to edge, but it's a little bit narrow. Stuck between the 15-metre lines, as they say. And Hill House struggling to get a touch at the moment, but we know it can be brutal in defence. Now the diminutive winger swallowed up. Lovely offload. Really good handling. Oh, the second player. Can't turn that ball over. So still 90 seconds in and Hill House yet to have a real touch in anger. Slightly loose pass. Now a little gap through the middle, Dubai, English-speaking college, Dubai weaving through, beautiful footwork, great balance, one defender to beat, but the cover tackle comes across, 
And what a tackle it was too, a try yeah, saver yeah. in fact. <laughs> Penalty conceded. We still await the game's first try. Coming up to two and a half minutes gone. Oh, Hans will do it. You need to pass that ball. Oh, step back inside. Roll, roll, roll. And the opportunity goes begging. Okay. Another penalty. The by English speaking college need to find those edges. They've gone to the right again. Look inside. Really Go good away. tackle by Hillhouse. But the step inside, the offload okay. goes to ground, and Hillhouse have it. They've survived on, their man. first real test Tackle. in defence. Okay, no. <laughs> okay, same here. Roll it, please. Go away quicker. Drop. Right, Hill House attacking for the first time from inside their own 22. That is such a good offload and an excellent catch and a brilliant tackle to force the knock on. Now, Dubai English speaking college, we see, particularly in these girls under 15s, a lot of tries scored in transitional play from turnover ball. They narrow here, our Dubai. The Hill House slipping off tackles, Dubai still going, holding her at bay with the left hand, and touching down, great try. That's brilliantly done. Just over halfway through the first half, the first try, great show of strength and precision. Reaching out the big left hand, keeping the defender at bay. And adding that conversion to 7 0. Well, this was a great offload. And then they got the speed on the outside, the power through the middle, breaking that first tackle a little bit high. But then this was the moment, the fan bit. Keeping her away, just couldn't get close, couldn't dominate the ball carrier. Hurry up. And the try was scored. Play. Dubai getting us underway no with the grubber. Oh, knocked on. All right, let's play not 10 here. But not it hadn't 10, gone 10. Kick. Well, they've got away with them there, Hill House, because they drop, chose drop, to play drop. that. It'll be a free kick drop. to Hill House. Mark here. Mark here. Uh, around uh, one and a half minutes. Mark is a free kick. Tap or pass. Yeah. Well, away go Hill House. Back rest. Go back rest. Play, play, play. Rock! Rock! Play on oh, Play on Oh, and well held in the end. Releasing. And a great jackal. Yeah, get away the ball, not releasing. Drop it, drop, turn this, play. And away go <laughs> Dubai English speaking college. Okay, play. Last 30 seconds of the half. And a lovely offload to feed the speed on the left hand side. Another race for the corner, but a foot in touch. New line out. Oh. Line out, please. A brutal break. Line well out. spotted by the referee. So wait, much of the wait, hard wait. work was done. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Stay here. Stay. Stay here. Stay here, please. Play. Go for it. It's 
not contested. It's not contested. Again. It's not contested. Drop again. Thank you. It's not contested, okay? Play. Good strength. Back up, bro. Release, release. No? Okay. This kid has not release it. Drop. Offside advantage. Offside advantage, still play. Okay. Okay. Offside. Coming up to half time to buy English speaking college seven. Hill House, the defending champions, nil. And Dubai English speaking college certainly looking like the sharper of the two teams, but defensively, Hill House pretty knock good. One knock on. Well, the referee letting the other knock on go and then batted back. Oh! That'll do for now. Half time. Dubai English speaking college uh, seven, Hill House nil. Here we go, second half, and Hill House leading a score. Oh, nightmare start for Dubai. Come down here. Up, up, here. Um. Referee spots a knock on. Pretty blatant one as well, straight from the restart. Here we go then, Hill House uh, visits to the red zone. A bit of rarity, oh, complete dominance, first in the tackle, then in the turnover. And Dubai English speaking college now, offloading. Hill House all chasing over to their left hand side to try and close that attacking door. And as a result, perhaps leaving some space over on this side for the girls from Dubai. That is a great cover tackle, such an important cover tackle, but what about that, Ben? Now the foot race to buy English speaking college for the corner. The big chase coming in, but they're not going to get there. And that is a brilliant try scored. And Dubai English speaking college taking a two try lead. 12 points to nil they lead. And they're worth that lead too. Defended their own 22 so well. Tougher drop goal conversion this time. Oh, get the 
Go, please. Just a brilliant finish. Oh, now then, little shimmy around the outside, and Hill House needs some hope. Is this where they get it from? This is a full blooded chase. And a sensational score. Well, big hugs. We don't need hugs, we need conversions, Hill House. Tell you what, though, that kind of finish, that kind of try needs congratulating. Well, Rhys Roberts, the Cardiff Met coach, the Wales University Sevens coach has come and he's got a box full of stuff. I'm about to find out if it's snacks or not. Oh, the conversion's good. Outstanding, 12-7. Well, game on. Where has this come from, from Hill House? They look done and dusted. That is one of the conversions of the tournament. And we go back for the knock on. Yeah, that's high tempo. And Hill House have found some belief from somewhere, and now they've found some space from somewhere else. Run, 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 run. Oh, Dubai English speaking college. Infringing at the breakdown, and Hill House tapping and going. Oh, they never beat the speed. She's out there on her own on the right hand side. Oh, but the cap flap is lifted. Oh, this is brilliant. What a brilliant game. And it's a brilliant game that is now level. Dubai English speaking college 12, Hill House 12. They look done and dusted at half time. But now they've got a kick to take the lead. Big moment. Big moment. This is the quarter-final, remember? It is knockout rugby. It's good. Oh, it's really good. It was flirting with the crossbar. Was it over? Was it under? The referee says over. 14 unanswered points from Hill House. Let's take a look. I'm back. Well, an optical illusion, so tough to tell. Go for it. But this was the moment the try was scored. Go for it. And with no TMO in place, the referee's decision is final. And now Dubai English speaking college, need a try. Excellent tackle, excellent take. So competitive on the floor, still with the team from Dubai need some points to stay alive in the competition shown they're capable of scoring from anywhere hill house they're so committed in defense but they're all committed to the one side chasing the ball not releasing and they're offside they're not back 10 so they're piggybacking dubai up the pitch at the moment hill house Big pass off the right hand. Maybe the last chance, the last chance for Dubai English speaking college to win it. The last chance for Hill House to defend. And they just keep offloading though. Oh, that was momentum as much as anything making that tackle. A thriller in the quarterfinals and a penalty one. Not releasing at the tackle. And that should be enough for Hill House. Ten seconds, says the referee, so one phase should do it. The fend, oh, another high tackle. Swinging arm around the head, but up, and the offload! Now the chance to win it, the cover tackle, superb! 
and it's intercepted. Here we go. The chance for perhaps the biggest drama of the week so far. It's a race. It's a 70 meter race. It's a race that Dubai English speaking college are going to win. Oh my goodness. The last play of the game. The clock in the red. And Hill House, the defending champions, hearts are broken. Dubai English speaking college win it at the death with a finish worthy of the headlines in this great tournament. From 12 nil up to 14 12 down to winning it 17 points to 14. Dubai English speaking college have beaten the champions and will take their place in the semi finals. Semi-final pool. <clears throat> on RE3 will be Marlborough versus St Paul in the boys under 14. And on RE4, Ipswich versus Tiffin, again in the boys under 14. Those Back into the boys under 18 Vars competition. Millfield in the red and green hoops. Cheltenham College in the red and black hoops. We've got everything but a referee. Goodness me. He's got unlike, his... unlike all referees to lose track of time. In fact, he's just adjusting his technical equipment so that we're ensuring that we get a ref mark. He's changing jersey as well, so there's no kit clash. That is yeah. officiating of the highest order. Big fan of that. He's got his Top Gun style dog tags on as well. Enough respect. Cheltenham College versus Millfield School. So a quick update of the results then. Millfield. They lost to Uppingham 19-10. Then they lost to Waterloo, 14-15. Then they beat Harrogate Grammar. As for Cheltenham College, well, they've had some slightly more favourable results. They beat Whitchurch, 15-5. Then Cheltenham beat Dean Close, 17-0. And then they lost to Stamford, 19-0, before beating Merkiston Castle. So all is not, all is not lost. And now it's the age-old debate. Uh, do you prefer a heads or tails, Burnsy, or a rock, paper, scissors? Tails never fails, and rock always wins. I'm so glad you didn't continue with the rhymes then. <laughs> We're just scrabbling around for a pair of headphones because I think we might have a threes up on this one because Amy Wilson-Hardy has joined you. There she is, hello. Wave to your adoring public. Uh, great to have your company, Joe. Great to have yours, Amy. Uh, great to have yours wherever you're watching around the world. Um, is Fran Hardy still watching? Oh, she's, she's ditched me. I don't know oh, where is she? she is. Okay. <laughs> if you are, hey again, Mum. I'm famous. <laughs> At least one of us has to be. 
Right then, we're kicking off Millfield in the red and green hoops. Cheltenham College in the red and black hoops. And this boy's under 18 Vars competition has delivered us some green. absolute beauties today. Great contest, green. great tries. And I'm sure this one is going to be no different. So Cheltenham College then. First attack from inside the 22. And the fend goes out early. A handful of jersey brings the man to ground. It's a good clear out as well. Just prevents Millfield going after that ball. Oh, it's a risky pass with the man in the passing channel. And that is a lot of physicality. Oh, Dummy switch inside. And the offload. And after that quarter final, we've just seen that last second try. This one just quietening down a little bit. Everything a contest. And a turnover, and Millfield wanting to go on the march, wanting to try and take advantage of the numbers. Lovely switch pass. And then just stopping around the 22, looking for where the gaps are. Those passes will do it. Beautiful soft hands, one way then the other to create the two on one. Try saving tackle is unsuccessful, and the try scored. Well, Burnsy didn't last long, did he? He's just taken the plunge, he's off. So, Amy, pop that, uh, pop that headset on. What, what did you say to him? I said, don't drink my cream tea. <laughs> <laughs> it's hiding. I couldn't bring it up the ladder, so I've risked it. So if anyone's listening is here, I'm watching you. What have you got? I've got a fun on a little um, afternoon tea. I've got a scone. Can I... Why, why did you leave it down there to come up here? Like, <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to climb a ladder with a cream tea in your hand? But no, you could have just at it down there and then come up I'm a professional you know can't well, take too much time off got to think like fuel yeah <laughs> um i'm quite intrigued now you reckon he's got the squits oh <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't really want to think about that millfield five cheltenham college nil tell you what the referee he's in good nick and he? he's got a big back on him every day it's bench day for that guy. <laughs> All right, Cheltenham College then. Oh, big physical contact and Millfield <laughs> pouring on the pressure. But all the Cheltenham College offside. And it is a tough game when you cough the ball up where they've coughed it up. This is where Millfield had the joy first up and it's where they're going to have the joy second up. Same man, same place, same result. Ball in two hands, deception on the ball. Just puts that tackler slightly off balance. And they're looking good for this, Millfield. And a better conversion this time as well. Two points added. Cheltenham College nil, Millfield 12. So where have you been since I last saw you? Well... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I was actually, we had a really nice, um, I was actually graced. I saw this, go on. Graced with Nolly Waterman, or Danielle Waterman, should I say, and Rocky Clark's presence. And we um, had a lovely chat with two of the under-14s teams from the girls' competition. Um, and yeah, it was just lovely. One, catching up with my friends, and yeah. also um, hopefully giving the new generation of players an insight into what we've done and gave them an opportunity to ask questions which okay. was great i saw that you it was like uh, it was like jack and ori wasn't it storytelling time the three of you were up there they were all sat around you all it needed was marshmallows and a campfire and it would have been a jolly good time but that must have been that must have been really lovely and it seemed like you got a really nice response from the girls as well hanging on your every word asking lots of questions Definitely, they're such an amazing group that we had. We had the two, a Welsh, a Welsh side and a, a side close to Nolly's hometown, Minehead. So it's okay. showing how small the, the rugby world is, which yeah. I love, those connections that you get. But two great teams with loads of enthusiasm. enthusiasm. What about that scrum from Millfield? A six-metre drive right off the ball. And they are hitting the turbochargers again. It's a lovely pass and a second touch. 
so much to like about that score from Millfield. It's such an obvious thing, but just having the ball in two hands is it just that deception that that causes. It just keeps the keeps the defence guessing, and they're showing then, and then the acceleration and change of pace onto the ball, it's destroying the Cheltenham defence at the moment. Well, as a set piece guru yourself, what about that scrum from Millfield though? Five, six metres, drove Cheltenham right off the ball. This is when we need Rocky Clark in the commentary <laughs> box, but I'm um. I'm fairly um, familiar with a seven scrum, which obviously is yeah. nothing like a 15 scrum, which is exactly that. I mean, that was beautiful, wasn't it? Superb. Three on three. Heads down. Other parts up, get pushing. Simple as that, right? Yeah, easy. <laughs> Played in the air, so six minutes on the clock, penalty. For Cheltenham College, they need something. The old dummy, pass it to yourself. Underrated skill. Something Millfield have done so well has just made every breakdown tough for Cheltenham to get quick ball. Little hop and a skip and a go, and he could do with an offload option, and then finds one. No. Big ball, Hail Mary over the top, and Millfield having to drift back into position. Man on the edge, backing himself around the outside. Oh, Millfield pinched that. Oh, one defender to beat, big tackle coming in. Big kidney tickler from behind, and has that been dropped? Yes, says our referee. And that takes us through to half time 19 0 Mil Millfield. Second half underway then, Millfield leading by 19 points to nil. If you are a parent or a fan or a friend or a family member or a coach of a team that's coming later in the week and you're wondering why we are skirting round the players here, it's because team sheets haven't been provided by either Millfield or Cheltenham College. So send the message to the coaches, be a coach yourself. Scribble down on a piece of paper, or even better yet, print one and laminate one, and we will make sure that you're in good hands as that ball's been coughed up. And Cheltenham College poach a try to give themselves some hope.
Good defence, just kind of, I absolutely love that. Great defence, so controlled, just staying square, staying composed, and then pouncing on that opportunity. It's so hard to play out of your own half in seven, especially when you're that close to the line. Just shows how defence can be turned into attack. Well, Millfield super confident inside their own 22. But any mistake, punished, pounced upon. Good pick up down low as well. Very often we see those trickle forward off the hands. We go again. Oh, was that a little harsh? I don't know. I'm not there, but well, that was a good contest for the ball there. Powerful lungs, the referee, isn't he? He can blow that whistle, that's for sure. Crikey. <laughs> Well, rewarding the jackal. Just blowing the whistle before he lost his balance as well. Sometimes we see those go the other way. Definitely had good purchase on the ball there. It did go off his feet, but I think, like you said, he just did enough. And interesting to see uh, an op for scrum, which I really like. Yeah. Pace on pace. So two to the left of the scrum, one to the right of the scrum. So that's kept the midfield defence honest and they try and create that two on one. Great burst from the base, the offload good too, so's the tackle. And then pushed back into play, what a shot from Millfield. Oh, and the ball's eventually gone forward, that's a really good defensive scramble from the Millfield boys. Cheltenham did so well there, and you could see the sport was just slightly slow, slightly lacking, which meant that Millfield could, I mean, fair play, the work rate to get back and have so many so many of the boys behind the ball ready to defend again was exceptional, but just felt that Cheltenham needed to get that score there to get themselves firmly back in the game. Four minutes to go in this one. Next score, absolutely massive. It's Millfield running it from their own 22 again. They'll switch inside, looking at absorb the defenders and again Millfield have coughed it up in their own 22 it cost them a try last time it's going to cost them the put in at the scrum this time well if Cheltenham pinch one here it really is interesting everyone stacked to the right hand side for Cheltenham this time Despite that deliciously big short side. Oh, very close. Very close, but not quite. I would have really liked to see, after that first break from the, the previous scrum, potentially an unconventional put in from the nine, just to open up that blind side. It would have been interesting to see if he could do, if he could make that break again. So, what I mean by that is in sevens, you often see the ball put in on both sides of the scrum to open up that, that running channel for the nine. Could he have repeated that on the other side? Well, let's come back, Cheltenham's side. And it's good work over the ball. Rescuing a sorry situation for Millfield. Did he tap that or have they just played on? Either way, they are marching up over halfway. Oh, and a great pickup. On a big handful of jersey. Stopping the attack, but not for long. Millfield straight up the guts. And that's a lovely ball. And now Cheltenham scrambling in defence. And the high tackle. Two minutes to go. And this should be enough for Millfield to see this home. So much space on the right hand side. An extra man if they need him. All the way out to the edge. Down it goes. And that will secure the victory for Millfield. Four tries to one, 24-7. And they can do this all day. Again, multiple offloads down that channel, causing Cheltenham to really tighten up in defence and then really composed, unselfish play just to finish up in the corner, knowing that they don't really need the, the, seven, as well, the seven points as well. Added bonus if we get the kick here. Oh, it's close. Oh. Great effort on the right peg from the right hand side. One minute. A little over a minute. Into the final minutes of Cheltenham College, just playing for pride now. 
too little too late for Millfield, but ending their day with a good performance. So Cheltenham looking for a try to finish into the last minute. It's excellent work in the contact zone, then that underarm bowl. It's all a little bit congested. And into the last few phases of this one. Good strength with that left-handed piston. That's time. Time off. Oh, time. Oh, the referee time saying that that is time. time. That will be enough. And so Millfield just need to get this ball off the pitch. It's an orthodox way of doing it. But it is done. And Millfield take the win. Four tries to Cheltenham's one. It finishes 24-7. Here we go, pitch R E one, all killer no filler, all day long on day two at the Howden Rosson Park National School Sevens. Amy Wilson Hardy is along for the ride, for what is short to be a hell of a ride. It is the Vars semi final. It's Kingswood School lining up on our left in black, reds, and thin white hoops up against the hugely impressive Stamford School. And what's on the line? Well, the biggest carrot of them all, a place in the final. Amy, semi-finals, huge games. What I love about semi-finals is that it kind of doesn't really matter what's happened. Everyone ups their game, takes it to the end, takes it to the end. I'm sure we've got a nail biter in store. Well, here we go, Stamford in all white, kick off. And into the hands and into an error early in this final. Stamford, a group of the Oratory School, Wycliffe College and the Thomas Hardy School. Well, they won them all and then they took down St George's Weybridge by five points in the elimination round. Final game of yesterday. They did lose to Dean Close. They pit Whitchurch High School by a point, and then they put on a bit of a show against Cheltenham. Before, in the quarterfinal, they took down St Albans. That's why they're here, and that's why they're attacking through the number 15, Jack Haynes, linking up on the edge, Freddie Beals. Freddie Beals almost tramples over his opponent. But a high tackle was what had him stumbling. Try scoring opportunity, you heard it right there. So yellow card. He had the hard work there. He got himself a really good position, but unfortunately, just, yeah, you've got to keep those shots though. You really want to chop that. You can see probably trying to stop an inside offload, trying to stop that play, but just, yeah, right cool. Well, Kingswood, the only loss they tasted was early today against Merkison Castle. Then they took down Uppingham in the quarter-final, but otherwise, Morden College, Strath Allen, 
Cardinal Newman, Coopers, St Ambrose and Mount Kelly all defeated. High calibre semi-final action here and Stamford looking to strike from close range. The tackles are tepid. The try is scored. Jack Haynes drawing first blood in the semi-final. Player wrapping round there just spooked the rest of the defence, didn't it? Just took the eyes off the 15. Did you say it was Jack? We then went right under the post. Yeah, Jack Haynes, who's been selected by Lambs, the famous Northern Select side. Showing us exactly what caught their eye. Pretty simple stuff, straight through the middle. And finding a soft arm. And in underneath, almost, the uprights. Coasting away, easy conversion, and just exploiting that extra man advantage that still has 30 seconds left on the clock. James Edgerton, the captain, the man on the Tigers watch list, on the books. Puts Kingswood into their 22. A carry out, but an isolation. And that's precision on the turnover. It's not cold. Get the card back on, boys. Oh, I was just about to say, really smart decision there for taking the scrum with a player, player up, but just, just being brought back on, so we're back to seven apiece. Amy Wilson Hardy, GB7's stalwart. For those who don't watch Brooks. sevens as much as I do, as Brains. much as you play, calling for a scrum, it's not Sets. that out of the ordinary these days. It's a legitimate tactic. Definitely. I mean, we always go along the principle of if you've got players on the floor, go for the quick tap. It does, it does depend a little bit who you're playing, if you want to keep the tempo high, but scrum, as we, I, did, I mentioned before, it, it takes six players out of the game in terms of, like, you've got six players in a really small area, and you imagine that opportunity to your speedsters that we're seeing here. Unlucky. Gets the kick away. There's so much time and space on the ball if you can take your six of your power players out. Oscar Belmont was the one who almost wriggled free and put boots a ball there for Kingswood. Stanford looking composed. Not too much pressure from the defensive line of Kingswood, but sufficient presence to force an unforced error. Just the pass forward and a bit of ball for Kingswood. Nice, crisp ball for Kingswood. And here they go, Ollie Day. Ollie Day just on that glide and looking to feed the speed back on the ball. Ollie Day running out of room and running out of friends. What a big dump tackle, caught mid-air, brought to floor safely but firmly. And Day looks to skirt down the short side. He can't do it all on his own though. The chalk comes into play. That's a good defensive set from Stamford. It was a really good defence, especially off the set piece, that patience to just keep pushing them out. Really good attacking, we call it a gas line, that hitting the outside, trying to get two players sucked in. The winger did really well just to hold his composure, to stay square enough to then track that winger when he got the ball. So really mature defence there. Tense times when it comes to semi-finals. There is the enormous prospect of a final on the most famous pitch at schoolboy rugby level on offer. Stanford at the moment, the ones with not a foot, but maybe a toenail in it. Leading by seven, but with a penalty. Fine. One minute and a bit of change left of this semi-final. Carried forward by Haynes and a penalty given away. You can see the excitement, the eagerness to play, and it's almost punishing them at the moment, just flying off the, his feet there. But you can see that eagerness. They want to get on the ball. They want to do something, which is great to see. Lovely drop of the shoulder and a dart away from Basti Lanclyde. Hey, 
back. Oh, the pass really stretching the fingertips. You heard the call clearly there. Ball gone backwards, say still we play. Archie Wake on the scene. Nice offload, just an ankle clasped by the desperate hands of the Stamford defence. One extra roll might get him in trouble. Rolling. Trouble. And it does for Oscar Belmont. You just can't get away with anything in sevens, can you? Everything is so much more obvious. Less players on the pitch. There's no bodies hiding you from that extra roll. So unfortunately, that's an easy decision for the ref to make. Everything is amplified in the game of sevens. Be that your defensive skills, your attacking acumen, or in this case, your tumbling. Better put you on the line. Final play of this half, of this semi final. Stanford looking to cement their dominance in this half. They haven't been into the Kingswood rounds for some time since their score, since the score that sees them lead 7 0. They don't look like they've been away too long because there's great comfort on the ball. They try to squeeze the offload, but there's too good a tackle that's come in. And despite the scoop from Edgerton, the whistle is blown and the half-time huddles will be formed. And it'll be Sanford School far the happier leading in this semi-final seven points to nil against Kingswood. Seven minutes lie between Stamford and a final, or will Kingswood come back with only seven the margin? St Paul's boys or Lancaster Royal Grammar School await the victor of this contest. Stamford starting with possession and starting the brighter. Still reasonably passive defensively from Kingswood. They're not pressing hard, they're allowing Stanford to come onto them. We're fine, he must roll. But on this occasion, the, pre the jackal good, but the roll not there. Yeah, that's such a crucial decision-making factor, whether that tackle is rolled away, often overlooked, but if the, if the tackle is still in there, the, your best bet is just to leave it completely. Don't, uh, don't give away line. that penalty, as you can see, yeah. just the field position now for Stanford. So much better. They proved they've got good line out before as well, so I'm expecting a really nice attacking play off this. Leading by seven, six minutes to go. Where Stanford to score here, it would be big. No contest in the skies, so off Stanford go, off the top through Luke Joubert. Switch, bringing in the big man, Will Delaney. From the Midlands into the midfield. Nice quick recycle. Plenty of opportunity here for Stanford. But the defence, so oh, so good from Kingswood. Then they pounce. 
Stamford reorganised himself transitionally very nicely indeed. He wants the switch, it doesn't come. Oh, the no-look ball over the shoulder was lovely. But they were outnumbered and still Kingswood under pressure in their own 22. You haven't seen many kicks, have we? We've seen a lot of ambition to play out, out of the... Well, own try line essentially. It's interesting, especially, I mean, it's slightly spitting, it's really slightly damp out there. You think maybe a kick chase could have been a good option? That's a big rugby IQ development point, though, isn't it, when it comes to sevens? It's like, when's the time to kick? And when is it time to keep the ball in hand? Offside. Five. Definitely, I think, well, you see, and different teams have different ways of doing things as well, so there's no right or wrong, it's it's a way of playing, and I do love the ambition of playing, and I love this now, that change of tempo, you can see, just stop and wait, and that's absolutely fine, it's creating indecision from the defence, and look at that contest, physical battle on the edge. Well, a big bruising carry from Taft Johnson, and he gets up for another nibble and unfortunately there's been some chat back as well as Kings would get marched back a further 10 and the scrum gets called yeah you actually saw James Edgerton drop back and play shallow sweeper there in that passage you also saw great captain play there just telling his team to stay controlled they're seven nil up and not having to rush through things just giving them a little you know, we're okay just take it steady Got it, we got it, he's falling over. Well, that is a contest on, and a half then. for the breakdown. Look at that for a rip, full block, body swivel. Well done, boys. Kingswood scrapping and they need to. Oh, ho, ho, ho. sells everyone with the dummy. <laughs> but Stafford are bossing the breakdown right now. I think it's been a general theme, actually. There's been lots of turnovers in, in all age groups and all genders of this breakdown. And it's interesting, I think it comes from a lot of teams just wanting to play, wanting to keep the ball alive, which is great. But then it's like, like we said, that the development of the rugby IQ went to just absolutely nail those breakdown basics and keep hold of the ball, to keep possession. Short side, being probed by Stanford, who still lead by seven. Who are watching the clock tick down in their favour. We've got under three to go. And the ball in Bennett's hands, he ships it on to Peck. Lovely interplay in the middle. Wait. Stanford, as close as they've been all half, as close as they've been since the score yeah. is, it's the coup de grace. Touch called. Touch called. Touch Huge tackle. <laughs> Semi-salvaging tackle, potentially. That was magnificent. Right. Now see what they do. The rain's starting to come a bit heavier. Will they play? Will they play out? Will they kick? Will they chase? possibilities endless look at this what a shot a thunderbolt from Kingswood with the five meter beckoning wow how significant might that be as we tick to the final two Nolly Waterman was talk was talking earlier about the bravery you need to play rugby like just a willingness to put your complete body on the line there. Don't worry about yourself. Just worry about your teammates Brooks. and saving that for the try-saving tackle. What would you rather? Brooks. Winning try or try-saving tackle? Oh. Winning try. <laughs> 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 well, it could be a winning try here for Stanford. They got all the numbers. They got all the space. The cover comes across. The footwork is oh so sweet. And Stamford have skipped their way across with potentially a decisive second. What a time to score your second try. Piling on the pressure. The composure just see it off at the end. Well, that's pressure telling, isn't it? I mean, Kingswood have spent pretty much the duration of this half in their 22. And it's a terrific touchline conversion attempt, but no extras to add. Time running against Kingswood and Stamford at the moment, sailing through this semi to the final. Will Delaney with the dot down. 
a hanging kick that invites a big leap. And a quick fire response required from Kingswood. Just a nibble forward. And I think that may be their moment gone. See the frustration, hands on head. There's no worse feeling as an individual, but you know that that moment Bunch. doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of Bunch. things. Not one Set. moment creates a game. Stanford have just maintained dominance throughout. Really composed, mature performance, actually, I feel. Pack yourselves, the cry from the touchline. Well, both these sets of boys have backed themselves all the way to the semi-final, but right now, it's looking like it's Stanford's. <laughs> Penalty to the boys in red hoops. And they go direct, they engage the shoulders of the Stanford defence. No release on the tackle, another penalty, but Stanford won't mind. But it looks like we may have well, a bit of cramp. It was concerned it might be something more seriously serious, but uh, dramatic cramp it is. I think the, the swinging leg gave me confidence that it was not anything too serious, hopefully. had cramp in your ribs, like your abs, that hurts. One would have to have abs <laughs> to, uh, to feel Everyone crippling cramp. <laughs> no, talk, talk me through it. it was, I, I'd had a tough training session and I was lying in my, on my bed trying to get um, changed after shower and I had crippling, I couldn't move. I had to change my outfit because I couldn't get my leggings on. What were you wearing, a, a corset, was it? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think it was from the heavy breathing. Victorian themed party. <laughs> what do we get up to in GB7's camp? Well, judging by the stories of, um, you know, Cape Town and like an impromptu song, was it like a last, uh, a last hen for Jasmine Joyce? <laughs> Sounds like it's pretty good fun to play for GB7's. Kingswood, final throws to the semi final. Engage the contact. Yeah, time's up. Stanford win the penalty. That's time up. The semi final's done. They won't want to play any more minutes here. The deed is done. Stanford School are off to the final. And the boys under 18 bars of the Howland Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. They defeated Kingswood 12 points to nil. All right, from one semi-final to another, the heavyweight clashes just keep on coming on RE1. And there is a bit of potential history riding on the fortunes of whoever progresses from this match. 
This isn't just a semi-final. This is continental bragging rights. It's the Dubai English-speaking college up against the Jumeirah English-speaking school. Desk v Jess. And Jess receiving in blue and roared on by a vociferous traveling band of rugby seven loving fans. Desk who battled their way all through the competition vying for a final. Jess have been there before in their time, but no international side has ever won a competition here at the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. Frenetic start. Desk travelling in reverse. They're just about getting to the bottom of things and getting a bit of ball in hand, getting a bit of space and getting to the edge. Big carry, nice offload, and decent feet. I love the continuity here, Amy. But the crunching shots keep raining in. And Jeff hat through. Look at that for a chase back, the scramble. You can feel the rivalry, can't you? You can feel the heat between these two sides, the shots coming in. Oh my goodness, cut in half by a spleen splitter. Goodness me. And still, the play is alive. Still, the offload. Oh. But no scoring try because of desperate defence. One minute and 40 seconds of relentless yeah, action to kick off this semi final. Let's look at this. So your defensive mark is there. That awareness of the touchline, the such a good tackle. Tacker desperately trying to keep the ball in. The defence just does enough in that, that instance. Right, if you're not, it's right to him. Okay, when you're ready. Well, that line out. Well, that free play, I beg your pardon. Not forward, so desk putting themselves okay, under pressure. You're not in the scrum on the fight. The goal line. Goal line. Goes under 14, semi-final. And goodness me, there's a bit of beef between these two. It is full-blooded, full commitment. Jess steal the ball. They look to transfer it to the space. But again, pressure on the handling exerted by the defensive press. Means we go to a scrum. Good hustle, isn't it? Every single ball is a contest. I'd love to see it. Desk. He's yes. taken down Plantois Community School, Taunton RGS, and the reigning Wait, champions, Hill House it. School, 17 14 yeah. in the quarters. They're in attack. They're popping off the floor. They love to keep it alive, but they don't mind bringing the biff as well. Here comes the speed. There's not much room to express that, held in the tackle. So, if she's to get back up and go again, she has to release the ball. There was no release, so Jess win the penalty. <laughs> when planets collide, but there's room here for the guys in blue. Runs in the air, the stickiest fingers and the fastest feet, and scampering across to the opening score of the match. And listen to the response and feel the shudder of the advertising hoardings. That was exceptional handling, wasn't it? Just the timing of the pass and then, like you said, just almost fingertips coming in. Snatch it. Nothing was going to stop her scoring there. The try maximise and I'm not going to say it's been a procession, but it has been some journey to this semi-final for Jess. They are yet to concede a single point 
having defeated Blundells. Penrail Comprehensive School, Hayes and RGS en route to this crunch clash against their UAE rivals. They scored over 150 points in the process. And they may just bag themselves another try here. Brilliant wrap-up tackle. You let her get away. Oh, you see in the back of her jersey in it. Interception attempt, major draw. A yellow card. Well, the referee reached her pocket and then she reconsidered. Look at that, though. What strength, what determination, nothing you felt was going to stop that run. A barnstorming run from 30 metres, hands, chest, their second try. So many people on the sides invest in this game as well. What I love to see, not just you can hear the support from the other age groups of the same colleges and schools, but also just so many people just stopping, seeing what a great game rugby is going on, seeing what all the noise is about. So the desk girls with it all to do, trailing to Jess. But we see the way they attack, the scene, the way that they like to strike. Caitlin Mannion takes them across the halfway line and the heart and the crowd erupt. Huge support here. Wheels for days. The pop inside. Death keeping a line. Ava Schwartz, the South African, surfing the shoulder. Right, you tackled, you need to get the floor, you're back ten. But a penalty given away. Best passage of attacking play from Death so far. Nice pick up and a burst off the mark as well from Jess. To the try scorer. Shows her hands. Ooh. Offload, love the ambition. But just slipping forward. Half time, ladies. And half time. Half time. Wow. We've absolutely rattled through that hugely entertaining half. And it is one that Jess are currently in command of. They lead the Dubai English Speaking College 14 points to nil. Yeah, the whole of this academic year so far, so since September, I've yeah, got eight, eight units. I love the fact that the stats give you a, a sort of a basis for sort of analysing what the players are doing, how hard they're working. I think in, in training, but in matches as well, it's interesting to see who kind of the, the unsung heroes, if you like, the people that, that work, but you don't necessarily see them doing the work. So the students have, uh, yeah, they have real kind of responsibility to do all the uh, uploading of data themselves. So all I have to do, look on the cloud, uh, sort of platform, and then I can do my analysis from there. Well, yeah, it's been really interesting. I've enjoyed seeing how far I was running as well as my max speed. Well, it's been great. I mean, it's been really fun having competition within the squad. See who's run the most, who's the fastest. This is one really good thing about the app. So each player will have an app, which breaks the rugby school community, uh, so they can compare themselves against each other get leaderboards for each metric and yeah certainly breeds that uh, that area of uh, competitiveness. Everyone's like putting their best teams out, working hard and never giving up until the final whistle. So when you come out here and seeing you know everyone, all the big schools and the big names and putting ourselves up against it, so it's really good. It's been brilliant. We love we love coming down. Uh, we're lucky enough this year it's our it's our 200th year of rugby. Uh, so we're we're celebrating massively this year. I think the standard's been really high. We were here last year. 12 months on, the girls' game has exploded and uh, we've had three really tough games today. It's been yeah, great form and great standards um, and nice to see how we mix. Ready to kick off. They lead this semi-final 14 points to nil. And into the hands of Alice Coviello. The Italian looking to harness the spirit of the Azuri. They've gone so well in the Six Nations, but a knock-on from one of her teammates means that Jess have the ball. Okay, here, please. Hit 
like having a home crowd here for Jess. I know. <laughs> Most noisily supported crowds here, and they've come Fox. from arguably the furthest. We, we will have a team from Canada Set. in the women's competition later this week. We've had Belgian representatives, we've had New Zealand and Australia in the past, and Jess beginning to stretch their legs and let their skill do the talking as well. Big defence from Desk, who again. just are not giving up. Full of fight, but they need to land a shot here. They can't let this go get free. And that's a great hit and stick. <laughs> Lily Marchant coming up with the try saving tackle. Ava Burke out of the 22. Gone back. That's the call. Still, we play Marchant. Getting swarmed over, and Jess have stolen it. They freed up the hands. Try number three. I think we saw this in the last game Jess played on this pitch. Kind of second half, they really started to open up and play. I wonder if this is just the start of the foot on the gas. Are they going to really run away with it? Or are Jess going to stay in this game? Some phenomenal tackling efforts. Well, it's such pressure, isn't it, on the skills. Big press coming from Jess on desk. We should say that no matter what happens in this semi-final, this is the first desk girls team to ever come to Roslyn. These girls are pioneers as far as desk girls rugby goes, and to be in a semi-final is huge. I shout another little shout out to Libby Marsh and then she she actually looked like she was hobbling a bit at the start of half time but still but in that try saving tackle one of the smallest players on the pitch against one of the biggest players on the pitch fearless and then got up to attack again first season of contact rugby as well Libby March and our lads for the ball Dislodged from the hands of Caitlin Mannion. I understand is a talented footballer oh, as well. Off she goes. New front row. Fresh presence at scrum half as well with Ava Five. Burke on. Anything else in the subs here? Well, the subs are still taking place and we've got more, more girls on the pitch than we really should. On and off. Okay, reset. That's the great thing about this under 14s competition. Although these girls are championing for the win, they want to get that win. It's so much more just about the future as well. Ouch. That's what I've loved is how many Five. players have we seen play their first contact rugby, Six. their first rugby ever over these last few days. Desk. Looking for a try, looking for a try to breathe oxygen into their semi final foul. Darcy Holloway. Escaping the clutches, still weaving through, and then gets clattered by Chloe Clohessy. Desk swatting away Jess defenders, throwing out big fans. Gabby McAlpine. Jess. But Jess have it. Jess free up the hands I'm once backwards. again, but for once. The offload doesn't stick, but look at the hunger. Look at the insatiable appetite to fight. And across goes Ava Burke, the warrior of Dubai. Fighting for desks right for the final. Unbelievable determination and still, still there's hope. Ava's been such a bright spark in this attack. She's really been ruling, bossing people around, looking so threatening with ball in hand and so deserved to go over the line. They've pieced some great attack together, so wonderful to see. We heard right there, just over one minute. Jess asking the question, are they, are they feeling the pinch? of a, well, an improbable, but a spirited comeback. You can see 
see what Ava put into that try. That look of exhaustion. Come on, get up, you've got it. Just hold in, a couple more minutes. I will. Uh, just over one minute. The time's off at the moment. Time is off. If Desk can get their hands on this ball. Hey, time's back on. Could they, could they do something extraordinary? Abby McAlpine restarts us. Oh, there's a real chase and a squabble on the floor. And Jess oh, getting deleted in the 22. Looks like it didn't slip high because there's no call from the referee. An offload out the back door into the hands of the right edge flyer. She screams away. And this is a final clinching try for Jess. Still Des fighting for everything at the end there. So many players chasing back in desperation to just try and hold, hold the speedster out. There's not much, oh, not much stopping her. Maybe the kicking needs a bit of work, but I can't comment, so. <laughs> Technically, if she hasn't touched the ball, could she re-kick re that? <laughs> I, I did my level one refereeing course nearly Let's 20 years ago. And... <laughs> Haven't found a chance to top it up just yet. <laughs> but a fabulous finish from Hanley. Come on, girls, that's going to be she good. wouldn't be caught. And I don't think Jess will either. They're on their way to the final. They're on their way for a hit at history. Could they become the first ever international team to hoist a trophy? at the most famous school's Rugby Sevens competition in the world. Jess have won it, but they still want to play. Their coaches will be screaming at them to conserve the energy, but they don't care. Hanley wants another, she wriggles free. She rides to the 22. One last attack for Jess with the penalty advantage, with the room, with the electric pace. She gets on her Vespa and Ava motors Jess to the final in emphatic fashion. Give the fans what they want. Who got, kicks the ball out when you can finish like that, hey? They may have conceded their first points of the competition, but Jess are on their way to a final here at the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. In a tremendous game, full of commitment, full of quality, but it's Jamera who take the UAE bragging rights here on UK soil, they defeat Dubai English speaking college by 29 points to five.
Welcome to, or welcome back to, Pitch RE1, where it is St. Peter's York. Forward by Blue. Versus Bishop Wordsworth yeah, School. Bishop Wordsworth. Crouch! Well, the in. Set! at the scrum and they've lost to Dauncey's they've beaten Christ College they've lost to Teddy's Oxford and they've beaten New Hall St Peter's York on day two they really have been excellent at times when we've seen them but they lost to Dauncey's despite scoring more tries five to four but they didn't kick their goals and that is going to make life tough they beat Bedford Modern 26-24 in an absolute thriller at the start of the day. And they're backing themselves on the pace here. This is a superb turn of pace. Now it needs to sit up. Oh, it's just skewed off the boot. Down your feet. It's back with Bishop's Wordsworth. So, yes, St. Peter's, they beat Bedford Modern, then lost to St. Paul's, then beat Dollar Academy and lost to Dauncey. So both 1-2, lost 2 today. And it's Bishop Wordsworth who are going to career up the left-hand side. A breathless start. We've been in both 22s a couple of times. And it, should be, it is Bishop Wordsworth. Get my words out eventually, Amy. Who scored a seven-pointer. Well, what have I missed? Been away for a while. You guys seem to have been having a lovely time up here. We have. We've had some thrilling games. Really close right to the end. Really competitive. Some great work from the under-14 girls just now. Dubai contingent showing their fantastic handling skills and a lot of fight. I tell you what, you could tell it was a local rivalry. All right, back underway. That one drifting towards the touchline. Good restart. Can't compete for it though. It's got a little bit dark here and I'm worried about the R word. Don't do sevens in the rain. Really. No, and neither should we. Now, Bishop Wordsworth. 
One try to the good already. Nice little inside ball, phenomenal mullet. Has he had a perm as well, do you think? I was about to say, have we spoken much about hairstyles today? Because there are some cracking efforts going on. We saw a long and lustrous mullet earlier that was split dyed, half green, half blue. And I didn't know whether to applaud or spew. I'm not sure his hairdresser would have done either, to be honest. Oh, this is lovely footwork and a lovely finish. And the second best mullet on the team scores the try, 12-0. What's your objective take on the rugby mullet? Uh, not a fan, if I'm honest. No? Takes, takes a special person to put off a mullet. Yes, special with the capital S. That's a lovely step off the right foot, isn't it? Once, then twice. St. Peter's chasing the game already. Slightly deeper with the restart. Again, taste the uh, test in that right hand touchline for the men from York. Harry Squire receives it. Oh, and they're knocked on. Not happening for them today. The boys from York. Over. Oh, Bishop Wordsworth absolutely flying through Don't into the 22. Up, Don't slide up. Release. Hold on. Called off by the referee, queuing up on the left-hand side. Oh, that's a good offload, and over the head, here we go. Champagne, corks popping. Absolutely brilliant, and the pass good. And from the second best mullet to clearly the best one, three tries. Go on, son, have a rest, you deserve it. Great score, 19-0. Tell you what, to pull off some of those offloads with the conditions being like they are, I mean, it's even more impressive. It's definitely getting slippery out there. So in the elite environment, then, we see offloads, we see brilliant handling. Every player has to be able to do a lot, pass off both hands and find those unorthodox offloads and shapes. What do you do to train those? Is that something you do as part of a team or is it a skill you're expected to acquire yourself? You definitely have um, opportunities to train those, I think. <laughs> Just look at it again. So impressive. And another one. And then that pass around the back was nice too. Anyway, your skill set, you were yeah, telling no, me how you cultivate it. De definitely times and opportunity to, tra um, to train it, I think. What? Again, what? it kind of depends on like your DNA as a team. Like Some teams offload a lot. We spoke about BG, get that tackle into touch, ruthless there. But yeah, um, there's opportunities to do individual skills, work on those kind of things. But an having a good offload game, I think, is so essential for the game of sevens. You probably actually see more offloading in in kind of school level rugby, which I think is great, that ambition to keep the ball alive that we've mentioned a lot today. Probably a bit more structured and a bit more passing in, the, in kind of the elite level game. But I think when you get in behind teams to have the ability to offload and you can see how Fiji, for example, absolutely destroy teams just by their control on the ball. One hand running. St. Peter's York trying to destroy Bishop Wordsworth with pace. And a tap and a go. This young man full of running. That's Tom Council wearing 21. And they continue to come forward. This much better from the boys from York, but that scooped offload evades everyone. And this is lung busting stuff. It is sprint one way, sprint the other. And it's back in the hands of St. Peter York. You see there as well, offloading is not just about the actual skill, but the decision making as to when to do it. And should you offload? Can you offload? Is the person in the supporting channel in a better Roll. position than you? Or is it just a Hail Mary? Get out there quicker. Probably St. Peter's just guilty of before offloading, not on their terms, but now you can see it's definitely on their terms. They go down this left side. Yeah, enjoying themselves and getting the try, getting the reward. And that offload, that speed of ball, just before half-time. We'll get them on the board. 19 points to five, conversion to come. Again, yeah, speaking about those crucial times to score, they're now going into that half with a little that hopes, hopes there, the positivity going into the second half. They get the first score in the second half, they're in a really good place. It's getting a little bit dark, isn't it? 
Worryingly so. Nothing worrying about that strike, though. And we are going to have time to restart the half, or are we? No, referee's changed his mind. 19 points to seven. Second half underway, underway with an error, and Bishop Wordsworth, 19-7 to the good, and knocking on the door of a try that would take them up over 20. This is lovely footwork, creating space, but St. Peter's forming that defensive line on the 22 and getting a rogue hand in there and picking it off. Big pass slung off the right hand, now attacking that edge defender before switching back inside. Huge credit to the conditioning of these young athletes. Four or five games into the second day of a long competition. And even though there are losses on the record and progress is unlikely, still revving at a high frequency and playing at a high level. That's so much about sevens. It's not just that one isolated performance from a game. It's that ability to get up and down. You can't. You've obviously got to be able to switch off between games and then come straight back fighting. And you can see here... Oh, brilliant offload and a well-worked try. And St. Peter's York right back in it. Under the poles they go. They really love that. That really hard line out and that cut, late cut back in. It's so hard to defend when done well. Talk to us about how it works in between games then. When you're on tour, when you're on the World Series. Full-time whistle goes. What happens in that gap between game one and game two, or game two and game three? It's a very, very consistent process. Obviously, each team's a bit different, but we try and have like a hot debrief where we get all of the emotion kind of out quick, what, what happened in the game. We use our time to then shower and kind of, that's when you self-reflect and all that emotion's gone by the time you're out of the shower and you're focusing on the next game and then you analyze, get some food, and it's just about restarting again. It goes pretty quickly. Everyone has a different ways of switching off as well. Any naps? I cannot nap. A lot of people do nap. How <laughs> do they? Oh, people recharge the batteries in different ways. I get worried I won't wake up again. I like I like to go and actually watch the sevens and sit in the crowd. Oh, and do just, you? Yeah, I okay. find it a really good way of just switching off from my own, my own stuff. And then if I've got the time. Player first, fan second. Yeah, I'd say so. Awesome. Who, do, who doesn't like sitting in a, in no, a crowd watching sevens? So. No, you are you are absolutely right. The only thing is, I get too emotionally involved with the game. I'd be drained by the time <laughs> it came to playing again. But God, if you can use that as a way to to relax and almost meditate, I suppose, and get yourself in the zone. It's an excellent scrum from St. Peter's York as they're searching for try number three here. Great position on the pitch, and now Bishop Wordsworth. In more oh, than a spot of bother. Oh, so nice flat ball, but a little bit too inviting. And it's knocked on. And the chance goes. Same again, boys. It's just threatening. Threatening drizzle, isn't it? 
don't mention it when it's just No, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we just pretend it's not happening, maybe it just Find. won't happen. Fingers crossed. Set. I'm just thinking Dubai Sunshines after recently seen Dubai oh. play. And look, another huge scrum from St. Peter's York. Yeah, this really is a, a change of conditions to what they're used to. <laughs> Over here, the air conditioning's on the outside. Funny, I think we're training in west coast of Scotland, preparing to go to all these hot locations. <laughs> Beautiful part of the world, though, west coast of Scotland. It is stunning. Not very hot, though. Yes, yeah, I think that is fair to say. More pressure coming on at scrum time, but it's back with Bishop Wordsworth. Oh, they've opted for the boot, and that's because there's space and pace. Oh, it's bounced up, and it's really well composed in the end, and now it'll open up. St. Peter's York into the 22. They've opted for the kick. But back with Bishop Wordsworth. Oh, that's a good pickup under a lot of pressure. Looking for the offloads, oh, leaving it behind into the dead ball zone. And that big bump, an important one. You don't want to get trapped. Ooh, off his feet. Oh, that was unlucky there. Really felt if, if so, Peters could have kept the ball in hand. Well, they could be back in here. There was no one out on the edge for Bishop, Bishop Wordsworth. Lofted the ball straight to the grass, but oh, playing it on the floor. St. Peter's York with so many chances. Unable to take advantage of any of them. No, oh, the old Percy reversey. There was no need for it, but it's come up their way. And now this could be the try that seals it. Both men have hit the travelator. Is there enough? Oh, it's a great finish in the end. Pure desire. Burning lungs, empty legs, but enough for a fourth try. Okay, oh, that's a tired body showing that run. Yeah. Oh, he's signalling, <laughs> he's doing the signal. He's earned it, to be fair. The universal signal for that is me done. Thanks, boys. The only trouble is when you do that and nothing happens. Take another look. He had so much work to do here. Initially, it was a it was a loose pass, but he got himself into position and then beat the first man, beat the ankle tap. Oh, and you can see the grimace, the chin on the chest, praying for that try line to appear. Because that's not just that run. That's also a series of play where it's been pen to pen to pen to pen. So it's, there's been no stoppages. That takes grit, takes determination. Well, this isn't going to go 10. Oh, it has. Yep, keep playing. It bounced 10. Now, St. Peter's need to score. They need to score quickly. Oh, that is perhaps a try saving ankle tap. So our clock now ticking towards 14 minutes. If they score. They need to restart and get that ball back. Make a couple more tackles here for Bishop Wordsworth. So will be oh, enough to pick up the victory. Another highly competitive game. And St. Peter's York have certainly had their opportunities. <laughs> and the referee said time is dead. So even if St. Peter's York do score, it's not going to be enough to claim the victory. Roll. 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 Bishop Wordsworth will finish the game with six, but they will finish the game with a victory. St. Peter's get the try to reduce the arrears, but there will not be time to restart. It is a victory for the six men. Now Bishop Wordsworth School. 26 points, enough for the win. The valiant fight back, wasn't it, from St. Peter's, but not quite enough. Brushes the post. Not a post, not a post hitting today. And that draws the curtain down on this one. Full time score Bishop Wordsworth 26, St. Peter's York 19.
Good afternoon. The next match on RE1 is the Bars final at Lancaster Royal Grammar School versus Stamford. Uh, that match due to get underway shortly. The Bars final, Lancaster Royal Grammar School versus Stamford. Lancaster Royal Grammar School against Stamford. It is the Roslyn Park National Schools 7. Vars final, silverware up for grabs. And this one has got the potential to be brilliant. It's been an absolutely astonishing competition. And it all ends here. Dr. Ben Moore is the referee, Stamford School in what's left of the white jerseys after a muddy couple of days and Lancaster chasing the kickoff to start with and the boys in white taking it on what a fantastic competition so far two full days a high tackle early on and we have the company of Amy Wilson Hardy for this one and Joe Burns as well Burns he's buzzing around and that went carried in by Jack Haynes. He plays for the independent school's lambs. Oh, and a big bump. Something Stanford has done so well. He's dominated the collisions. And are they going to add an under-18s Vars trophy? A well-earned under-18s Vars trophy. Is that offload? Well, it's gone one way, then the other. Lancaster yet to get a touch as Stamford refusing to give up this ball. It's a bounce pass, but sometimes they can really cause some chaos. Oh, and the inside ball doesn't go to hand. And as it just starts to dribble, Amy Wilson-Hardy, is that going to have an effect on the handling here? It's been largely dry for these teams' campaigns so far. Definitely. I think be interesting how they adjust will they change how they play slightly will they tighten up will they reduce the offloads I don't know I hope they still play with kind of the jue that they've been showing today I'm sure they will and it shows now with that little rap play coming around well into the 22 go Stanford Luke Joubert seen him punch holes throughout the day that's Jack Haynes in at scrum half, and now James Edgerton, the captain, the captain, Edgerton gets away! He's under the post! And the skipper, the leader of this team, gets the scoreboard ticking over, and Stamford lead 5-0. He's leading from the front, isn't he? Said in the, the last game, which feels like five minutes ago, so fair play to these boys for coming out so quickly and and showing up, but he really controlled the game so well in that captain shirt. See, again, I think it's gonna be another big performance from him. 
for this final. Well, they've really been involved in some arm wrestles. The first two games today, they lost to Dean Close 14-12, but then beat Whitchurch High 22-21, 19-0 against Cheltenham College, 36-14 against St Albans, and then 12-0 against Kingswood in the semi-final here on pitch RE1. Short turnaround. As for Lancaster Grammar, receiving this kickoff now. Oh, are they? What a contest! And it's come back Lancaster Grammar's way. They were imperious yesterday. And they are also undefeated today. They had that real one score ding dong against Grammar School at Leeds 26 19, but they've beaten St Paul's, beaten St Albans, beaten City of London Freemans, and had a five point victory over Marlborough College. But they are behind now. You've got to move. That. That. So Lancaster Grammar on the edge of their 22, yet to fire a shot. Four minutes of the first half gone. Just the one edge and try, the difference between the teams. Good offloading, flirting with that touchline and looking for that big ripping pass to create the space on the left-hand side. And here it is, first time to open the taps on the gas tank. Offload, good, but now isolated. Stanford sniffing around the turnover. Oh, and it's just gone forward. Brilliant attacking platform now. Really unlucky there. Great speed and strength going along the touchline. Maybe those conditions starting to come into play a little bit. Body positions at strong chance. Crouch! So, 7 0. I need your backs. Great at scrum. Coming up to five yeah, minutes. And scrummage at the same level, please, yeah. Hey. Crouch. Crouch! Bind! Set! Early. Stanford in too early. Free kick, Lancaster Grammar. Feel as though opportunities are going to be few and far between in this final, and when you get one, you're going to have to take one. Options both ways, two either side of the ruck for Lancaster Grammar. Instead, they go up the jump from what a leg pump that is, making an extra two, three, four metres, and now whipping it out to the ball players, a two on two, a fen, but no offload and a good tackle. And a penalty, and the first defensive test passed for Stamford. Definitely, and I'm really Mark impressed that. with just their line organisation. They kept the ball then, they're ready to get off the line, really good spacing. So easy to kind of follow the play and get a bit tight, but have that discipline to keep the spacing to enable you to put more line speed on. Fantastic. You talk about spacing there. Like, what are your... Oh, that's a really good kick, by the way. Do you use visual cues? How, how, does it, how does it work in terms of knowing the distance to keep? Um, it kind of depends how you defend. You, you might be looking to get inside, just inside shoulder, or maybe potentially just outside shoulder of your opposite person. The main thing is just that, not that overworking into a breakdown and out of breakdown. Can we work north and south, back and forward in, instead of chasing the ball? Edgerton, ooh, little bit of airborne ballerina. Oh. <laughs> Referee, apologising, but what he has done here now is given Stanford a really good attacking platform, scrum ball. We like to call this in GB sevens the golden thread, 15 meter, 50 meter line. Golden threads, golden opportunities. Seven Hang minutes on. gone. Crouch. Last attacking chance of the half for Stamford. Second time and last time I'm going to ask you back straight, please. Absolutely. Crouch. Bind. Set. Fed in nicely, and away we go. And they've gone for the crash ball. Good tackle made. 
Perhaps not as quick as Stamford would have liked it, but now Jack Haynes can carry. Edgerton's there. Again, exercising that little gap just in behind the ruck. Smart play by Stamford to get into the 22. Now they can cut loose. Big ball to Lachenpech. Lachenpech stops and goes. Has he grounded it? Thank you. He has not. Oh, that's a huge tackle. In touch. And a huge play right yeah. at the end of the half. And it remains Lancaster Grammar nil, Stamford School 7. Well, let's see if we can take a look at this. I think part of the shirt has gone missing. What a ball. Amazing ball. Didn't back himself. And Get here, get here, dived in. Oh, well, there's a little bit of grease on the surface yeah. now, maybe. Could have skimmed over the top. Second half incoming, it is a one-score game. Your commentary for this boys under-18 Vars final. Amy Wilson-Hardy, Joe Burns, myself, Dave Rogers. It is on a knife edge. Uh, have you familiarised yourself with the permutations just in case it finishes level at full time? We go again. Yes. I think yes, is the message, do. we go again. Stanford look fit as a butcher's dog, don't they? Lancaster don't look bad either and they've had to go through some games to get here. What a journey. An enormous amount of games, but only seven minutes left of the journey. And also Stamford getting over that defeat first up. And it is evidence that if you go down, especially in a close one, you don't drop your head, you keep on playing. And now it is up to Lancaster Grammar to try and find something. What they have found is some crossing in midfield. A little bit frustrating there as it looked like it could open up. Fellas, look to VARs, please. Very tough, that one. Really nice straightening line, but just taking out that defender. Fairly easy decision for the ref. And they're going to kick for the corner. What are your thoughts on that, Joe? Amy? On kick for the corner? Yeah. I mean, I think the set piece should be outlawed in sevens from penalties, but I know that GB women's sevens like to go for a scrum quite a lot, so that's not going to go down well with Amy. We do like a quick tap as well. Isla Norman Bell loves to quick tap. And Lisa Thompson. Um, to be fair, their Sanford set piece has been spectacular, so you can see exactly why they did it. Edgerton, that is very much on the limit of what the referee will allow. And maybe that is the big referee in the sky levelling up for them going for the corner instead of keeping the ball alive. Well, the idea is to draw in numbers, as we've discussed, isn't it, Amy? You bring in, well, Scrum's perfect example, six players taken out, eight if you include the halfbacks. So freeing up all of that space. But just for me, it's the, the time that we lose from the actual contest that that can sometimes be difficult to stomach. But big contest there and being hassled. Here go Lancaster. Well, tapping and going and some fluid hands here and a lovely ball to get it out to that right-hand edge. Stamford doing so well to block that passing channel and then bully the Lancastrian into touch. But it's come out off a white hand and then we're quickly oh. off. If that pass sticks, on. then it is on. We said we, we hoped that players wouldn't start to be a bit more conservative with the getting a bit slippier out there, and they definitely haven't, but that's the only issue. Sometimes it's a little bit too much to take. Well, we've just been handed a, uh, a team sheet for 
Lancaster Royal Grammar School, and it feels as though the team's general practitioner has taken time away from writing prescriptions to write the team sheet. So number nine might be Connor Passenger, he might be Connor Darriger, but it's not going to matter who he is because Stamford are knocking on the door. Three metres to go, full width to play with, but they've gone up the short Move. side, James Edgerton. Penalty advantage. Has earned a penalty advantage. He's the captain, he's the man who scored the opening try. There's a dummy, there's a reach. And there's a desperate scramble to defend from Move Lancaster out. Grammar. Move. The ball's presented. A crossfield kick. Taken over the shoulder, it's a great take, the momentum. He's still there, and it's a score for Lachlan Peck. Second try, ten minutes gone. The much underused kick pass. Didn't go where he wanted it to, but ultimately it ended up where it needed to be, and that is over the line, and Stamford lead 12-0. Don't underestimate how hard that was to take as well. Over his shoulder, turned, and still with a great finish. Well, there were numbers. And get the ball there as quick as you can. That's what Stanford did. And the clock continues to tick towards 11 minutes. James Edgerton. It's close, James, not close that enough. Was an ideal time for them to practice. Another look at this kick. Yeah, it was just the wrong side of the boot, wasn't it? Ideally, he wanted Lachlan running onto that, but the catch over the shoulder, as you say, underrated skill. And now Lancaster Royal Grammar with it all to do. Got some nervous parents as well watching, asking yeah. what time's left. Oh, that is going to drop right on the 10. Great restart, great take. And Stamford on the march again. That is such a huge difference maker. This is a brutal game if you can't get your hands on the ball. And Lancaster just cannot. Over the top, into space. This would seal it. Great power, great finish. Luke Schubert. Advantage Stamford. Two minutes to go. It's a three score game. How wonderful does it look when you just see that kickoff go to plan? It looks so good. And then it just does, it, give, it puts you on the front foot. Obviously, you're kind of in a 50 50 position in the, in, when you're receiving. Are you going to be attacking? Are you going to be defending? And if you can just really capitalize on that by that transition play that we mentioned so many times, you can just see Stanford had the front foot right from that kick. Well, James Edgerton. So tough for Lancaster because they've conceded two tries now without touching the ball. But the ball inside, he had options both ways. Chose Luke Joubert, who crashed over. Big, strong ball carrier. Oh, and they've gone for the same again. The chase is good again. The result better for Lancaster this time. Oh, and they've broken free. They burst free. Maybe they've run out of time. This ball needs to go down. It needs to go over the crossbar. And they need to kick back off. David Ong. Annoy how Stafford get better. Don't let him score again. OK. Right then. If they get another try that quickly from a restart, then maybe. We've seen it happen. Yeah. That's such a good take, through traffic. It's such a hard skill. These boys making it look easy, those last two kickoffs, but I promise you, that takes guts. OK, it's batted back, here we go. Next phase, they need to score. Penalty advantage. Well, penalty advantage, but they need the penalty now. 13 white. There was a hand on that from Luke Schubert, the try scorer. Here's the try scorer. For Lancaster. Our clock has ticked past 14 now, but we don't know if that's full time. Here we go, they're over. Oh, two tries in a minute. Is there time to restart? 
Great finish from short range. Let's listen into the referee. Well, this yes. is quite astonishing. How often do you see a team going three tries up, just relaxing maybe a little bit? Well, that is full time, and Stamford hang on. Two late tries made it an excellent contest, but Stamford, those 19 unanswered points, dominating the first half, dominating the first part of the second half. And the under-18 Vars is heading to Stamford, the end of a sensational contest across two days. It's the men in white who will raise the trophy. Full-time score, Lancaster Royal Grammar School 12, Stamford School 19. Testing one two, testing one two. Unite! It is time to crown an under 14 girls champion. It's Jemima English speaking school against Oakham. Oakham, black and red. Jess, blue and white. They have lit up this tournament, these two teams. But who will be leaving as the champion here at the Howden? Roslyn Park National Schools Sevens. So Jamira, English-speaking school, defeated Dubai English-speaking college in the semi-final to make sure that one of their teams would have the opportunity to win the trophy. They've beaten Rygate Grammar 38 0, Hayes 50 0, Penner Hale 45 0, and Blundells 48 0. They've conceded one try in five games, a phenomenal return at this level. And they are one win away from glory. As for Oakham, wins. Over Bowhunt School, Brinkelanog, Perrin School, Kingsbridge Community College, and Tradiga Comprehensive. But now the biggest challenge of them all. It is Oakham versus Jemima English Speaking School. Dubai versus the Midlands. Okay, that's Full that's glory. 
So Jess are going to have the first attack. And the first attack well, ends up with a scramble tackle, an excellent scramble In tackle touch. as well. Into Black. touch. Black line out. Thanks, mate. No. So Black's here. And what a start. Blue's just a little bit further on. Thank you so much. Are you in or out? Your receiver? I need, I need, I need you to be in the channel there, thank you. And you guys at 10. Well, the referee thank instructing you. exactly where she Let's needs go. the players to be at line-out time. Let's go! Right. And Oka, looking to work this ball. It is a long way out from your own 22. Cloudy skies yes. casting a little bit of darkness, but there is a little bit of pace, and what a cover tackle. Absolutely outstanding from Grace White. I know there was 80 metres to go, but that was probably a try-saver. There are some tired bodies out there and some handfuls of jersey keeping the score at nil-nil. Heroic defence from Jeff, a little knock-on at the breakdown. Knocked on by Blue, then by Red. And some brave so scramble, last-ditch defending yes, from Jeff. Jess there, Amy Wilson-Harding. The first knock 100%. On I'm really excited first to see this yeah. winger battle. Both teams have shown some excellent pace, gas going around Here's the outside mark. of teams. But I think they're oh, pretty oh, evenly matched for this one. So it's going to be some five, great one-on-ones, one -on I think. It'll be interesting to see what five. happens if Oakham can get a couple of scores. Because one thing Jess on haven't there. done all day has really been an arm wrestle, a real contest. Shown their fit and condition. What a great tackle. A hefty hit. Five. And once again, the familiar sound of those boards banging with the Jess supporters. And now it opens up in the middle. Beautifully timed ball. And a great finish. Oh, they have sighed. Jemaya English speaking school open. And Oakham take the lead after two minutes. You can kick this way if you want. Really lovely little detail there, just waiting to score as well, making the Jess defenders. Use that it's, um, not much energy post. that they've got left to really chase them down. Okay. And also give time for the kicker to get there, to stay composed. Bring the ball back. 30 seconds to take that kick once the try scored. So if you can delay it a little bit to help your teammates out, often quite nicely appreciated. Another look at that finish. Oh, the timing of the pass, superb. Oakham seven, Jess nil. Kick off straight into the bread basket. And Jess on the attack again. Savannah looks for the pass, finds the pass, feeds the speed, and Grace White brought down. It's a good second touch, though. Oh, now there's a huge open up here for Jess. But they've sought the contact, and the ball's gone to ground. Composure required. Knocked on. Oh, the ball's knocked, knocked on, on, though. Once, then twice, and three and a half minutes gone, and Oakham. Advantage over! Well, the advantage over for the knock-on. A, a big shot. defensive effort, great shot. Looking for the turnover, can't find it. And there is some pain being out. dished up here, brilliant tackling. And offloading, nobody's there, and you've got to admire the way that Oakham are trying to play, but it could cost them here, it will cost them. Under the post they go. Brilliant response. Give them space. And Savannah scores for Jess. Conversion. He's put in some hard graft, yes. hasn't she, this week? This week, this weekend, I'm talking as if I'm... This week, these two days. Oh, the flag stay down. <laughs> That's missed to the right of the post. How important could that be from under the sticks? But yes, Savannah, she just offers a different dynamic, doesn't she? There's loads of lightning quick pace, but she just straightens things up, adds a certain air of composure to all of her attacking and defending. Shows as well mentioned that balance of teams, having those power runners, having the speed, having the people with footwork. I know they didn't capitalise on it initially, but her Still break side, in the first side. just a little bit earlier created such a huge overlap from sucking defenders in. Well, that's not, not gone 10. 10. So errors costing Jess. <laughs> oh, 
Can want to play quickly, but this one needs to go from the halfway line. Oh, oh my goodness. Savannah has absolutely bent her in half. What a tackle. And we've spoken about this throughout the day, but as soon as the players seek contact, their awareness to look up and see if an offload is on. And Savannah away again. Jess attacking. Backwards. Referee backwards. says backwards. Jess can play on. And Debbie throws it. It's brilliant. Sending defenders to the shops. And Jess lead for the first time. Charlie Battiston. I love the little celebrations as well. Smiles on faces. Hugs all round. It's not over this game yet, but that certainly would have helped give the momentum back to Jess. All right, into the last minute of the first half. Great game, great contest. No conversions yet for Jess. Could that be costly in a tight game? What about this cover tackle? Absolutely brilliant. Holly Flint hanging in there. Fair sub. And then it was a little scrappy. I think some Oaken defenders quite tired. Okay, let's go, Blue. Stay on side, stay on side. Let's go now. No. And matching coordinated scrum caps as well. Yeah, huge fan, huge fan. That kickoff into space oh. just drifts out. Space around the 22. Blue here. So impressed from Thank the work you. rate from these girls. They're, they're jogging here. to every set Thank piece. You. They're getting back. They're getting set aligned. Down. Blue, blue in the channel in the five meter. Thank you. Right in the middle. In the middle of the five meter. In the middle, she needs to be in the middle. Jessica Hale. Yeah, that was not straight. That went straight to the player. Blue, what do you want? Yeah, what do you want? No, no. Line it's an interesting one, this. So it's an uncontested I line know. out. We've seen it a few times. You've still got to, you're still straight. expected to throw to it straight. through the channel, despite it being uncontested. But it's a strange one, but rules are rules. Time's up, so this is our last play. Yeah, you're on the channel. Ten, ten, ten metres, ten metres. Keep going, thank you. That's good. That's yes, perfect. do throw it straight. So we'll have an attacking opportunity to close out the half. Will that mistake for Oakham end up being costly? Back oh, the pass back just back. behind. Yep, you got it. Leave her, no, leave her. Oh, and turned over. Maybe Oakham not done yet this half. How is this for a turn of pace? Oh, rapid. And Oakham. We'll take the lead for the second time, three times. That lead has changed hands. And Holly Flint. You can kick it this eight way. Eight minutes you want. into a seven minute half, a long busting effort. 12 10, maybe 14 10. Samantha Monroe is going to be trusted with the conversion. And what a brilliant half of Cup Final Rugby. You know, someone's quick when they look that effortless running, right? <laughs> like our Gracie Crompton. <laughs> Half time, game on. Jess 10, Oakham 12. Make them suffer, make them wonder what they're going to do if you get too small down. Okay? They've 
not been in that position. We don't have to Here we go then. One of the games of the day. Fitting that it's the under 14 girls final. And this Oakham team. Well, they are yeah? giving on, as good as they've got here. <laughs> they've taken the lead. They've conceded the lead and they've retaken the lead. And there's just one conversion in it. And interestingly, Jess have scored both of their tries under the post, but not been able to convert either. But both teams have shown, Amy, that they can score from anywhere on the pitch. There are so many exciting young players in both black and blue. Here's one of them, Savannah. Oh, it's floating off to the ball. Here we go, Jess back ahead. Oh, my goodness, what a finish. It was only a matter of time before she scored again. Number 30 in her scrum cap. It's been scoring tries for fun out there. Such a threat on the ball. Salam. Wherever you An are. An absolute rocket. And one of the things that it's really hard to, to teach or train or coach is attacking that ball at pace. And she just naturally timed that so well. And especially in those younger age groups. I think it's a thing of the past seeing young girls who've just started playing stopping when they get the ball now all of these players and look they look threatening on the ball you can see everyone as soon as they get it they're running forward it's just such a huge progression play, play red. well they could have had a free kick there okay instead they've played it and they've knocked it on and that's just a, just a little that's bit right. of big game experience that is and i've never seen i haven't seen a knock on celebrated like that since ben earl in the six nations <laughs> mark Tough one, so I'm not, not sure how I feel about celebrate those unforced errors, but ladies, maybe space. Oh, I, think the, the, on the set. I liked yeah. that she played oh. it. Sorry, I'll come at the, the kickoff. And um, bind on the hooker, you got her. Oh. Hey, Go. they've come a long way, Five. they've flown all the way from <laughs> Dubai. So if they want to celebrate, they can celebrate. It's great to have them here. That's a big <laughs> scrum from play on, Oakham, play on, play on, play but on. Jess leading 15 12 and looking to feed Salam out there again. Well, in fact, that's Grace White. And the offload, good. Look at them just trying to get the ball away from the contact zone all the time. Where's the space? How can we find it? In fact, it is Salam over here on the left-hand side, wearing 30. One try in the second half already. She's going to back herself around the outside again. She's going to get away again. No. Talent. 20 points to 12. And that's a classy finish as well, slamming the ball down. And that's definitely something to celebrate about. Rightly so. You can see this is a thing with these, these teams in the final now. You you take away one threat. I think Oakham have done really seconds. well to deal with Savannah in this half. They've, they've closed her down quite early, but that just opens up the doors for somebody else. And in this case, it's the speedster. Well, Oakham running out of time. They've done so incredibly well in this competition. Just three players in their team with a lot of previous rugby experience and everyone else hanging in there. How amazing is that? Imagine. Oh, awesome. <laughs> First tournament, you're reaching a final. First tournament, you're reaching a final and you've got a Great Britain Olympian commentating on your game. It's not half bad, you know. All things. <laughs> okay, Oakham need two scores. They're eight points down. They've got three minutes. There's the free kick. And we are underway. Oh, Savannah, the enforcer, in the middle. Oh, it's just gone forward. And Oakham just rushing where they looked a little bit more composed in the first half. Oh, but Jess, fluid. Excellent tackle, but the offload, top draw, and that one over the top. How about it? Into the 22 we go. Lovely spin pass. Big fend. Oh, try saving tackle. And they are try saving tackles because there was two out there for Jess. But the danger, not done yet. Advantage. 
tackling without the ball. Advantage. A couple of players with their legs tangled up and they stayed down. Still got advantage. Advantage here for Jess. Another score would surely be enough to see the trophy going back to Dubai. This defence is incredible as well. So gutsy from Oakham. Hanging by a thread, but still hanging. But the pass is good. Oh, oh, what a tackle. Outstanding. And stolen as well. Oh, this is unbelievable. So gutsy from Oakham. And all of a sudden, the board banging stops as Oakham start to think about going the length. If they get a try here. Oh, here we go. The afterburners are hit. And Oakham will go the distance. The chase is coming on. The Travelator is hit. But Lucy Carr is going to score one of this tournament's great individual tries. It's 20 points to 17. There is time on the clock. And this one's going the distance. There is definitely still time. Right, Samantha, chop, chop. We need to get on with this. This, this kick is effectively irrelevant. One minute to go. One minute to go, a one-point game, oh. it's 2019. What a final. You can't ask for more in a final, can you? You can't ask for more for a final, you can't ask for more for these two teams. You cannot ask for more. That, that try was from the grittiest <laughs> defensive effort I have seen today, I think. They would not stop working for each other. Well, this is big for Jess now. A minute is a long time in sevens, and Savannah and a carry like this is exactly what you need. The offload, the wherewithal, the more oh, it's defense. Oh, it looked forward, it's it is forward. Oh no, she thinks she's got it. She's going to come all the way back. Well, the referee is going to have to stop the clock here, and this is the difference between these finals and the early rounds because we've got ARs here, mm -hmm. and that one was called in by the assistant referee. It's a big call. I mean, it was forward, we can see, because it was right on the line, look, and somebody uh, very conveniently put the halfway yeah, line there so we can say. see. Scrum. Scrum. God, yeah, this is clutch seconds. time. I stop time. And again, like, you learn from these experiences, you're one point down, you're one point up. How can you either get the ball back or score that winning try? It's all or nothing. Guys, come to me. For Jamaira English speaking school of come Dubai, me, for Oakham School of Step England. The substitutions are made. They've taken off Lucy Carr, the try the scorer. They've done the subs now. We've got seven. Okay, time back on. Here we go. And this is the last chance. No, no. Oh, free oh. kick chess! And maybe Oakham's opportunity has disappeared. They've defended with everything, Oakham. Now they need to defend and they need to turn this ball over. Oh, they've missed touch with the kick. But then the tackle wins it for Jamaira. English speaking school. A phenomenal final. And worthy winners. The trophy is going to Dubai. Oakham gave it everything. They emptied the tank. But that special group in blue have taken it all the way and won it by the narrowest of margins. The full-time score, Jamaira English speaking school 20, Oakham school 19, and Amy Wilson-Hardy. Two brilliant teams, a credit to themselves, their schools and this tournament. 100%. I kind of I feel emotional watching this because I can feel both sides of this final result. You can see some really sad faces, but I hope and I know they will hold their heads high because that was an absolutely fabulous final. Both teams deserve to be there and you could see they all gave it absolutely everything today. Well, some of the girls finals have been the best games we've seen in this tournament for many years. A lovely moment as Oakham pass through the Jess Tunnel and the favour will be returned. But Jess, Jamaira English speaking school, are the under-13s Girls' Cup champions.
Dauncey's versus Millfield School. Two great. Two great rugby teams, two great rugby schools. As Millfield take the knee, we've seen it so many times over the years. And another epic incoming. Welcome everyone, if you're just joining us, where have you been? It is the under-18 bowl final. Another chance at glory. Dauncey's in the black. Millfield in the hoops. Millfield getting us underway. Dauncey's. Well, that one scooped back. But forward off a black hand. So straight away an opportunity for Millfield. The advantage doesn't last long. But in a final like this, just having the ball in hand is advantage ball, in and of itself. Ball out. And already this feels like it's going to be competitive. Definitely. Just from initial thoughts, I love watching how Millfield just take their time on the ball. They look like they've got all the time in the world. That change of pace, so hard to defend. Well, that change of pace, phenomenal! Oh my goodness me, what an attack! Tuck to take me. them five and five and open up Dauncey's like a tin can. Phenomenal start, Millfield five, Dauncey's nil. Well, that diagonal run, cross field. Not the soft kicker. So direct. So hard to defend when someone's going at that pace across the pitch. Who, who, no one wants to kind of bite out of line but then if you don't bite and take them down you can see what destruction can be caused excellent kick 7-0 add the extras to that yeah it's a, it's a strange angle to defend isn't it because you talked about taking your time then the change of pace I mean that change of pace was outstanding took what three four defenders out and from then on you're always chasing no time to reset it is when you get those speedsters running across you're worried about Making that dog leg. Well, that's not going to go 10. But we've already seen from that that they are going to be competitive at every restart. Now it's Millfield's turn to defend. Dauncey's turn to Dog's attack. Tight. Advantage for the high Dog tackle. Held. I must say, the ref comms over these tournaments have been so clear. Yeah. That's a good fend. What you might not have seen in the background there is one of the teams giving the ice cream van a bump start because his batteries run out. <laughs> so Dauncey's attacking up this right-hand side. Nice little stop and go, trying to fix the man, but the pass isn't good. It's out, it's attached, and great news. The ice cream van's up and running again. Thank you. Ah! I'm sure they'll do a roaring trade later in the week when the sun's cracking the flags. Correctly to the Millfield, Touch. ball in hand, so they've survived their first Find. defensive Set. test of this ball final. Ball. That's a solid scrum, that's not going anywhere. That's the platform you want. Oh, again, opt in for the diagonal, but this time Dauncey's with a much more solid tackle. Just look dangerous, don't they? There's a change of pace, and now the gas man is on the ball. Flips that one out the back door, and Millfield with numbers on. Oh, just a scrum advantage. And perhaps Dauncey's a little bit lucky there because there wasn't an attempt to catch that ball. The advantage is over, but Millfield look so incredibly up for this, and they've opened Dauncey's up again. There's a last-ditch defender to force them a little wider. But as we approach four minutes, second score, 12-0. And they look so energised. They really do, and they're doing so well at just really stretching from side to side, keeping the ball alive, sucking the, like, 
three or four defenders in a smaller space and then shipping the ball to a new space. He's brought, his, he's brought his kicking boots as well. Yeah, lovely pass and just can't afford to miss tackles. <coughs> no, it's a cruel world. We mentioned it a few times today. So unforgiving. Test these skills and when the fatigue kicks in as well, every skill under such high fatigue, can you still, still execute? And everything in your body hurts. But that's a great take from the kickoff. Yeah, not as competitive this time by the Millfield boys. But they do manage to slow the ball down, and that's a real good joust for it at the breakdown, too. Dauncey's looking for a try to give themselves an opportunity. Millfield drift across, but a couple might have overcommitted. But then the pass is overcommitted. It's picked off. The kick into space is precise. Will it be gathered? Yes, it will! What a score! The vision, the execution, and Millfield are large and in charge of the final. It's just so, so good to yes, watch. Boys. The fact that you can be running at that pace, to have that vision, to be able to kick that so accurately. Obviously, the bounce of the rugby ball is pretty cool, and that one was perfect, nine, but nine. still, incredible, incredible nine, skill. Nine. Oh, sometimes when it's dropped on the toe, it is all or nothing, isn't it? You're either scoring or you're not getting it back. But on days like today, when the rugby gods are shining and smiling on you, you create tries like that. And Dauncey's now staring down the barrel. Millfield. And the interception coming here. And as soon as it did, it looked like curtains. And... When he put the brakes on there, I thought, oh, what are you doing? But that is a beautifully executed kick. It's perfect. And, yeah, testament to his defence as well. Like, it's, it's tough. Like, you've got to keep high. If there's no ruck formed, then he's got every right to be in that, that channel. He's not offside. He's just done really well. And now, on the ascendancy, straight away, receiving that kickoff. Yeah, and Harrison Edwards on the wing. Oh, he's got the confidence to go around the outside. Edwards! Oh, brought down so well by Jamie Arch. And a little toe on the touchline. They look like they can score every time they get their hands on the ball, Millfield, don't they? There's threats everywhere, and that's when it gets tough. If you we say if there's, if there's a star player in a team, you can kind of close them down. If there's threats from everywhere, what, where do you start? You've just got to... Get possession really and keep the ball. Don't let them have Let's it. Well, I've just been presented with the team sheets, which is great for the second half. However, wearing number 11 is Rory WB, W hyphen B. So, what do we do, Amy? Do we go with WB? Do we just call him Rory or do we guess what the W and the B stand for? Yeah, yeah, one's in a pink scrum cap. At least there's, yeah, clarity on that. Give it a guess. We've got two 15s as well, but... It's nearly like WH. Yes, it is, it is. <laughs> Maybe that's what he can be. Right, the clock well past seven. Dauncey's need to keep playing. And they need to get a try before half-time. Released once, then twice, and another five, ten metres stolen. Very cleverly done, that's forward. Oh, unlucky. That was great vision again. We've seen quite a few of those passes. I think a lot of the teams are trying to defend nice and high on the edge, but it's one way to pick it off. Well, the right idea, but the execution not quite there. And half-time, Millfield completely in control. Three tries, all converted. They lead 21-0.
Second half then, Dauncey's need a score. This Vars Bowl final. I'm reliably informed that you only get one, not a Vars and a bowl, if you win it. But Dauncey's oh, winning that ball back, but it not going 10. Oh, it was close. Sometimes, I mean, I don't envy being a touch judge or a referee when AR should be saying now. Yes, the ARs doing a great job. It's great to have them. A little ball inside. Oh, it's a lovely line as well. Harry bunting, bunting, skipping away, bunting. Scoring the try that surely buries Dauncey's. Also best friends with Jonah. Very nice. Sure, they share a beautiful friendship. Jonah is 11 pink crumbs from Cup. Those who are interested. 28 <laughs> nil. And this trophy is going to Millfield, isn't it? You feel it's going that way. Unfortunately, Dauncey just can't, they can't get on the ball, can they? They're just defending, defending, defending and can't score tries when you're doing that, unfortunately. Well, you must have had games like this in your career where you just feel like you cannot get your hands on the ball. Unfortunately, too many, really. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good kickoff, but it is finally with Dauncey's now, which has not really been able to express themselves ball in hand, perhaps now is the time. Henry Taylor. Oh, that one's been left behind as well. Jack Watton, Not captain of the team. Sometimes when you're a little bit tense, when you're trying to force it, things just don't stick the way you want them to. And they will be thinking that. They'll be thinking, we have to score now, we have to score now. But actually, by thinking like that, although they do have to score now, it doesn't really help you. So it's that balance. It's actually just setting up the phases. Can someone just carry hard, quick breakdown, play away, get the confidence by breaking them down in a different way? There's a knock on at the base. But all the while the clock ticks, they now need four scores in just over four minutes. And that's without something coming back the other way, which with this Millfield team, it invariably does. Of course, the team, the Millfield team with the blue stripe, the first seven, they'll be back in the under-18 boys cup. Here we go. No, Jonah is on the field now with his pink scrum cup. Well, welcome, Jonah. Find. Great news, your best pal scored a meat pie. Ball's gone. Oh. Rotten luck. Rotten luck for Dauncey's. Again, just eating away at that clock. That's another reason you might take the scrum at a penalty, although our best Crunch. mate here isn't here to defend Find. his no set piece rule. <laughs> he loves free flow in Jouet. Oh, that is a lovely little goosey. Oh, please. This is absolutely sensational rugby. Great strength, great speed, great offload. And Jonah Miller, Jonah Miller can't get the offload away the first time. He does the second time. Millfield searching for try number five. Miller on the short ball. A handful of shirts snaps back his way. That high or not? Hold up. But held up over the line. Referee checking for a high tackle. If it was, it may well have been a penalty try. Scrum. Green ball. Just earlier, there was a hold up and they took a 22 drop out. Interesting call. But it is, in fact, it's not the same as a 15s game. It is, in fact, a still a five metre scrum. The attacking side. Maybe I missed something. Maybe it was for something else. Goal line dropouts Crash. in sevens would be Five. ludicrous. <laughs> Absolutely ludicrous. Oh, there's a rogue foot on that, so Dauncey's can get their hands on it. 
And they're going to try and run it from inside their own half. There is so much gas still left in the tank of these players. Phenomenal acceleration. But Millfield defending. As if they had a one-score lead, not a four-score lead. They'd love to win this final to nil, but Dawn sees still playing out of the back door. Nice ball to Jack Wharton. Wharton oh, stays in field and he gets it away to Archie Reeve. Archie Reeve gets a consolation try for Dawnsey's school. Love it. You just saw when they did keep the ball. Like they're, they're in the final for a reason. And don't forget that. And it is. They've just been absolutely starved of possession. But showing when they do keep the ball for a few phases what they're capable of. Well, they want to play through to the end and they actually want to get on with it because if we play for much longer, then we're going to have to get some car headlights and some iPhone torches out because the light conditions have dropped here when he's back, he on pitch RE1. This is the final game of the day. All the other pitches empty now and all concentration on this one. Still a minute and a half to go. Are there more tries? Is there a little bit more to celebrate? I'll let you know when time's up, OK? I don't think this game's finished yet. I think we're going to see another score. Yeah. Well, well, I hope we do. Oh, we've had a good day's rugby today. Just a reminder that the presentations are coming up. Burnsy's there, ready to award all the trophies to the winning teams and find out who the player of the tournament are. Across the 14s and the 18s today. And then there will be the debrief show. Angus Savage is going to be hosting that live. So stick with us as we pick the bones out of the day and I've no doubt we'll be sp spending plenty of time waxing lyrical about this Millfield team. Oh, that is serious acceleration. Roman Naylor, right foot, left foot, doesn't matter. What a try by Roman Naylor. Absolutely great football skills there again. He makes it look very easy there using both of his feet, but also the composure to just think it slightly ahead of him, not absolutely hack it while he's running at full pelt and finishing it off. Socks around the ankles, he must be good. Is that what, where I'm going wrong? I Is think so. I yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Embrace it next time. Yeah. Well, you don't see as much these days as a sevens player in ankle socks. Now that's when you know you mean business. A flawless final from Millfield to end a brilliant and brutal two days of Rugby Sevens at the Howden Roslin Park National School Sevens. Millfield have won this tournament and they've won it in style. Perhaps their best performance of the lot against the spirited Dauncey's team. 35-5 the full-time score. And the under-18 boys, Vars Bowl champions are Millfield. And Amy, take nothing away from this Millfield team, but one of those games for Dauncey's, they just couldn't get their hands on the ball, and it is a, a brutal and unforgiving sport when that's the case. Definitely, but that is testament to Millfield and their defence as well, contesting everything, and they were just so clinical when it really mattered, the business end. It's, they, may, they did make it look easy, but that's, don't underestimate the hard work that that takes. Well, what about some of the rugby that this young team played at the end of two days? I mean, eight, nine games, phenomenal effort. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Millfield. That is the best they were... I've ever seen from a Millfield service hall. From losing two first games in our, in our group stage and then coming back. Every team, by that margin, is incredible. Well, just listening to that chat at the end. Phenomenal show of character, phenomenal show of quality. And an under-18 Vars Bowl trophy to celebrate. Congratulations, Millfield.
go work. Ladies and gentlemen, the global audience of the stream, welcome to the presentation of the boys under 18 Vars Bowl. Now, at the most prestigious, the biggest, the best school sevens competition on the planet, nearly 15,000 take part across the week, but very, very few who take to the blades of grass get to stand on this stage. To get to any final is a great prestige. And I'm sure you'll agree, both these sides put on a show on their quest to the final and also in competing for that bowl final. So if you could show your appreciation, please, for both our finalists, Millfield and Dauncey. It's a gruelling programme to get to a final and none more so than here at the Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens. It takes 10 matches to get to those big games and while they may not have all been victories, there is silverware or glassware on the line in this case. Dauncey's, they came and they fought all the way to the final. They came up against stern opposition, but without them, we wouldn't have been treated to the spectacle that we just enjoyed. They are our runners up of 2024. Please put your hands together for Dauncey School. One more time, please, for your bowl runners up, Dorsey's. So worthy runners up, I'm sure you'll agree, and even worthier champions who we're about to anoint. Now, every side comes here. They want to take home the Vars. However, as stiff as the competition is, getting to any final, as I said, is a huge moment. And when there's glassware on the line, you have to come to the fore. You have 
to bring your very best rugby and some famous colours that we've seen across the UK Sevens landscape in many years gone by are taking to the winner's plinth once again. I give to you your under 18s, Vars Bowl Champions, Millfield School. <laughs> And the bowl to be presented by Rossin Parks, head of community, Greg Sendall, and delivered to our bowl champions of 2024, Millfield School. The bowl awarded and two great cup champions anointed. The crowns sitting on the heads of just the first international winners in the history of this great tournament. And of course, the under 18 Vars champions, all to unpick, all to explore with our Howden Rossin Park National School Sevens post day two review. Brilliant, mate. Cheers. Welcome back. The review show, day two of the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. Joe Burns, you've hot footed it from presentation duty to come and chat to me. What a day. Tell, tell me all about it. Almost as out of breath as the cup finalists who put on an absolute show for us today. Um, yeah, what a day. I, you know, day one was awesome but I really felt from the atmosphere here and also the rugby play that today was the day that the tournament truly came a, uh, alive. Some absolute nerve shredders out here on the pitch, some huge finals. I mean, once again, we're talking about a girls final, that under 14s one, you got to call it D-Rod. I was over there watching it from the dead ball area and incredible from Oakham. I feel like a part of me was willing just to get there and win it just for that accolade of being the first ever international school and we're talking girls boys any age group ever 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 non-uk shores to win a trophy they went about it the hard way it was heart in mouth stuff and then you throw in the under 18 bars yeah, it's been breathless but it's been brilliant and, oh, sorry i was just going to go on to that i was really excited uh, when i saw the semi-final draw and there were two schools from dubai two teams from dubai who were going to play against each other so we knew we were going to have one in that girls final just uh, you were talking about Oakham there heartbreak for them phenomenal talent only three players coming into this tournament had had experience playing rugby at any kind of level let alone this level I thought they acquitted themselves so well but as you say once again we're talking about a girls final a one pointer here on RE1 unbelievable and, and Jess have been amazing for the last couple of years when they've come over they've got teams in the age groups they've got boys and girls the parents come over great as well su great support over 
banging the boards over there. It sounds like one yeah. of the European cycle races where they're ringing cowbells and all kinds of phenomenal support. It's so, so good to have them here. And, you know, they, they're going home with a trophy. They're going to be so proud of that, and rightly so. I love that, though. I, I say bring it on. Yeah. I, I love that noisy support. I love getting numbers down and the advertising hoardings. They're only here for one year. Only here for one tournament, so smash them to pieces. <laughs> that might go down badly with the tournament director. <laughs> but... Those are the vibes we hear. We get it from Cranley on the last day mm. when it comes to the under 18. But they really like raised the tempo of the final and the semi final. And yeah, I think huge congratulations to Jess and, uh, and, and just incredible players there as well. Andy Higgins behind camera is, is literally shaking at the thought of the budget being splashed on, on, <laughs> right on broken me. sponsorship boards. <laughs> um, listen, the girls absolutely fantastic. We've got to talk quickly about the boys before we've got to let you go, Bernsey. Stanford. Lancaster RGS in that final what an epic game of rugby that was I spoke to Stanford right at the beginning of the day and classic Dave Lavenshire there uh, their their head of rugby game oh we've got a lot of injuries I'm not sure I'm not sure how we're gonna do all the way to the final they only go and win it never trust the words of a DOR never. before a, t a competition none of them will commit it's almost like Angus when it comes to picking winners <laughs> unbelievable I, I, the I only one out of the three remember, of us I don't do remember it. Stanford dropping from your lips at any stage I never said I was right about things gave you ample opportunity <laughs> no look I, I thought I thought they played a great brand I thought like quite an economic brand yeah. would, would that be fair to yeah. say don't think they made many mistakes and they showed a lot of character and a lot of control and a lot of maturity and a lot of wins like you look at the margins they weren't running around hammering people the whole time when it got to the business end of the tournament they they just went about it and they and they closed that out they, they got the job done we, we alluded to that in an earlier game actually because we were lucky enough to see them a couple of times on re1 they were marshaled around nicely by edgerton the captain and he seemed to be in control of everything whether it was chaotic and he was a cool head or whether they won a penalty or a free kick he was at the heart of all the decision making and we saw some fireworks in in that under 18s competition throughout and and as you rightly said they weren't necessarily the ones who were lighting the fuse but they were certainly there to extinguish some of the flames that were coming from elsewhere and deserved winners um we touched on it on the stream i don't know if we've mentioned it on the review or the preview show review preview review preview something, uh, like, something that. like that something like that um the next step, the evolution of the Rosslyn Park National School Sevens is the Rosslyn Park Uni Sevens, mm. where we're going to be bringing the top teams in the land to the Rock, the home of Rosslyn Park Rugby Club. And it's going to be a one day and night competition held on the 7th of June. And it's one that we want to see a lot of the lower sick, a lot of the youngsters who are here competing at the tournament come along to during the day because they get to see these top teams. And it's the next step in their rugby evolution, their educational journey. I mean, we haven't run this past any of the teams, but one thing we have been banding about is a Vars V Cup winner showdown yeah what do you reckon the showdown a, you, a unification bout of the ross and park national school sevens and you know if stamford are keen we'd, lo we'd love them to be there Look, well, i'll tell you see... what if their injury list gets better they'll be they'll be flying but you, you've seen more you've seen more schoolboy rugby than than anyone over the last decade how amazing would that be we don't get the chance to do it but there is a date in the diary there is a venue booked over the road there's it is a, the 7th slot, of june there's a slot in the schedule i did it the other day yeah. there was a slot for the vars v cup I think the best way to ascertain whether they'd be interested, maybe a little poll on Next Gen 15. A little mm. poll. Here we go. Well, Who's got appetite? Get in touch with us and we'll get it flying. Listen, speaking of The Rock, there was something really special going on at The Rock a couple of weeks back, which was the Ready for Rosslyn event. We're going to see a little bit about that in just a couple of seconds. We're also going to hear from Amy Wilson-Hardy. But before we do, we're going to say a quick goodbye to Joe Burns. He's put a stellar effort in. He's got dad duties now, so it's a busy day for him. And we're going to hear a little bit about UR7s, the work they've been doing, and the Ready for Rosslyn events. Have you all over there? Mate, my, my miss has got to go. We are here at the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens. We come to the UR Sevens tent, which is, uh, you were right next to us last year and you uh, we blew away, but you guys managed to keep it steady. I don't know what your secrets are, but somehow somehow you do it. But UR Sevens, we've got, we've got Amy alongside, we've got Dom as well. Tell me a little bit about UR Sevens and what you guys do. Yeah, for sure. I guess so. Uh 
first and foremost, we run a National Sevens Academy, uh, and it's all about the experience for the kids. So 14 to 18, boys and girls all around the UK, moving into Wales and Scotland, which is really exciting. And it's really about giving people a unique experience through Sevens, the game we all love, uh, across the year. It's awesome. And, and Amy, you've done loads and loads of work with UR7s. We've done so much coaching with them. Uh, tell me a little bit about what those experiences are like, particularly the, uh, the UR7s Academy North versus South Festival at Broad Street, which is always so much fun. Definitely. It's a huge event and that added rivalry always um, makes it a little bit extra spicy. So that's always great to see. But for me, I think it's just like it's been amazing giving players not just the opportunity with the coaching, but actually with a day like the regional festival but also in terms of our residential camps in the summer like it gives a, a taste of the whole package kind of what it looks like in terms of we give snc support nutrition support and have like mental programs so that they can actually be really nurtured and looked after because so many times you see kids go to a camp and then they're forgotten about but this is very much like a whole year thing it's not just the coaching it's about everything outside as well and i think that is what makes it so unique and also you can see how proud the kids are to be part of it. I've been walking around seeing so many UR7s hats, little bits of stash here and there. Obviously everyone loves a bit of stash, but they're wearing that with pride alongside their um, kind of school and club colours. So that's great to see too. That's so we've just seen Amy on screen and now we've got Amy on screen again here. Um, Amy, tell me a little bit about your day, your first time at the uh, Haldon Ross in Park National School 7 since playing in it. Um, how's it been? I've had the most amazing day and I'm so pleasantly surprised. Like I know the game is constantly evolving, but so impressed, especially by the under 14 side. Seeing that under 14's final just now, I had a smile on my face the whole time. It was such a display of talent and so, so good for the future of rugby. It really was. I mean, we, we've just been chatting about it, haven't we, Dave? That the quality of rugby on show, and we talked about this yesterday as well, the enthusiasm and, and, and kind of joy in it as well, which has been outstanding. I don't know if it's natural ability, or I don't know if it's coach, and this might be something you can shed a little bit more light on, Amy. So I know we spoke about it a lot during comms, but there ability to, to do things that a few years ago young girls and sometimes young boys weren't doing so when you get contact instead of panicking they're all looking around they're thinking who can I offload to where can I find some space how can I keep this ball alive how can we make something happen and then when you speak to players and coaches and parents and you find out how long some of these these players have been playing the fact that they're here and they're enjoying their rugby and they're making stories they're making memories and they're entertaining me as someone who watches far too much rugby across the year <laughs> and you somebody who plays at the very highest level internationally the fact that they can entertain us and impress us and impress us not just emotionally thinking oh you know great isn't it great that they're having a go but us thinking well they are they are doing things that are evolving the women's game of rugby that, that just make us have so much faith in the fact that it's moving in the right direction it's going to continue to improve and it's in such safe hands that's that's my takeaway from today yeah and it, it's it's been exactly that kind of kind of a day and you got to see up, up close and personal some of the girls you were over in the in the howden tent talking to actually the team that ended up winning the fair play award taunton taunton schools under 14s but the enthusiasm from those girls in that group and you know we i think that's probably true across the board it's something to behold Definitely, and I know we mentioned it to the girls there, as long as you're enjoying it and you're having fun, that's the main thing. We've said a lot about enjoyment today, but it, it's so true, and you can see that in abundance, smiles on faces, celebrating every single little win, whether it be a try-saving tackle or a, or a score. But I just think, like you said, is it what is it that's pushing the game forward, which is so exciting? I'm not, I'm not too sure whether it. I think it's a combination, probably, of all of it. It's, the, it's coaches that are putting time in. Some of these teachers and coaches here have been fantastic. You can, the enthusiasm is infectious from them and it's passed on to the teams. But also, I think there is, it's a new generation of, of players coming through that are athletes and, and just like a so much larger pool of players. So you see the standard naturally going up. And I think it's just so fabulous to see it. It does make the future of rugby feel bright with what is kind of quite a scary time in the rugby world in so many ways this is a really refreshing kind of break from all of the drama going on outside to just see that genuine enjoyment and having fun playing do you know it's really interesting to hear you say that because even though i know that you watch all of the stuff we do you may or may not have watched the live show we did yesterday but we described it as a very similar thing didn't we those people who feel a little bit downtrodden and a little bit dogged by rugby maybe i don't know they support one of the professional clubs that went under or maybe they're they're fed up of wales being terrible 
terrible or only recently they've fallen back in love with the England men's team who've started playing good rugby again. If you came and spent an hour here or a day here or a week here and saw the enthusiasm, saw the volume of, of young people people young boys young girls who, who are playing and enjoying and evolving and spending time with their friends and playing to the best of their ability and, and making memories it it recharges your rugby batteries a little bit and and i i hope it is as as worthwhile for the, the players who get to do it on this beautiful expanse here as, as, as the light falls on day two um it's yeah it, it's absolutely wonderful and to hear you enthused about it the same way we do somebody who is playing at, at the very top level who has achieved so much and will continue to achieve for, for however long you decide to um, sort of sort of just, just backs it up even further. Everyone who comes to this place and experiences it falls in love with it and that's because the players who are out here just give so much. They certainly do. There's a group of boys I spoke to earlier come all the way down from Birkenhead at St Anselm's College. Under 14's boys they'd had a six and a half hour journey. They're going to tell you all about it in just a second. They battled through the elements but they had a cracking day. It's under 14 day at the Howden Roslin Park National School. I'm joined by a whole bunch of them from St Anselm's College. I believe some of them are called Charlie. Um, lads, tell me about, you're called Jensen, don't worry, I know that. Uh, tell me about your day so far. Uh, been very good. We drew 19-19, but we've only played one game, so. Hey, that's pretty good going. That's, that's not a bad start, trust me. A lot, a lot of teams have, have, have found life a bit tougher. Um, obviously, it's a bit, a bit of a trip down from Birkenhead. How long did it take you to get here? Like six hours. Six hours, especially in not a very good minibus. What's wrong with the minibus, Jensen? Uh, it's a bit run down, to say the least. Uh, it's got about five old banana peels in it. <laughs> so, so what we're saying is we need to crowdfund for another for another St. An St. Anselm's uh, minibus. And uh, you guys um, looking forward to the rest of the day? Tell me, tell me what you what you're feeling about what's coming up. Yeah, I'm excited. It's it's a nice environment here. <laughs> Shut up. It's a, it's a nice environment here. Well, that's absolutely right. Listen, Charlie, Charlie, George over there. Oh, hello. We've got, we got some trespassers on the line. Um, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, we're going to have you uh, featured all over the review show at the end of the day. So get yourself stuck in. But uh, final word to, to mum or anyone out there? You stink. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Mum, you're, you're much appreciated. Trust me. There's an Anne Tom's College boys. They're enjoying themselves today. Well, it's a revolving cast of characters here. Dave's popped off behind uh, behind the camera. I've got Wilf Kemzer alongside me. Tell me about the day, Wilf. It's been a great day. It's been the quality of rugby increases massively. No disrespect to anyone who left on day one, but when you uh, shut the door on that VARS competition and you, you ring it off, there's there are no teams that haven't won four games on the bounce. So the quality shoots up and also the under 14 girls competition as well as the under 14 boys cup is is great as well the quality of that competition has increased year on year as well as you saw in probably the best final that Rosslyn park has seen for a long while and that was really impressive to see i think the quality on show is great and i'm sure that has nothing to do with the lack of torrential rain from last year i'm sure it's all completely performance based but uh, whatever it is it's uh, yeah the quality on re2 has never been higher Bit of sunshine always helps. Although Amy, that that hat stayed on resolutely all day. It's it's it might be sunny, but it's been a little bit chilly, and it's getting colder now. So we're going to rattle through this uh, this live show as best as possible. But we're going to have a little a little chat about uh, with a referee in a minute. But I just wanted to get your take, Amy, on uh, I suppose the importance of referees because we've got about a million here this week, and obviously you know you've experienced some of the best referees in the world, but. The job they do here in terms of facilitating the game is just absolutely vital. Yeah, I mean, it's a cliche, isn't it? But the game wouldn't happen without them. And I think you really see the hard graft um, of them when you're kind of in this kind of tournament structure because you see uh, referees going back to back games. You hear them on the ref mic. They're blowing, but they're having to keep up with this play. And some of these these kids are quick, right? <laughs> so they're doing repeated sprints, doing it. But I think um, I commented uh, just a second ago about how clear the comms have been. And I think that's so vital. And especially at this level, by having clear communication to the players, it's just going to help their development as well, and especially with the under-14s, understanding why there's a decision being made, understanding what they need to do next time. And actually, that's huge in the growth of the game as well, which sometimes goes a bit underlooked. It certainly does, but we're going to hear from one who has been having a whale of a time. He's travelled all the way down from Manchester and he's been having an absolute hoot. 
Well, of course, the referees are an incredibly important part of the event here at the Howden Rossen Park National School Sevens, and I'm joined by one of them, John Amor. John, very nice to have you along. Thank you very much. Great to be here again. It's my second term, and I, and I really like it. It's, uh, it's a great morning for the uh, for the 14s. Did 18s yesterday, and it's uh, what a fantastic event. And it must be one of the biggest congregations of referees that you ever see. There's so many across the week. It's not, it's not just that. It's the fact is it's referees from all over the country as well. We've brought half a dozen from the north, uh, from Manchester Society. Uh, so big up to Mad Refs. Uh, and then there's people from... There's even some Scots, I believe. So, uh, yeah, as well as the London-based people. So good to see everyone. Scots made great referees, let me, let me tell you. Resplendent in your limitless kit as well. That's a, that's a striking shirt. It's a long word, resplendent, from a northern-based referee, but the fact is, it's beautiful. They can see me, although I have been trodden on three occasions. The feet are to blame, but, uh, but yeah, no, fantastic event. Love it. And uh, you, you've obviously you've been you've been seeing plenty of teams. You've got one of the privileged privileged places of getting to actually watch a lot of rugby being being in the middle. Um, tell me about it. it. It must be amazing just seeing these kids out there expressing themselves. I think it's uh, I think sevens is just such a different it's a different sport than fifteens. It really is. And you see the uh, some of the better players are some of the smaller players, the ones that can tackle and the ones that know where the space is, uh, and they just hold back and they have that confidence to play with the ball in hand. Uh, and it's just a pleasure to see. And hopefully, I'll look at some of these in England shirts in the future and go, yeah, I refereed one of those, so fingers crossed. Absolutely. Well, John, thanks so much for your time. I know you've got a game coming up in a second, so go and enjoy that. Much appreciated. Big up to Mad Ref Society. Cheers, thank you. Big up to Mad Ref Society. You heard it here first. Well, well if we say that the tournament can't happen without the referees, but you know what? The tournament can't happen unless someone starts the tournament. And way back in 1939, that was when the tournament got founded. And we're going to speak in a little mi minute or two um, to the founder's son, whose grandson was playing today for George Watson's <laughs> College. I mean, just incredible. Um, and I think probably what we'll do actually on this show is we'll, we'll close with that interview because I can't think of a better way um, to end it. It's an absolute piece of history. But, but Wilf, just your thoughts on A, the history of this tournament, but B, what that legacy kind of means in, t in terms of what, what this now is and, uh, and, and this sort of joy it's brought to, well, frankly, millions. I just think there's so much investment in the tournament itself and a lot of that investment comes from the fact that for so long lots of the people involved at every level of the game has had a role in it. I played Roslyn, you yourself played Roslyn as well, um, under 14 mind, I then made it to under 18s, so that would have been a disaster for everyone involved. But uh, you know, the fact that we've all been such a part of the competition, if, uh, the, almost every coach here will have played Roslyn Park as well, which is so strange and that, that is so rare a competition. Can you imagine being part of a World Cup, for example, in, in rugby or in football, and every member of the coaching staff has played in said competition, it would change the dynamics, and it does here at Roslyn. I think that there's such a willingness to get involved. Every time a new school appoints a coach who's had a history in Roslyn, they are very likely to have had a history with Roslyn Park itself, with rugby. So Topsy Ojo, for example, who is down today supporting St John's Leatherhead, you know, that's just a single institution that has been at Roslyn for as long as he was part of the school. And there's countless examples. There's so many players here today. For example, manning the UR7 to 10. It wasn't just Amy. It was also the likes of Alex Mitchell have been involved as well. And um, who have all played Roslyn Park as well at schoolboy level. And um, schoolgirl level the same. You know, the, the, and as the tournament expands and as more and more people are involved, especially from the women's side of the game, as we've got more and more groups every year, more and more teams on standby, all it's going to do is expand the very long history of the tournament. And it's become an institution that has a part of everyone's rugby journey because of this. And that's so unrepeatable from any other sort of tournament, unless it was started so long ago, because it's already so embedded in the calendar of every school side in the country, and now abroad as well, with the likes of Waterloo being consistent participants, and Jess as well, and all the other Dubai schools. Well, I think you're absolutely right. And I actually think that the fact that Jess won the first international side to, to win a tournament here at Rosslyn Park on the day actually that we coincidentally speak to the founder's son. Yeah, imagine his dad in 1939 thinking that a school from Dubai could come along and win this tournament. It's just, it's the most fantastic place, it's the most fantastic story. It is the most incredible tournament. 
I don't even think just in schoolboy rugby terms. I think in global rugby terms, there's nothing quite like this. It's the biggest tournament by far. It is an absolute sensation. Um, and as the darkness descends upon us, uh, I think what we're going to do is leave you tonight with that interview with the uh, founder of the Howden Ross in part National School Seven's son. Um, his grandson was playing for George Watson's College in the under 14s. Quite incredible legacy that's been left. Uh, so from all of us here on day two at the Howden Ross in part National School Sevens, thank you so much for joining us. Join us again tomorrow morning live at 9.45 where we're doing a preview show, I believe from the Edwin Doran tent where they're celebrating 50 years as a company. There's a birthday cake at midday with Sam Warburton. I'm hoping to get a little bit of that. Absolutely. But for now, we thank you very much for watching and just have a look at this interview with the founder of the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens son. The Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens has a long and rich history, but its history is about to be told to us because the son of the founder of the Rosslyn Park National School Sevens, Geoffrey Burton, is here alongside me. Geoffrey, your father founded this great tournament. Yes, it, what an incredible thing. Well, he founded it, I think it was the first tie here was April. 1939, just before the war years, and uh, yeah, he also founded a site called the Public School Wanderers, so he was very interested in all the public schools. The Public Schools Wanderers was founded to give games of rugby and cricket to servicemen home on leave during the war, and then it took on after that. So that's how I think he's always used to play cricket and rugby against the public schools. So that's how we decided to start this, the public school sevens. And then, of course, it's grown enormously since then. It has, and it must, it must give you an enormous sense of pride to sort of to be here today and to see the sheer volume of, of, of players and teams and schools now from around the world, the legacy that your, your father left. I'm sure you'll be very proud to see how it's grown since he established, which must have been quite a small event initially. But I'm here also because my grandson's playing for George Watson, so I'll be going to watch him later on about four o'clock. So um, it's a double-edged thing for me. You're getting a special ride to it. Yeah, aren't you? and I was quite quite thrilled to see the the program today, to see the photograph of my father. And uh, 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 that's the final of the seventh first sevens tournament here. Absolutely incredible, and it's a it's a wonderful legacy. And certainly for for those of us that are now now working at the tournament and have been involved, this is my tenth year here. Gosh, gosh. The legacy that your father has left, the tournament that he has built, is is quite incredible, and it it is across the world it has become a tournament that the people marvel at it's it is i mean i'm sure you know this already but it's the biggest tournament in the world not just schoolboy of any level I I, i've been told that and actually i'm quite emotional about being here and now hearing you talk the way you are i'm getting really quite emotional about it well i mean rightly so it's 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 a tremendous legacy now I don't want to make you cry, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about your grandson. How's he been getting on? With he's, he's done quite well. They're, they're through to the final of their group, so they've got a group eliminator at 4 o'clock this afternoon, so I'll be going to watch him. Fantastic. Well, wish them the best of luck from me. Thank you very much. And thank you all for organising such a wonderful tournament, and I'm very privileged to be here, and long may you be successful. Well, I think the thanks are all from us and from everyone that's here because it's you and your family that this is down to. This is the greatest tournament on earth and it's down to your family. Thank you very much indeed. I'm very proud. Thank you very much. In the presence of a legend, a family of legends, the Howden Rosslyn Park National School Sevens, founded by Jeffrey's father and still going on today, all these years later, and there's going to be plenty more.